for multilateral surveillance mechanism that involves regular assessment through joint surveillance mission of the economies of ECOWAS member state to ascertain whether the convergences criteria are being met. He provides economic and statistical data for member states and help them to attain the convergence criteria and the ECOWAS single currency. He also liaises with the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, African Development Bank, among other financial institutions to support the development of ECOWAS regions. Dr. Preku has had an extensive and successful professional career in the both and public sector. Dr. Owusu Efriye Akutu, born on October 1949, is a Ghanaian agricultural economist and politician. He worked for more than a decade with the International Coffee Organization. He is a member of the New Patriotic Party and was the member of parliament for the Kwadasu constituency from 2009 to 2016. He is currently a cabinet minister in the Nanado administration and serves as the Minister of Food and Agriculture of Ghana. Dr. Wusue Fiyi Akutu was born to Bafo Osei Akutu, a prominent member of the pre-independence national liberation movement and also a chief linguist at the Menshia Palace. He had his tertiary education at the University of Ghana Legon and graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture. He then studied at Cambridge University where he obtained a Master of Science in Agricultural Economics. He earned his doctor of philosophy degree at Cambridge in 1985. Afriya Akutu is married with seven children. He is a member of the Catholic Church of Ghana. Dr. Afriya Akutu was employed by the International Coffee Organization in London, England. Among the positions he held were economics, senior economist, principal economist, and chief economic advisor. He also served as a consultant to the World Bank, a United Nations agency on soft commodities, namely cocoa, coffee, and sugar. After working for over 18 years abroad, he returned to Ghana, where from 1995 to 2008, he served as the CEO of Goldcrest Commodities Limited and Plantation Resources Limited. Boache Chomantin Adako is a Ghanaian economics politician and former banker born in 1956 at Kumasi to to Kwasi Ajako, who was a merchant and the United Party activist. His mother was Jane Lazi Paddy from Kobo Odumasi in the Eastern Region. Ajako attended the K.O. Methodist Primary School in Ashtown and the Kwame Nkuma University of Science and Technology Primary School in Kumasi. He then proceeded to Mfansupim School in Cape Coast for his secondary education from where he had both his GCE Ordinary Level and GCE Advanced Level. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and Political Science from the University of Ghana, Lagos. He immigrated to the United States of America as a political refugee. Whilst there, he obtained an advanced professional certificate in banking from the American Institute of Banking and Master of Business Administration in Financial Economics from Pace University, New York. He was the Vice President of the Bank of New York and the former Minister for Energy in Ghana. However, the economist Ajako entered politics at an early age and was at the time the national coordinator for the Ghanaian Union of Students and Youth Associations from 1979 to 1980. He was a founding member of the New Patriotic Party in 1992. He held several positions in the party, including chairman of the Dan Kwambuzia Club of North America and briefly served as a trustee of the Buzia Foundation. He was elected the coordinator for the New Patriotic Party in North America. Ajako was appointed as national campaign manager of the New Patriotic Party in the 2012 presidential election. He was appointed the policy advisor to the presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party during the 2016 election and in January 2017. Adako was appointed the Minister of Energy by President Akufado in 2019, but later resigned. Kwajo Nsafo Apoku is an entrepreneur with 21 years of experience in the country's energy sector. He also serves as board director of multinational companies such as Pan-African Capital Ghana Limited, FIFC Management and Development Limited. Kwajo Nsafo Apoku was the country director for Gasop Oil Ghana Limited from June 2000 to September 2012. He worked as special assistant to the Minister of Tourism. 
the late Honorable Hawa Yakubu from January 20, 2001 to May 2002. He has been endorsed by the Ashanti Youth for Good Governance to contest for elections for the position of President of Ghana on the ticket of the new Patriotic Party in 2024. Welcome to Metro TV's special uh, build-up to the NPP primaries. Today we get to engage one of the aspirants of the NPP, a man whose heart lay with Kwada's constituency. He represented that constituency two terms, that even when he lost, he extended an arm of unity to the person who defeated him. That's because to him, the vision, the unity, and fostering of the new patriotic party values is bigger than any individual's interest. And that is his driving theme throughout his campaign to becoming the NPP presidential candidate. Our guest is Dr. Owusu Efriye Akoto. He says he has the vision to drive the economy, Agwik in particular. He's an Agwik economist as well. So he will tell us, how does he intend to do that? Dr. Ousevi Akoto, thank you very much for joining us here on Metro TV Special. I know the bigger inspiration here is your dad, um, his roots in LM, NLM. Um, if you can just share, and when we came to the office, I could see if my camera would just zoom in, that it's almost like an angel looking over you. So I want to know, you know, what kind of, um, almost a, you know, a, a broken record question, but what kind of, if you can share, how much of an influence he had on you directly and your desire to go into politics? Well, he had all the influence on me to go into politics because as a pre-school little boy, um, he suddenly changed my life by all kinds of people flooding into our, our home, our immediate environment, our lounge, uh, everywhere. My people were just coming from all over the country endlessly. And before then, it had been very quiet. I mean, he would get up in the morning, at his uh, breakfast, we'll go to the palace to serve the golden stool. He was the chief linguist, yes, I understand. He was a, a very senior linguist, right. served three Santahines before he died. And then he would come home at about three o'clock. Uh, we will be playing with him, he will be telling us stories and so on. Then one day everything changed from five o'clock in the morning, early morning till night. Our house, our neighborhoods were just filled with buzzing with people from all over, coming in buses and in, in cars. And that's where I got to know the leaders of the then pre-independent political system, where uh, people like H.B. Uh, uh, Dombo, J.B. Dankwa will come and sit with him, endless meetings and all of that. I was privileged in the sense that my father, I was a little... I wanted to ask how old, how young you were, how young? I was you only were... four, five years wow. old. I didn't even start at school. Wow. But he would let me into the lounge, sit in front of him, because he knew that I was a very docile child. I wouldn't disturb anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And I knew his body language. If I'm fidgeting or something, he would look at me one way and then I'll have to, you know. So I saw all these uh, figures. And it was later on I got to know why suddenly my life had changed because he'd gone into politics, being the first person in Ashanti, which then included the Bong Ahafu, the Bono Ahafu and Ahafu. Uh, uh, east now, I'm sorry, uh, Bro East, part of Ashanti, and uh, forming the political party, the National Liberation Movement, and all of that. And then the coalition 
the cooperation between the Northern People's Party of Chidombo and his NLM. I mean, he used to go to the North to campaign for them, and they used to come to Ashanti and beyond to campaign for the NLM. So there was that collaboration. In fact, my first visit to the North, the Savannah area, was when I was that little, when my father used to, he was traveling to the north on one of the political things, and my mother happened to be the one that he was good, but I was too young to be left home. Right. So then I, I remember, you know, you, you just travel hours and hours, these tall grasses, <laughs> you don't meet any human being, wow. just go and go and go. And then before the big town, we will have a little uh, break where my mom will serve my, my dad, some food and we all eat and then he would take the lead and then later on the driver would take us to join them and there is a huge crowd him standing on the platform addressing the crowd so these are things which really made an impression on me and um, up to today I, I, I still remember it was, it was yesterday but I, I hadn't even started school mm. okay D um, and and when they take the lead and you go, you're a young boy, obviously, you didn't know what was happening, but did it ever occur to you, even as you grew, why they did that? Was it for security reasons? What could be the reason? Yes, yes, it was, uh, I guess, for security, because you have huge crowds. So we wouldn't go anywhere near. I mean, we would just stay in on the fringes of the crowd, but you could see him standing there uh, on a, a podium and addressing the crowd. And then we'll go into the palaces, yeah, nice palace. I remember names like Savalugu and so. They were like the uh, right streets. <laughs> yeah, up to today. When I, I, the first time I went there as an undergraduate, uh, a great uh, undergraduate, when well, the first year, summer, they take you around the country to see the potential areas for different crops. And I go to several. I was so excited. I said, oh, I've been here before. I was <laughs> You're a little boy, yes. Yeah, by this time, I was, uh, I was a teenager, you know, late teenager. So it was, so that's the, the, the kind of impression. Uh, and then, of course, then the, the whole violence started and people were rushing around. Uh, of course, my, my, our home became the, the national headquarters of the resistance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of security and... Uh, yeah, so, so the life, the life was a step. Right, <laughs> by, right, right. By the do, do, do you remember any personal sacrifice your dad had to make? Well, he had to, he had to make the ultimate sacrifice by being detained by the Nkrumah regime for, for six years and uh, in some maximum of a medium security, they called it. But put in a little later on, I visited that was about 20 years ago, condemned cells the size of uh, maybe one eighth the size of this room with the, in the middle is this uh, ring, a metal ring, which my father told me about it later on when he was out, where they were actually uh, chained to, to, to I, mean, I, I just couldn't believe that you know, for holding a political view, you could suffer such personal humility, uh, humiliation, humiliation and and suffering. I mean, the kind of food they used to give them. You wouldn't give, didn't give to a dog, and, and the circumstances in which uh, uh, Dr. Dankwa died next door, you know, uh, every day, every night, he wouldn't sleep. My father would hear him uh, just going hmm, hmm, the whole night. And it went on for, for, for months. Then suddenly he realized that oh, the last three days he hadn't had it. So the warder who came to give food to him. They, they didn't open the door. They just put it under, under the door to, to get like, like that. So we asked him, well, doctor, I want to say, how is the doctor? He says, no, no, he died. My father said for three days he just cried. What is a man of such stature? You know, dying like, a, like, like nothing. And nobody even tells me. Somebody that is so close to me and we work together politically. So there were there these very bitter experiences from him. And, and we, we, we had a collateral damage on us because, of course, suddenly the father is taken away. All oh, your privileges just disappear. It's you and your mother struggling, you know, with a life. Well, it wasn't easy at all. <laughs>
two two important things. I'll, I'll come back to that. Day. I mean, being raised by a single mother as well. But I, I wanted to find out, and it's also on that very foundation, that roots that the NPP today stands on because of those sacrifices. Does that mean um, it's why you feel? Do you feel entitled to that this is your no, time? I don't feel entitled. I feel ob uh, an obligation because of the sacrifices he made. At the end of it, he didn't get anything out of it. Okay, so, but. Um, it's something that you grow up with a tradition. And for me, MPP is like a family. It's part of my family. That's the way I feel about it. If anything is going wrong, I wish I could solve the problem instantly that this uh, great institution would uh, prosper and, and uh, with all the human resources and so on that the people of Ghana can benefit from the from that historical institution. MPP's origin go back 70 years plus, you know, and uh, a party which can attract over 6 million votes in a general election is a, a, a level institution, it's a great, you know, institution. Uh, if, if well taken care of, I think that they can, they can take care of Ghanaians. How was it like being raised? How many were you and how was it like being, being raised My by a single mother? My father was a traditional leader. So he had two wives. And at the same time, he had other wives that he going around his, his work would meet lovely women and would, you know, <laughs> <laughs> marry them. Because yeah, uh, very, very, <laughs> very polygamous. Yeah. So, you know, we were 36 children. I'm the number 18 if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, so it's a He beats my dad too. My dad is 23. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, he tried. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's a huge family. We have nephews and nieces and grand uh, nephews and nieces and great grand and we are all over the place from England to, to, to Accra here to my office to America to Australia. you find and I go to somewhere. <laughs> right. So how many were you from your line, your mom? Four. We were four. four. Uh, three was, was it difficult when, since he wasn't around? How was it? Oh, that, that was difficult. In fact, I, the most difficult uh, part of my life was during the six years that he wasn't there. What did you because, miss most? Be, because before then, I mean, very privileged child. In fact, when I went to class one, that's when I got to know that all fathers don't ride a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. But I assume that if you're a father, you have a Mercedes Benz and you know, you live a luxury life and so on. So going to school, meeting with other kids was a great lesson for me. And it was good to have that social integration, you see. Because they took all of that away. Yeah, of course, he wasn't there. So who is to maintain all that? So then we had to fend for ourselves, our mothers and, you know, I mean, there were a few, um, few supports from his brothers because he's, he also came from a big family. His father was a chief and had, what, uh, 22 children. So I had all these uncles and aunts and all of that. So the social uh, uh, setup really, we couldn't fall too far, but Looking back, you know, the, the, all the privileges were gone and you had to make do with whatever comes your way. If we're to use your dad's uh, polygamous uh, example, then we would say, um, you have eight children yourself, yes. correct? Eight? Are you a polygamist? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm a Catholic. <laughs> You're a Catholic? Oh, I'm a Catholic. <laughs> Why not? I mean, um, Bishop Dagger would miss said recently that um, in the animal kingdom, there are no um, monogamist family. It's all polygamist family. And that, when did it? He asked the question, when did it become a sin to be a polygamist? What, he, 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 he is asking that question because he's not a Catholic. Yeah. I'm a Catholic. I won't ask that question. So you, you, be, you believe in monogamist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, not, not that you're a man, but because you're a Catholic? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> Both, actually. <laughs> So you believe in both? You believe in monogamy? monogamy is it? No, I yeah, of course. I mean, those days have gone completely. I mean, life today is totally different. So you cannot go and live in, in the past. I don't believe that. I'm a very progressive guy, so whatever comes, 
taking the the adopt. At what age or point did you know that you wanted to do this and full time? I mean, not regardless of the success you've talked now, but at, at what age did you think that look, this will be good? Um, I think I can because a lot of the time the weight of expectations, especially from a father, a big huge figure, could be so much that children cave because they are unable to uh, measure up. Yeah, at what point? No, for for some reason at the back of my mind, I knew that at some stage I'll go into public life because you see my father also comes from a long line of public life. You know, um, his his stool, Utuakwa stool was created out of the heroism of his great great grand uncle you know when Ashanti was at the peak of his power militarily and, and so on so um, the stories that my aunts were telling about their their great uncles and so on and the successes in public life chief big chiefs and all of that so I knew that at some stage I'll go into public life but uh, I wanted to go into public life with something, with some knowledge and qualification and experience. And that I gained, you know, through education, the formal education, and then after that working with the UN related institution, the opportunity to travel around the world, advising governments on commodities and all of those things. So it just happened that after 18 years of it, I was getting fed up. And it coincided with the liberalization of the political system in Ghana for 1992, before the 1990 and all of that. So as soon as uh, things eased up, I, I, I became part of it through the, the UK branch. We, we were the pioneers, you know. The, the late Mr. J.H. Mensah was uh, interim chairman, I was the interim, interim secretary yeah. and uh, with the Danko Buzia club which was shadowing what was going on in Ghana and then when NPP was inaugurated, uh, we, we inaugurated the UK branch and then um, the first congress of NPP on the hill at Legon, I came to represent the UK because J.H. Manson then was a wanted man in Ghana, he couldn't come. So I had to come and represent. So I've been going along with what is happening. But it, do, it does not spell success because to go into anything it's, is a risk. Yes. And uh, so I wanted to know if you're measuring it right. Where, when did you say, okay, I think this is where I want to go. I will be good at it. Not that my dad was good at it, but I'm going mm -hmm. to carve in it for myself, and I'll be good. I want to know when, when is, when did it? No, or it wasn't, the, uh, it wasn't something that you had to think about. No, no at all. Because I thought that I had accumulated enough experience. Uh, I had all the qualifications in my area. Uh, one of the top universities in the world. Cambridge. Uh, yes, yes, yes. In, in England. And um, I've, I've used that qualification to gain experience in terms of managing commodity sectors and so on, which uh, Ghana could benefit from. So for me, it was just a, a natural transition from one to the other. It's of serving the world to save, come and serve Mother Ghana, that's it. And then you became a member of parliament uh, for quite a constituency. Uh, you served for two terms. Yes, in opposition. It, well, is well, he serving, <laughs> serving parliament in opposition is different from serving what's, parliament. What's the difference? I'm interested. Oh, what, what is I mean, the difference? A lot of difference. I want to know. You see, um, it's kind of for that because everything the government does, if you feel that it's not benefiting, benefiting Ghanaians, then you, 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 you can comment. And the commentary can come in so many different platforms. You can stand and make a statement on the floor of parliament. You can call a press conference. You can write articles in the newspapers. You can go around the, the country and pitch your camp anywhere and say anything, which was what I was doing, especially if you are um, uh, one of the leaders. I was the ranking, initially deputy ranking, then ranking member of Food, Agriculture, and Cocoa Affairs. So it's uh, intellectually very interesting, apart from uh, if you like talking to people, 
as the best. I, I want us to link it to the development in your constituency. Yes. I, be, because when you say it's difficult or different being an MP, I'm wondering if it affects the kind of resources you get to your constituency because you were in opposition. Yes, when we hear MPs say, look, my party is not in government, I'm unable to do this. I want to know well, if that was the case with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but I wouldn't take it. I'll, I'll come to your ministry as a minister and say, look, my constituency, this is what we want. We want this. We, we've been chasing it. It's not happening. Can you give us something? You know, so I, I mean, for me, there's no uh, boundary. You know, serving Ghana, quite also is part of Ghana. So if they are being denied some facility, you are the minister responsible. I'll come and talk to you. That was my attitude. <laughs> so oh, is there a particular? You, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a problem. And of course, there are a lot of things that you can do as a member of parliament. For instance, now tree planting has become uh, uh, very famous. I planted. 45,000 trees on the compounds of schools in Kwadosu in, in the first four or five years because the schools were being encroached upon the, the lands. So the best thing is put trees around and these trees, and they were teak trees. But I still have a yeah. business thing right. that in another 15, 20 years, you can cut, make money and yeah. invest in the institution. So you come to Kwadosu, every school has teak trees on the boundaries. You know, and this was how long ago? That's quite a few years ago. <laughs> you understand? <Wow. laughs> yes. So yeah, there are all these initiatives. I did initiative people didn't understand. No, we do the a day, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now it's fashion, yeah. fashionable. <laughs> but what? Why, but was that what was needed? I mean, because you did all that and you still lost. No, 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 no. It was needed for two reasons: for for business reasons that you are investing in something which you can harvest and sell to invest, but also involving the kids. Because really, I brought the, the seedlings and uh, with, the teach, with the head teacher and the school and so on. But the kids were the ones who actually put them in there, just to teach them that it's not everything that you destroy, but you can also cultivate, see? So for me, it's a, it was a lesson for the kids as well. So all these... <laughs> to Metro TV's special uh, build-up to the NPP primaries. Today we get to engage one of the aspirants of the NPP, a man whose heart lay with Kwadasu constituency. He represented that constituency two terms, that even when he lost, he extended an arm of unity to the person who defeated him. That's because to him, the vision, the unity, and fostering of the new patriotic party values is bigger than any individual's interest. And that is his driving theme throughout his campaign to becoming the NPP presidential candidate. Our guest is Dr. Owusu Efriye Akoto. He says he has a vision to drive... <laughs> Welcome to Metro TV, the MPP Special Delegates Conference. It's happening this very minute. Uh, the Metro TV, uh, that's your election, election central, will bring you everything, the minutest detail of everything you need to know about this big day. And as you can tell, it's a hot, it's a fierce race. It's the party's, it's the beginning of the party's journey uh, towards election 2024. The NPP needs to elect a leader November 4, 2023. But that can only happen after today's event. Ten people want the same position. They want to become the flag bearer of the party. The party's constitution says that ain't going to happen. We have to reduce the number, or whittle it down, narrow it down, reduce it to five. And that's the essence of today's exercise. It's to reduce it to five people. So ten contenders, five slots. The aspirants have been conversing, crisscrossing the length and breadth of this country, speaking to the heart and mind of the electorates or the parties faithful and convincing them to vote for them because their destiny lies in their hands. And that's exactly what's been happening. 
in the last few months as we all have been learning, we've been watching, and we've been reading, and we've been seeing uh, happen on the various media platforms. And today, it's the beginning of that. Now, there have been some persons who have been named as frontrunners, and some persons have been named as a dark horse in the race. We'll look at all of that. We have empaneled a cracked team that will help us unpack and will help us understand the nuances of today's exercise and to ask what really will be the relevance, what will be the consequences, the ramifications or the implications of the outcome because there are two schools of thought. One says, whoever leads today, game over. You don't need to bother yourself again because it would reflect, it would replicate itself on November 4. And then there's another school of thought that says, no, 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 don't get it twisted. Even if you get 99% today, you could get 10% on November 4. So it's not a done deal at all. In any case, we're talking about 961 out of some 220, uh, 223,000 delegates, which is less than even 1%. And so be careful with that type of statistical analysis. We'll look at all of that. We'll find out what my, my resource persons who are here think of these kinds of arguments. But before we do that, there's a very big conversation that's been happening. It looks, it may sound a bit innocuous. Not too many people have paid attention to because of bothers on the 2024 elections. Seven political parties held a news conference this week, essentially raising red flag over the Electoral Commission's decision to restrict the limited voter registration to its district offices. They're saying it's a big mistake. Not many political parties have resources to mobilize they are party faithfuls uh, or potential party faithfuls to go to these district offices and, and, and um, conduct this exercise. And so they're asking them to use the electoral areas. We'll listen to them. They'll tell us more about um, what really are their concerns. And then they'll tell us what the way forward is. So this is Inside Pages. Typically comes Saturdays, comes on Saturdays 8 to 10. But it's a special edition, and so we're going all the way till about 1 o'clock, till the last ballot is counted. Because remember that today's exercise is going to start at 9 a.m., and it will end at 1 p.m. We have our reporters dotted everywhere. Shanti region, Easting, Northing, everywhere, Kra, we the party headquarters. We are with Abamia, come, Alan, come, Ken's, come, this, come, 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 come. So we're going to be getting a lot of these, um, you know, uh, location reports as to how things are going to happen. We're told the vice president will be, will be casting his vote at 10 a.m. this morning at the party headquarters. We're yet to get to know what time Alan Chermato will cast his vote. Ken, Joe Gatti, uh, Dr. Kofi Kunedo Apreku, um, Adai Nimo, Ken Kennedy Pond, and so on and so forth. We don't know when they'll be casting it. We only know that at the vice president. So welcome to where proper quality, insightful conversations take place. My name is Aldo Moro. Thanks for tuning in to Metro TV's coverage of the MPP Special Delegates Conference. Fantastic analysis that you're going to be hearing this morning. So let me quickly go ahead and uh, introduce my resource persons who have been, who have been with us uh, in the last 30 minutes. Uh, we, we, you know, we're trying to think through how to structure the whole conversation. We've done that. So Michael Nyabe is a political and governance analyst. Uh, he's joined us here. Michael, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Moro. It's good to see you, boss. Good to see you, too. Wonderful. And then uh, we have the Member of Parliament, hardworking Member of Parliament for the Tamale Central. Uh, for some reason, anytime he comes here, our you know, viewership from the north, it's ast it goes astronomically high. Uh, you know, well, what does it? What, do you, do you, do you, is it that you circulate the flyers or something? <laughs> he's a it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, anytime we'll tell him, like the king of the north, you know, like our viewership just goes like that. Everybody, you know, the northern. But anyway, good to see you, Honorable. Good to be here, man. Yeah, yeah, he's a member of parliament, uh, very hardworking, very outspoken member of parliament for Tamale Central. Very loyal. He loves the media. When we invite him, he's always here. Unless, of course, he can't just be here at the family, constituency, uh, duties, and so on. With it, we're grateful that you always make time. And then also, we have a man here who hardly speaks. He, you rarely would hear him speak on or comment on politics, but he likes to write a lot. He writes a lot of articles on governance issues, but more, more, more particularly about issues that bother on his own political party. He is a former minister at some point, fisheries, deputy. and also at some point, deputy. a former deputy, sorry, minister, at some point um, uh, at the fisheries ministry and at some point at the women and children's ministry. He's called Christian Daniel Dugan, and he's joined us uh, for, in fact, he tells me that he's with Alan Camp. He is a supporter of Mr. Alan Tremonti, who is also one of the fun runners, actually. 
And so, um, uh, Mr. Dandong, good, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. <coughs> it hasn't been easy, I'm told, getting you here because um, you hardly you hardly speak. Uh, you know, you like to write more than talk. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you love go, writing, don't you? Yeah, yeah. But I do go on. Um, um, uh, uh, Atinka. Oh, once in a while. Oh, Bonu, once in a while. Oh, once in yeah. a while. Okay, I see. How long have you been writing? Because you write so well. Well, how long? Yeah, you've been writing since. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Well, political writing. writing. There. I started in the 1990s. You know, that was the time that um, the wake up call was coming for Ghana to go to uh, back to constitutional right. era. And then. Uh, I also decided to be writing <laughs> things which I feel should be addressed. Right. You know. So I think 1990. 1990. Yeah. 1990. Yeah. What What is it that you? How, how did you fall in love with writing? Well, uh, I think it came naturally. Okay. You know, it came just uh, naturally. I at the moment I've got three books I'm writing which. I'm very, very, very difficult in completing. Okay. Yeah, it's taking me about five years to complete mm -hmm. the books, right? So it, it, it really comes naturally. And um, I'll, I'll say that it's a gift from God. It's a gift right? from God. Yes, yeah, a gift from God. Right. Yeah. You have, in fact, one of the pieces of um, articles that you've written, and I'll, I'll give you time for you to tell us okay. what's your motivation for putting this article out. MVP Electoral College and Superdelegates Congress. You've written a nice article on that, and we yeah. will have... A conversation when we uh, when we when we come to you and I, I thought it was quite interesting I read it uh, so um, that's about it let me also say that um, uh, so I'll start with maybe I'll start with uh, Michael uh, Niabe uh, about um, because Nane Ajanto will be joining us actually she's the general secretary of the CPP uh, she'll be joining us uh, shortly for us to because they were the ones who held the news conference over the in the course of the week and expressed some reservations about the electoral commission's decision a policy decision which they have serious reservations about. So when she joins us, she will tell us more about that. But whilst, whilst we're waiting for her to join us, Michael, I'm sure you've been listening, you've been reading, you have been, um, you've, you've, you know, you've heard things. Would you say that what you make of the activities so far in terms of the aspirants, their message that they've been given to um, the delegates and to some extent Ghanaians, um, and also their posture, their behavior, their character, and so on and so forth. Would you say you've so far been impressed with what you've heard and what you've seen leading up to today's, um, today's event? Well, thank you very much, Moro. Um, you caught me thinking, actually, because, uh, well, scanning the terrain and uh, assessing the aspirant, their messages, uh, it would be quite difficult for me to really pin down uh, any particular specific. Okay. Michael, I beg you. I'm told that the general secretary of the party, Justin Akudu Afrin Pong, is addressing the press on what to expect today. So let's go to the party's headquarters shortly. Yeah, let's go now. Definitely the party delegate. They are delegates. And being a de delegate means that you are there to represent the aspiration of the general party people. So will be someone who resonates well with the rank and file of the party. General, we, you directed that there should not be Congress or Guardian or whatever for, but we've seen the posters of some of the What's wrong with that? Uh, don't you think it can change no. someone's mind? I don't think yeah, I it will change has my mind the person's mind. Mm -hmm. There's a free people hundreds. campaign, people have posters. They have posters here. There's nothing, they have not flouted any rule. Can you break it down for us? I don't know. Yeah, 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 some aspirants to be in a woman to leave. Nice automatically, no. November 4th, Sunny Panwana Airport. It is already in the public domain. They now become to that effect. Well, um, let's. It's a. The Hyan is over the first five, no. Nah.
All right, so you've been listening to the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Justin Frimpon Kudia, who's been addressing the press and you know, responding to some questions that journalists have been asking about today's process or today's exercise and some of the do's and don'ts and so on and so forth. So thank you very much for that. Um, let me come to you, Michael. Now. I, was, I was asking about whether you've been impressed so far with the messaging and the posture of the candidates and so on and so forth. There's been talk about establishment candidates. There's been talk about, you know, um, uh, they've called us spoilers. Just yesterday in the build-up or in the build-up to uh, today's event, we had uh, Miracles Abwaji, who was with the camp of, he's with the camp of the vice president, who says, there are some aspirants who have decided to, to muddy or to give the party a bad image by criticizing some policies and programs that the party has, has rolled out. Um, and he thinks that it is bad for the party. And then you had somebody from Kennedy Japan's campus says, ah, but if you've done something which is not right and we say you didn't do something right because we're, we're testing the pulse of the delegates and their delegates are not happy about certain things. So why are you, why are you stopping us from exercising our rights to express our reservations about some things that didn't go right. So I'm saying, what have you heard so far? Are you impressed with the messaging and generally the character and the way the uh, aspirants have conducted themselves leading up to today's exercise? Well, I think it'll be very difficult to uh, really assess the aspirants uh, based on the messaging. Okay. Indeed, I think that uh, the messages of the aspirants should be born out of two main perspectives or folds. The first being that uh, a message that resonates with the base of the party mm -hmm. for the membership of the party to know that, listen, this guy can help us win the elections come 2024. And then two, the second perspective should be the fact that... Okay, Michael, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I beg of you. I'm uh, sorry for rudely interrupting any time you start because sometimes you lose your thoughts. But it's important that we hear from the General Secretary. We want to play back that media interaction he had. We're hoping that we get a better uh, picture now. Let's see. Uh, Abdallah, let's, let's try that and see. General Party, the person who will be selected will be someone who resonates well with the rank and file of the party. G General, we, you directed that there should not be Congress or Guardian or whatever form, but we've seen the process of some of the aspirants here. Don't posters. you think? Yeah, the posters are still here. And what's wrong with that? Uh, don't you think it can change no? someone's? <laughs> I don't see how it, it will change my mind or any person's mind. Is it It's their posters here. There's nothing, they have not flouted any rule. Can you break it down for us? Well, I don't want to say some. automatically, you know, November 4th, Sanipanwana Airport. Uh, it is already in the public domain. And then I'll be to the... Well, um, unless you'll be an instructed. Uh, Buwaha, Ofi, said, the here is what can first five, you know. Now, about November 4th, you know, the Obisu Ofi, said, so didn't know what now. And now, I'm going to say, so, oh, November 4th, you know. And to, uh, you ask me, be an instructed, you know. All right, that's the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Justin Kodia. Um, we understand that the President himself, His Excellency Nana Rodankwe Kofado, has just arrived to cast his votes. We'll be going to the party headquarters. Um, we're going to bring you the picture shortly on, on that. I'm talking about the President himself. So let's, um, if we're ready, let's go to the party headquarters now. I said this thing. As you can see, the, the president has arrived in the convoy. Um, the president, um, the president is about to cast his votes. The president has already said he is not supporting any of the candidates, and um, yes, he will vote, but he doesn't. He's not publicly asking anybody or whipping anybody into line and telling anybody to vote for any candidate or any of the aspirants and and so leave him out of the internal uh, politics so you can see with his entourage um, i can see the deputy chief of staff i guess that's a uh, carlos von brazi um and and quite a number of i think i've all, i can also see uh, mr uh, 
Um, yes, I've seen Mr. Hidden Toh, who is with the Alan Camp. I've also seen Mr. Bankwa Yeboah, who is the Vice Chair of the Special uh, Presidential Committee, uh, Presidential Elections Committee. Um, yeah, so that's, of course, that's the... Uh -huh. So you can see the present your pictures in your shot. Yes, I've also seen uh, seen the, the man Fawaz, who's also the Deputy Chief of Staff. He's with the President. Um, so that's about it. We're, we're, struck, we're having some, with some challenges with the pictures and um, with the shot. Also, when we get a better one, we'll be going back to the party headquarters to uh, bring you a live feed as the President, His Excellency Nanado Dankwe Kofad himself, goes to cast his, or goes to vote to cast his ballot um, at the party headquarters. And so that's what we've been seeing. And so when we get a better uh, connection or a better feed, we'll take you back to the party's headquarters. So Michael, uh, you're, you're talking about um, how sitting here, you, it is very difficult for you to tell us about what you feel or what you think. Okay, so that's the president. Has he, has he cast his ballot yet? Yeah, I think he has, hasn't he? I think he has because... Um, Oh, okay, he's now going to the polling booth. Right, he's going to the polling booth to cast this ballot. And I'm sure once it's done, he's going to sit in the car and he's gone. He has no other business uh, there uh, again. So we'll see how it pans out. But it doesn't look like, I mean, when you look, up, when you look at the party headquarters, it doesn't look like there's going to be that many people will be voting there. Yeah, uh, just a few, Mr. Dugan. Uh, so who, who are likely to vote at the party headquarters, you can tell us? The okay. National um, the National Executive Council. Okay. Yeah. And so there are just a few. And then there's there's another one for Greater Accra. Right. Yeah, another another area, I've forgotten the place. Okay. Where, I think that's in Asalam Down. I, yeah, Asalam Down. Asalam Down. Yeah. That's a Greater Accra uh, office of the party. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the Greater Accra gurus, so okay. let me put it that way. Right. Don't that means the, the, the regional chairman, right. the council of elders, and they are going to vote okay. there. Yeah. The, the president is interacting with... Um, some transfers. Okay. Assuming that you are from so, the north, but you, you mm, are here. Okay. And yeah, you, you are can a transfer voter. Vote. I think that there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think that one there. Uh, so as you can see, the president is interacting with his entourage that he arrived with. I mean, we're not sure what the president wants to know, what he's asking them. But clearly, I think he's done casting his vote. He's done. So he's just about to leave. I'm sure he wants to ask, is everything okay? You know, do you guys have any, <laughs> you guys have any problems? Is there anything I can do to help? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Is the winner winning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so our camera is not that close to the president to bring us, you know, um, how do you call it? Um, to bring us a sound um, and, and for us to know what uh, the, 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 the president is talking about. But yes, it's done. And so I guess that um, Abdullah, I guess, would have to come back in studio uh, since we can't hear what the president is saying. Yeah, so Michael. Yeah, great. So, I mean, messaging should be born out of the reality of the day. Okay. And I think two things should come to the fore. One, mm. your ability to convince the party delegate or party membership to the large extent that, listen, I am the guy who is able to win 2024 for you. Right. And then two, your ability to let the membership of the party and the generality of Ghanaians, mm -hmm. and this is where I think has been missing so far. Okay. That, listen, I know we are in a mess. I am the guy to come help fix the mess we find ourselves in. Mm. So there is that challenge mm -hmm. of those who clearly associate with the establishment. Right. Because you are flowing from an establishment that may have caused, or that had caused the mess, actually, mm. in which we find ourselves. Mm. Because, listen, I want a presidential aspirant to be able to tell them that, listen, and I think when this guy met the press the last time, Kwabna Ejapol. Kwabna Ejapol. Were you impressed? Quite impressed. Okay. Because, for me, this guy was speaking to the hard issues. Okay. Things we have to do in this country to ensure a change, mm. and a progressive one for that matter. Right. I don't recall His Excellency the Vice President, uh, Mahmoud Bahamia, mm -hmm. ever talking about the future, right. giving us hope. Mm. I don't even mean, uh, I don't no, even he's, understand. But he's been talking about turning this country into a digital hub. I'm, I'm, you see, I want us to, I want to, okay, so it, it's for me. It appears that there are two, two layers of uh, messaging. Precisely. Now, 
there are some who have restricted their messaging to just the delegates, which is party loyalty, party service, hard work, dedication, I'm a unifying force, etc. They don't really go beyond that to talk about the bread and butter issues per se. And then you have the other aspirant. So, for instance, if you listen to the Vice President Baumia, he talks more about what he wants to do for party delegates. And then he talks about what he has done for party. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you have the likes of Alan, who goes beyond what he believes is done for the delegates and then talks about, you know, um, what he wants to do for Ghana. And that's why he launches GTP. Well, Mr. Daniel Dugan is here. He would better explain uh, what the Alan messaging has been all this while. But so that's what I'm asking whether you've been impressed. And if you're sitting here saying that so far you haven't been impressed with the messaging or what the aspirants have said, so then it means that's a problem. Because they're, they're, spo they're supposed to be talking to you and I. So, so you know why, you for it? instance, you mentioned uh, one of the aides for His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia was here and attacking right. fellow aspirants yeah. that uh, they are attacked attack on the policies of yes. the government yes. means an attack on the, the party. Yeah, on the party, yes. Precisely. Yes. And, and so that is the reality. Right. I mean, but we expect presidential aspirants mm -hmm. to let us know that, in, and mind you, you're not only communicating to NPP delegates or party members, though they are those going to cast the vote. Yes. You want to be president. Everybody is interested. Mm. I tell you, my brother, I'm sure by now, almost all the international agencies here may have done their own checks. They've done their own uh, analysis on all the countries. Everybody is interested. Mm. So if you are a presidential aspirant and you do not even understand that, listen, your candor, your messaging, everything you do goes beyond the party boundaries or parameters, then there is a problem. All right. So I'm told that uh, my colleague Winston Taki has one of the delegates with him. He wants to interact with him briefly about his expectations yes, and what he makes of today's exercise. President just voted. I'm here to speak to uh, William Amua, who is an MPP member here. Uh, we have some few things to share with us in regards to what the president had to say. To your listeners, um, as you witness, the president just cast his ballots. And then, indeed, the president also followed strictly the modalities, the guidelines as um, the elections committee uh, put out. And we are expecting every delegate or voter to, as well, comply with all the directives given. So far, the president has voted. Uh, what kind of atmosphere will you describe uh, the reception so far? Uh, as you can witness yourself, very um, Yes, and um, we expect that across the country the same atmosphere will be exhibited or demonstrated or observed. Uh, how many calls? There's strong security presence. Uh, and, uh, over here, we are expecting about 202 to cast their votes. Uh, you know, there's, there's this issue about ensuring this free and fair election. What have you put in place to ensure uh, that standard is uh, kept by the MPP? Um, yes, as you can witness, the EC officials are up to their task. Um, the police presence... Uh, uh, ...we mean what we are talking about. And then if you don't have accreditation or you are not a delegate, you will not have access to the... So, interesting, well, some have said uh, that because of uh, there is a lot of suspicion about cited uh, election or members, particular delegates voting for a particular uh, uh, delegate. What are you saying to that? Um, I'm not aware of that. I only know that I vote for their preferred candidates. Um, as to whether they are voting in a particular di direction, or in favor of a Today, we are casting our ballots or votes, and then we are going to vote to shortlist five aspirants. For how long and what time are we looking to see the result come up? Um, it's take, um, the, as you are aware, and then we put it out there earlier. Um, it's the process starts just began. That's 9 a.m and then it will end at exactly 1 p.m. after which we open the ballot box, count and declare the result here. And same will be um, uh, 
will then transmit the results to the EC headquarters for collation. After which a declaration. All right. So that's uh, my colleague with Intaki interacting with a delegate at the party headquarters. He's there to cast his votes. And we'll come back in the house. Michael, I was talking about, I was asking you about so far how you, you, you know, what do you think about the way the aspirants have conducted themselves? And you're talking about um, so far you've not been impressed with the messaging. And you think that the messaging must go beyond just talking to party delegates. They must be talking to Ghanaians as well because you're aspiring to become president, not just the flag of the MPP. Even though I, I sort of disagree, but that's fine. That's uh, please go ahead with that. Uh, and uh, so far, amongst the, okay. the, the aspirants, aspirants okay. I think... Uh, we've seen with, Bo precisely. Has we've, seen, it for you. we've seen Alan as well with the GTP, GTP the plan. Great Transformational Plan. Right, so. right. And apart from the two, I haven't really seen any of the aspirants okay. talking to us about Ghana. Right. But it's a Ghana project at the end of the day. Mm. But, do you, but why, why, do you think it is wrong to be speaking directly to the delegates? It is not wrong. Because seek ye first, the it, kingdom of God. It is not mm -hmm. wrong. But there's everything wrong with it if you avoid the Ghana project. Okay. And only, I mean, constrict Stick yourself to, to the party issues. You I think mean, so? There's nothing wrong when you talk about party, okay. what you do for party members. Yeah. You are seeking to become <coughs> flag bearer, eventually become president of this nation. Okay. The resources of this country mm -hmm. will be in your trust. Right. You have to seek for the welfare of Ghanaians. Okay. I mean, this is effectively what you're looking for. Right. And so... It's terribly wrong, mm -hmm. actually, if there is any phrase like that, for you to only constrict yourself. Mm -hmm. It's the reality of, Charlie, I've been part of this government, right. which has caused a mess. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be very difficult for me mm -hmm. to extricate myself mm -hmm. from the development in this Akufado government. Right. And so, strategically... How do you respond to those who say that? If you go by that logic, then all of them are culprits. If you say that the vice president, for instance, is the vice president, and so he must take blame or he must ac accept some level of responsibility for the current state of affairs. I've heard some people say, <coughs> if we want to push that logic that, you know, that far, Alan Chermantin was the former trades minister. He served in this government. Yeah. In fact, until a few months ago, they resigned. Um, what's the name of this guy? Boate Jaco, Railways, right? Um, what's the name of this uh, other guy? Um, but there's quite a number of them. But there's a who have energy, 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 energy yeah. minister. So, if you want the vice president to extricate himself, no, if you want the vice president to take some responsibility, not even if, once we all agree that the vice president will take some responsibility to, of, on, on how, the, on the performance of this government, then some other delegate or some other aspirant must be prepared to do the same. Is how he, do you respond to it that? Is, it is for which reason many say, that regardless of whoever emerges as the flag bearer of the NPP... We have a lot of questions to answer. Precisely. And of course, the NPP... I can't see the NPP winning 2024. It is not possible. Okay. With all that has happened over the last eight years... You don't think the candidates... That if... Assuming what you're saying is anything to go by, you don't think that the candidate that the... Or that it can finally emerges can change the dynamics of 2024? It will be very difficult. It will be very, very difficult. Let me tell you something. Now, in political party engagement, you have the party as a corporate institutional organization right. whose corporate image you must always seek to protect. Right. And then you have the actors within the political space or within the organization. Now, it is not only the work of the actors that redeems the political party. Okay. But how you batter the corporate image of the political party. Today, right. mm. the NPP is the least attractive political party in Ghana today. How do you measure that? You see... Or, is uh, it, or this is a purely opinionated statement. You think... Everybody knows. Okay. It's a fact. Today's government is being led by the NPP. Yes. The mess caused by this government... Mm -hmm. It's attributable to the NPP as right. a corporate organization. Mm -hmm. You can also attribute the same to the individual actors as well. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about the actors, they talk about the NPP as a corporate entity as well. I see. And the corporate mm -hmm. image of the party has been battered. Mm -hmm. The NPP hasn't, as we speak today, been able to tell the ordinary Ghanaian on the street, that, listen, indeed we came for your welfare. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. Okay. 
the NPP as a corporate institution. So whoever emerges as the flag bearer, okay. that's a huge task. Pardon me interrupting again. Um, let's go again live to the party headquarters. You saw the former Deputy General Secretary, Nano Obrebuahi, who is with the Baumia camp, interacting with the media. I wanted us to listen to him. Well, I think if we're ready, Abdullah, can we, can we listen to Nano Obrebuahi? Um, yes. If in Rata Sabra, Unimumra, Unsemra, and Tinas Sena, I'm a better night to the game. But a Bia, maybe a Yaman or some, maybe a Yaman or some, nine years a sense, the red line that Patron Baby, and to be some Massama, Fakasiana, I can no comment. No comment. <laughs> Bro, for, uh, all right. Uh, no, uh, it's I am Obribuahe. That has been my track record since 1992. I started as a lawyer before the formation of New Patriotic Party. I've been with the party since 1992, July. So I'm a principal principal person, forthright, honest, sincere. What kind of qualities are you looking out for in this particular? You know my lifestyle, know my agenda, so no comment. That is it. Thank you very much. Oh, the security is tight. That is good. We expect that in future it will be countrywide. The security will be tight like this. It will be good for us as a country. Tight. That is good for us as a country. I am over there, so I cannot watch. The answer is simple, no comment. All right, so Nana Obri and now on the young and drink our live original television. So you were live at MPP headquarters as Siano HS BBR record. The MPP is holding a special delegates conference to elect five people who will then go to a special, I want to call it a wider, um, how do you call it, electoral oh, college. Sure. We're talking about 200 and something, 200, 223,000 delegates will be voting for the, uh, to choose out of the five, hopefully, who would lead the party in the 2024 elections. And so today's exercise is extremely important because it's the beginning of, you know, uh, a more crucial uh, exercise that would happen on November 4. So it is actually a prelude to that. As I did indicate, there are two schools of thought. There are some who say what happens today is inconsequential. What, hap what is important is that you come or you, you are part of the five persons who would be elected. Some, will also, some are also saying that, look, once you garner substantial amount of votes, 80, 85%, in the, anything above 70 percent, that is an indication of what the party's direction wants to be, which is the party faithfuls want you to lead them into the 2024 elections, and they will start talking from today. So that's not another school of thought. I don't know where you belong. And so I'll be sending you, I'll be sharing with you a WhatsApp message, tell us where you, what you think, whether indeed today's outcome is inconsequential. Once you're part of the five, that's it. Whether you're number one or number five, it doesn't matter. Or you belong to one of those who thinks that if you win today, you'll win on November 4. Um, I've had in this, in fact, I have in the studio with me uh, the, Mr. Michael Niabe, who is a political and governor's analyst, has been, has been with us here, uh, sharing his thoughts about uh, what he thinks about how the, the aspirants have conducted themselves so far. I also do have the uh, Member of Parliament for Tamale Central, the Honorable yeah. Mutala Ibrahim Mohammed, who's also with us here, and also Mr. Christian Deno Dugan, who is an MPP founding member, and also a former deputy minister for fisheries, and at some point, minister for women, deputy minister of women and children's affairs, under the Kufo 
uh, regime. He says he's with the Alam camp. We had actually invited somebody from the uh, Bamiya camp, but they have the person who's not showed up yet. So uh, as and when the person shows up, whether he person will join uh, the conversation. So let's uh, proceed with this. Um, I'm now going to come to Mr. Mr. Daniel Duga. Mr. Daniel Duga, you have been with this party for since its inception in 1992. Exactly. But first of all, before you go, let me just say that uh, na 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 first, first. Before ladies first. first. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Mm. But sincere apologies. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, they'll finish you right now. <laughs> anyway, no, so... No, um, but wait, 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 let me come in. Yes. You have to introduce the Deputy Minister for Women before you start introducing uh -huh. the Ah! Yeah. <laughs> but that's the portfolio you held in the past. That's so right. I agree with you because you drive policy. Yeah, you know, yeah. anyway. So, but uh, uh, Mr. Christian Daniel Dugan, yeah. I mean, you are a founding member of the New Patriotic Party. Um, the, the, look, there are some people who actually think that this today's exercise is not important. Mm. They think it's unnecessary. Allow this, even if it's 100 people, let them go. November 2nd, everybody will find their smoothness level. And there are some who say we need it. In fact, the party says we need it based on what happened in 2007. There are some who actually believe that the intra or the inter-party um, acrimony and, and the rancorous nature of the party and even the outcomes necessitates a model, a structure like this. I don't know where you stand. And what do you think is the importance of today's exercise in the first place? Well, um, I'll be among the few. And uh, once again, good morning to viewers. Right. I'll be among the few who believe that the superdelegates conference in itself defeats the purpose of expanding the electoral college. Really? Yeah. That's an interesting point. You see, in um, 2007, there were, you had the delegates were about uh, 2,300 and... Thereabouts. Thereabouts. Let's say 330 right. delegates. Right. And there were 17 people who contested. And um, somebody felt, and wisely so, that that number can be bought, easily bought, you know. So let's expand the Electoral College. Let us make it in such a way that every party member, right at the grassroots, will feel important that, yes, I can also decide who should lead the party. Mm -hmm. So it came out that five polling station executive members were added to the Electoral College. And so for every polling station, so if you have about 30,000 polling stations, then for the polling station you're having 150,000. So it was a very brilliant idea. Now you come in to say that there should be some elite group of people who decide for the party grassroots who they should choose from if the number is more than five. Right. <coughs> you see? And this is where I have the danger. I mean, I, I sense a lot of danger there. Mm -hmm. The special delegates conference or the, the, the electorate the elite electorate, they don't make up 1,000. So if you're saying that 2,300 and let's say 2,500 can be bought, then what can not people do with 1,000? That's, that's true. In fact, we're now we're looking at 961. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah let's, let's, okay, please, conservatives please, here, 1,000. Yeah. You for, know, the of, for the sake of our argument, for the sake you, of our you, you know, women, when they are serving you meal, the, the omato yeah, soap. Uh, yeah, there's one extra. Yeah, that's right. With the airphone, it's a thousand. Nanea yeah. does that for me when I go. When I, go. <laughs> so I, I can relate. Yeah, you yeah. see? So, I, I, I feel that democracy is being eroded here. Mm. Because somebody who is not regarded by the elite, hmm? somebody who is not regarded by the elite, can be regarded by the grassroots. Okay, yeah. I beg you, I'll come back to you on this. Let's go to Dr. Mahmoud Bamir's campaign office where my colleague Kennedy is there. Kenneth, what's happening? Uh, Moro, thank you very much. So this morning, uh, as you rightly mentioned, we are at the campaign office 
of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the vice president, and the New Patriotic Party's presidential hopeful. He's one of 10 aspirants who are vying to succeed President Akufuado. Of course, he's been touted as a front runner. A recent poll in indicated that he's leading by 71% of the vote. Not much is going on here, as you, as you can rightly see. The white building, that's where his campaign office is. Uh, you know, we entered this morning and the executives are hopeful that by the end of the day, he's going to be declared winner of this superdelegates Congress. And then the subsequent one, which is going to happen sometime later this year. And the uh, interesting thing is, we've met a few people here. One of the people that we met is a, a Baumia a fanatic. He says that he's optimistic that the vice president has what it takes. So I'm going to invite him right now. Eja Pacho Brana Yenu Kasakaka or Metro TV. So now what's the saying? Who did the saying? We did Mr. Kofi Odro. Oh yeah they oh yeah they were uh me about me supporter. And in Tina Mwah. Uh Midi Baumia Tin sir. Bow yo be dear midi baumia tin sir. I be say Baumia a bit any man. Uh, MPP, be friend and team up. I had an extra. I had an amount for say, Baumia. I say, I say, I say, I say. Nippon won't call no hope. Unka can't watch them in children. A better who say, Baumia day. Why is he? I must say, I, Baumia, my dollar, a costro, I yes, a son woman in a munyaka. MPP for no munyana standing in a woman in a standing in a yenina, a party back of former. Eh, me and me too. But I'm supporting. I'm supporting the power. In so much, every month, me do not see. Every time I'm say, but I'm a party member. Me do not see that. Two, eh, the other thing I'm saying is, eh, I'm not making a campaign. I'm not doing anything to fraud you. So I'm making a campaign. I'm not 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 making a campaign. Na if I saw Ben Ede, I was Eja Eja Minchawa no na oka se amam for se eh ye kan se ba o miya ye se wa ye se wa ma dollar kosro ne se ye be kai a eh MPP ba so ba o miya ka kire se wa che dollar no atum a atum de safuana ma IGP inti dollar na be ba for me so dollar na sura na ko inti o mo ka mo nika e ho de ye mfa nto nchen e obi o be ka sa asem no dollar na e ko do dollar na se 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 na e ko do dollar na ko do sign and the dollar name could be said, but said thirty something. Dollar now said twelve na yade. I go go do. At the end, it's a dollar na kosro. So I buy na e force it. And yet, see that I know some catcher will say, "See, see, I gana ye pope is in." Yeah, yes, sir. And no man na e e honi. See, see, we be no baba biya so baba catcher say, "Oh, I me me the me me the gana e be ko e e be fan say petrol one city and I say two city. Onu kura o ba ye ye di na wasa twelve no. Onu kwa ni de be ko ba twenty and I thirty. One by a noon, and to him say, and maybe I may buy, say, and see, 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 me support Dr. Mamudu Baumia. So, I'm a Fred Bella. I'm a president. No, me am mm. And in Tina, me am supporting Dr. Mamudu Baumia. I'm not going to feel good. And in Tina, I'm supporting him. So, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, secretary of the party. And in the power of the world, a member of the DNA, ma, Dr. Baumia, Vice President, a dance. Uh, so, I remember the, the woman said, Dr. Mamudu Baumia, no. On in another down, quite a good father. On in the num. On in the woman. So, all the men took out quite a good child. Or the teacher, or the judge, Dr. Mamudu Baumia. And that in a Baumia bar. And one man on my. I could buy me some of the two. Young Franco. Maybe they are from some of them support to buy me. And this will be support to Canada Japan or young people. We will support to do Alan Cotter Jamaica or young people. What is the American Azul? And to me, the support to Dr. Mamudi, I said Cotocon has. Cotocon has no. Me, me support to Cotoco. And to me, the American said, Baumiana dear. Me, the other no one, and me, the Medinity. On one, some of them support to. Baumiana support to.
na amamfo bi amamfo bi de adwenkyere bi bae sɛ nanka ɛbɛ ya nka mo party no obi a nya adwen na baumia enko vice president na alan enko president na sɛ sɛ mo mienu no presidential candidate vice presidential candidate because omo mienu obi a wo wait kama and also, I had the amount of the Baumian or more Casa Seminal. Me, I'm a general Mr. Kofu to me, and I know my argument. Who be said one month, one month, Sir Casanka, me, I'm to me, chief of staff. Since nineteen ninety two, a du boy in a brasso. Matua Bassa, I may wake on my two thirty six years aba. Na aquala to see, and I penny to finish your aquala, my honey. And to Sasa Seminal, dear Baumia, Ebert Nasu, not Alan Gogetta, my channel, so I am Vasa, and I saw me before. I didn't know that I was a president, and I was a defense, and I was a vice. I didn't know. And yes, sir. But I was not a good one. 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 I was Mede mi supportu ba umia, nti obi ba ono ma yede o makane de, nti mede mi se ba umia nembra. Na ran meju no, o meyi no. Sa na assembly. Ah yeah, that's a bit Mr. Drew, thank you very much for speaking to us all the way from the Ashanti region. Yeah, better say. So so as I rightly mentioned, uh, we're still here stationed at the campaign office of the vice president and aspiring presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And as you rightly mentioned from one of his huge supporters, he is the one who is supposed to be elected to succeed the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, heading into the 2024 general elections. So, Moro, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much. We'll be following and uh, monitoring proceedings to see how events uh, you know, unfold. Uh, we, we understand that uh, voting has not started yet. Less than 1,000 delegates are going to the polls to elect uh, a new uh, you know, presidential aspirant to succeed President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado and, uh, uh, you know, Baumia, the former Trades Minister Alan Chematin, and also MP for Asin Central Kennedy Japan are the front runners as it stands now. But who will emerge victorious? We're definitely going to find out at the end of today. Back to you in the studio tomorrow. Thank you very much. Ken, I think that's a very interesting, a very comprehensive report. And for me, your interaction with that delegate, um, I don't know if he's a delegate or he's just a, a Bamiya fanatic. And we heard some of the reasons why he gave. He said, those of you are saying that Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has run the economy now, the dollar is now 12 CDs to the dollar and so on and so on. You, you must be careful. And that instead of sitting in your offices and criticizing the vice president, go to him and ask him what happened. Maybe after the explanation, you would fall in love with the vice president. So you push, stop it, stop it. You, you know, stop criticizing the vice president. You are not being fair to him. That's why he's, this, he's there. He's there to ask the vice president questions. So you two come and do some. Yeah, that's, that's what he's saying. That's quite interesting. But anyway, so um, come back to the studio. Just in, case, just in case you just joined us, this is Metro TV's coverage of the NPP Special Delegates Conference. It's happening today. The NPP needs to prune the numbers down to five. They need five people to go for a special conference in November, uh, November 4. Wider uh, electoral college, 200 and something thousand people who will be voting. Today's is just 961. Um, and they need to prune it down because the party in its wisdom believes that that's the only way to reduce the acrimonious nature of the outcomes of elections, usually the outcomes of internal elections. And that's what the MPP is seeking to do today. Like I said, look, the aspirants have been everywhere speaking to delegates, uh, appealing to their, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're speaking to their minds and their hearts, you know, telling them about them themselves, the persons, and also telling them about what their contributions uh, towards the party and what they intend to do when they're given the nod um, to lead the party into the 2024 elections. For now, there were three, three persons have come up as frontrunners, as Ken said. We have Kennedy Japon, a central member of parliament, is a businessman, successful businessman, uh, we have uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, who's the uh, Vice President, His Excellency, and then also uh, Mr. Alan Chairman. This is Alan's fourth attempt, remember? Yeah, this is his fourth attempt, 2007, 20, 2012, 2014, and 2023, I believe. Yeah. 2012, 2011. 20, 2011. 2010. 2010. Actually, it was 2010, yeah. exactly. So 2007, 2010. Um, 2014, and then 2023. So that's his fourth attempt, just like Alan, just a Dr. Kofi Kunedo Apreku. And so <coughs> it, it's a very interesting um, mm. and a very intriguing 
uh, a turn of events that we're beginning, we're beginning to see unfold. So we'll see how it goes. Whoever wins today, is that going to be an indication of what's going to happen in November 4, or it will not be? I'll pick the thoughts of my uh, resource person. So you're telling us about the philosophy driving... Uh, Mr. Daniel Dugan is here with us. He's a former minister under the Kufuor regime. He said he's, he tells us he's with the Alan Cup. You're telling us the philosophy driving uh, today's exercise. You're telling us about um, how what happened in 2007. Um, yeah. but, but good. It, I'm, I'm happy you, you are taking us back to history. Is it true that the former president at the time, Kufuor, was solidly behind Alan Chermante. Remember at the time, there was a lot of talk about Alan Chermante being the establishment candidate, as we see, as we're seeing pan out or play out in yeah. the case of Dr. Bar. You said in well, Kufo's yeah. cabinet. Thank Did Kufo ever call you to tell you to vote for Alan Chermante? Thank you very much. And um, I'm very happy that I've had this opportunity. Okay. I had interaction with His Excellency Mr. John Ajegun Kufo in his office. You did? Yeah, it was about general matter. Okay. And in the conversation, mm -hmm. I'm just bringing this one out. He, okay, somebody told him that I was saying that the younger ones in the party should take over. Interesting. And he wasn't happy with me because he knows how I talk. And then I said, and then um, he made a statement. He said that the party has got tradition where people pass through the meal. So it is not that you are young and you are very brainy, you are very sharp, then you jump the queue. That was his, um, what they call it. Uh, uh, that was what he, he was actually driving at. He made me understand. Okay. You see. There and then, I resolved that everything that I heard about him being said to be backing a younger candidate, and in that case, Alan, is just allegation. Because he wouldn't tell me something which he doesn't believe in. Hmm. You know, so he told me that there's, uh, there's this... Uh, so basically, the party has a tradition. A, a convention. A convention, let me put it that yeah. way. And the convention states that, they, you know, allow the older ones... It is people who to pass, pass, through <laughs> oh, pass through the meal. Oh, pass through the meal. Okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe, 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 maybe... But that comment then would have favored the Michael Father, because that's what he has done. He had passed through the well, meal. Well, that's, that's what he told me, but he didn't specifically say... Yes. No, no, no. He, was, he was angry with me because of that statement. I see. He heard that at me. But did you make that statement? I didn't. Okay. So, so you, I, you, you, you denied no, it? No, so I told him that. Okay. When I was in the YEF, mm. I mean, I was in the YEF, I'm still in the YEF. I told him that at one of the YEF's meetings, that was 1996. That's a young executive forum. Young executive forum, but right. now... But now we are very old, so we call it executive <laughs> forum. <laughs> you see, when 1996, that was when we were going to the primaries again uh, for, for the second time. And um, the YEF, we met, and generally people were saying that let a young person come to replace Professor Dubois. And I remember vividly standing out. That was in 1995, or 1996. We had the election. No, but we had our primaries in 1996. Same year. Yeah, yes, same, same year. year yeah. yeah. So um, they were saying that uh, they were giving excuse. Um, uh, Dr. Safford, who was 20 something when he was a minister, uh, President Kufo himself was about 21 when he was a deputy minister, yeah. and all sort of. Then I told them that, look, we cannot, uh, what do you call, eliminate the old folks. Because of the experience, the knowledge that we have, we haven't gotten there. Okay. So let us mix with them for them to train us the way we should go. Right. So I told President Kufo that, you see. So, so, you're, so in essence, what you're saying is that it is not true that the former me, president, if you ask me, based on your interaction with him, in, uh, that he was supporting Alan Chairman Singh. It is not true. I mean, to me, you see, people may have other reasons to believe. But I'm saying that the interaction, and I know that man, 
you know, he's somebody who is very principled when he's talking. I, I mean, um, it's, a, it's a fine gentleman. When you, when you go to, the few words that you say will be able to resolve all your problems. You know, he'll throw it, more light on it. That's fine. But in 2007, whilst you're talking to us about the, 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 the background to this superdelegate yeah. and your argument, and in fact, don't worry, I'll come back to you for you to conclude your okay. argument about this superdelegate. Thank you. And how you believe that it defeats the essence of expanding the Electoral College. I'll come yeah. back for you to conclude yeah. on that. But I think that we, let's come back, let's come from somewhere and then we can get there. Okay. Now, when the former president, when Kufo, how did Kufo feel about the talk about Alan Chairman Ting being the establishment candidate? And did you think that it may have affected him or you think that it had no consequence whatsoever on Alan's prospects in that particular um, election? I think um, I'll have to say this and uh, say brings a few things out. Not so that all. So you say things, yeah. Things not you have said, never yeah. said. And um, if, 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 if the fine gentleman is watching me, I do apologize for bringing certain things out. But okay. I'm not going to bring everything, everything out. out. Right. Yeah, because I've got my fine gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> Who can't wait? <laughs> Who can't wait? He can't wait at all. You see, it got to some time that... Unfortunately, even though he was a president of the republic, there was this growing dislike for him within the party's rank and file. Oh, okay. And it was to establish a certain person as to be next in line. Who that person is, uh, I, no, no, I don't know. No, I said, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you see? And um, there was this sad events, there were these sad events that took place. One was even in Legon, and he as a president, it was uh, in the evening, we were in one of the halls waiting for him to come, one of the conference halls. And then um, when he came in, somebody had told the, the uh, uh, what do you call, the delegates or the party members there to hoot at him. I see. But then I think Dambucho also said, no, it is all, we should know that he is occupying the highest office of the land. To who the former president? I tell you. So yeah, when, he, when he was yes. coming in, nobody stood up. Hey. Except, of course, the, uh, what do you call, uh, his appointees. People were just relaxed. I see. Lazy in a chair, you see. So, at that time, I am sure that the idea portrayed into the party rank and files was that uh, Kufo wasn't on their side. Oh. But after he left and they saw that the goodies they used to enjoy, it's not that every morning Kufo would come and give them money, but some of the benefits they were getting through Kufo's, uh, uh, what do you call it? Social policy intervention. Social policy intervention and things. And all where, where all, then, they, then they woke up, you see. So um, somebody in a, in a family, uh, what do you call it, WhatsApp page, somebody brought something up. And so I'm going to give stone, Kufo stone to him. Mm. And I wrote that, please, don't go. If you know the Abobo Yas and go pack with rocks and stones going to Kufo's house, if you don't take care, that place will become like a quarry. <laughs> you see? So don't go. You know, I mean, he has enough stones in his house. Yeah, he has enough stones yeah. in his house. You see, but I, I feel that it was, it was rather, rather unfortunate. At that time, government was completely sidelined from party. Right, this issue. You see, it tends well, to happen to every party. You know, yeah. So, um, <laughs> if if you ask me, President Kufo may have his choice. Of course, he will have his choice. The electoral commissioner is not supposed to show. Uh, that be, it, it belongs to be this party or that party, yeah. but the electoral commissioner votes. votes. Yeah. So as he's going, as she's going, you don't know. Maybe if he's voting in Tamale yeah. South, he's going to vote for this man. Right. You see, Tamale Central. Tamale Central. Central. Thank you. You see, so you don't know. Everybody. So, so yeah. Kufo wasn't whipping people in line. You see, Kufo wasn't asking MMDCs, regional ministers, ministers generally. No, MM, um, generally know, to, gen go, to, to vote in a certain. No, no, no. He wasn't doing that. No, no. Because there was a talk about there was talk about just before the 
the, the delegates conference. There was talk about MMDCs being changed here and there, people being sacked. And that, for some people, gave oh, sort of credence. The reason why some of the MMDCs were sacked were due to their gross the mismanagement performance. OK. It had nothing to do with the internal elections. It had nothing to do with the internal oh, Because, okay. look, like, like, like I'm saying, um, going to 2007, there were a lot of, okay. I wouldn't say a lot of, some ministers. Okay. And when you're talking about ministers, you're talking about, I mean, uh, cabinet ministers. All right. Who were, who were for Nana? Who were for Nana? Okay, that's fine. But I'm sure Nana, Nana Alan himself didn't know. <laughs> anyway, let's, come, let's, let's do this. Let's go to YMCA here, Accra, um, here in Greater Accra, where, the, where some voting is also taking place. So Derek, I don't think my colleague is also there. Derek, what's happening um, where you are? Right, so Moro, we are here at the YMCA and the elections have started. Uh, so far, we have had about 10 people come and cast their vote. We have been told that 72 people in total will be coming to vote in this Delegates Congress here at the YMCA. So uh, when you come here at the YMCA, you can see a lot of security men behind me. There's a lot of security. There are three checkpoints in total. When you come through the first gate, uh, briefly, you will be checked. The security men at the gate will check you to verify uh, if you are carrying any arms or not. Then you go to the second checkpoint, uh, which is the main gate entering into the compound where the voting is happening. So when you come to the second checkpoint uh, as well, you will be taken through some process of verification, whether you are a delegate, you are a journalist, you have to show your ID card and then you'll be taken to the voting area to finally cast your vote. And so 72 people in total will be voting here at the YMCA. And we have been told that 32 constituency chairmen will be coming along. 14 members of parliament will be voting here. Regional representatives, two on the National Council, three of them will be coming. Then uh, founding members, four of them. Then 17 regional executives will also be voting here at the YMCA. And so when you come, your elections are started. We've had some people come uh, to vote already. We've seen the likes of Ajoa Safo around. She has also voted. We'll be showing you uh, how she voted and then what she told us briefly. But when you come here at the YMCA Moro, the elections have started and it is going on peacefully as well because of the security checks uh, that has been put in place. And so, uh, briefly, uh, we will be speaking to some of the delegates who are coming along as well so that we take their perspective on their elections and then so that they are able to tell us who they are voting for, if possible. We so far have not been able to get any of them tell us who they are voting for. Bamboro, let's join in this interview. Know the expectations on the ongoing exercise this morning? Um, well, I just got here. I think I'm probably late, uh, considering the fact that others have come to vote and gone. But uh, location is uh, fantastic. I think there's enough security. And this one is, a, you know, the beginning of a, a long journey. And uh, today we're here to, as it is, select five out of the ten. And uh, I don't think it's any uh, extraordinary, uh, you know, uh, event in a way. But uh, more importantly, um, I, I think that the party stands for liberty and uh, also for justice. And I, I think that uh, ultimately today, everybody uh, I can see is at, at ease and uh, free to vote in whichever direction that they choose. Um, some of us would have wished that uh, we could vote for five people at a time, but uh, be it as it may, the elections committee has uh, set the uh, arrangement for just one vote. And uh, I'm here to do the honors to one candidate and uh, make sure that at least uh, he makes it to the top five. The majority of the decision rests in the polling station uh, people and uh, we we are just here to do the first round of, of events. Yeah. 
Do you think your selection will make the MPP break the eight from 2024? Your selection. Um, the, the beautiful thing is that all of our candidates, I think, uh, whoever we filled, uh, we will rally behind and, and do the needful to, to make sure that Ghanaians appreciate the fact that with the MPP party in government, Ghana makes very important strides, uh, be it in, in terms of job creation. And, and, and I think ultimately where Ghana is, uh, the, the, the beaming need for industrialization uh, is, is, is what we are all for. And, and I believe that certainly uh, if Ghana should industrialize, where we have uh, many more factories than just this one D1F, uh, we will get more jobs. And, and, and that is what I am hoping for. Which of these candidates do you think has the ability to industrialize? Uh, well, um, many of them have posited their vision. And I think the one that, you know, resonates strongly uh, with me is uh, former trade minister. Uh, that's what he's done for two cabinets and he intends to expand that. And, and I think that uh, when it comes to industrialization, uh, nobody really uh, can beat him to that. Um, so, I mean, those are the facts, uh, undisputed. Uh, whether you hash, slice or dice it, it is what it is. Some have argued that how successful has he been in delivering. All right, so that's the member of parliament for the Anya Sulutum constituency, Dick Singh Aduma, who can see interacting with a cross section of the media who are present at the YMCA where uh, voting is also taking place. YMCA is actually the center for Greater Accra. Um, and so we saw some of the things he said about why he believes that, you know, uh, whoever, uh, which is Alan, of course, he says he supports Alan. He said it, you know, publicly. Uh, should lead the party in the 2024 elections. But he also asked that whoever wins is, is prepared to support the person. Anyway, so let's go to um, one of the front runners as well, uh, the Honorable Kennedy Oheni Ejepon, who is the Member of Parliament for the Asen uh, Central <laughs> Constituency. He's cast his vote and he has something to say. Let's, let's watch him. Let's listen to what he has to say. The second layer. So I'm here to go to the third layer, the fourth layer, where I'm going to vote. So... But so far, so good, especially the election committee, then also the national. They've done marvelously well, I must admit. You know, initially, there were a lot of intimidation and all those things. But whatever petition we gave them, they granted almost all of them for the sake of peace and unity. So, so far, so good. And here, Central Region, you know, we are a disciplined region. I don't expect anything bad to happen to embarrass us. And I'm not going to create any confusion here. We we'll make sure we are one party. We vote. Anybody who wins, you know, we all come together and you know face NDC. So I don't have a problem at all. But this is your home region. What number of votes are you expecting to win at the end of the day? Oh at least uh, at least I'll get eighty percent. No doubt about it. Okay. I'll get 80%. Yeah. Right. So we should be rest assured. Because they're going to honor me for so my hard work uh, and my commitment to the region. I think everybody you talk to, all the delegates, know what I've done for Central Region. And they think this is the time also to reward. So I know I'm going to get massive votes from Central. No doubt about it. No matter the amount they give them, no matter the intimidation, they have conscience and they know that this is the man. And look, whoever will do what, any election that I don't get involved will go to opposition. So, I mean, that should remind them, especially those who are playing dirty games and all sorts of things. Then one person, if you bring 1,000 MPP people, let them talk. No Ghanaian will listen to them except Canada for one, one person. So I'm not as afraid. I mean, if you like, go and read the Bible, the story of Gideon. <laughs> the story of Gideon. And you will see. So, everybody.
Right, that's him. Uh, the Maverick, Honorable Kennedy, Ohini, Ejapon. He says he's expecting 80% um, votes for him in the central region because he's done a lot for that region. But he also says that don't attack me. If you attack me and I attack you back, you're going to be in trouble. Let's now go to our uh, central regional correspondent, Akwesiado. He's also on standby. Akwesi, what have you been picking up? What's, what's been happening? Um, I would say please unmute so that we can hear you. Okay. I would say okay. please unmute would say your please microphone. Unmute you. Okay. I think that's a challenge with this, um, uh, with, with the connection. Akwesi will sort it out and then we will go back to him. Uh, technical guys are working on that. Akwesi. Uh, Ado is a reporter in the central region. He's been going around to see how things are uh, playing out or how the voting exercise is happening. It's, it's how things are, um, are shaping up uh, as the elections have started. It's supposed to end at one for our exercise. And so we'll see how central region generally um, is looking like. So I could please sort it out and we'll come back to you. Yes, I was, I was talking to Mr. Dan Dugan about, um, yes, you're saying that this super delegate conference defeats the whole essence of expanded electoral college if indeed the party wants to make progress on what happened in 2007. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you see, it looks like, I'll, I'll call them the elites, okay. the super delegates. Okay. But it was because of elitism that. The college was expanded. No, I'm coming. Because of elitism. Okay. That the United Gokos Convention right. collapsed. True. And it didn't last for four or five years. Mm -hmm. What actually happened was the, the bigger guys were said to be so elitist. You know, so they were looking at their level. They were lawyers. They were looking at associating mm. with their levels and then leaving the, the what do you call the... The commoners. The commoners, the young people. Okay. And so, if let's say they're having snack and the commoners come, you know, this it's party the grows. No, they don't throw the crumbs at them. Okay. They just, you stay mm. where you are. They'll finish before they'll come. Right. Whereas there was a young man who they brought into the UGCC by the name Kwame Nkrumah. But for him, when the, young, when the commoners come, he sits with them and eats with them. So the youth endeared to him. And so they moved. And when they moved, they moved and went to form the CPP. Okay. I'm told that Akwesiado is ready now. Akwesiado, do you, uh, like hopefully we should be able to hear you now. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, Great. Please go ahead. Okay, so um, voting has commenced here at the Quadrangle Hall in the University of Cape Coast. And then, um, just as you mentioned earlier on, we just saw the Honorable Kennedy of Japan, a candidate in this particular race, um, coming to the center to cast his vote. He has announced that he is expecting at least 80% um, of the total votes um, that will be casted here today. Uh, in his home region because he believes um, that he has done a lot for the party and still has a lot to do for them. Um, we are expecting a total of 55 delegates to take part in today's voting. And the number consists of um, 23 um, constituency chairpersons, 17 regional executives, uh, two founding members of the party, uh, two representatives uh, on the National Council of the Party from the region here, and then we also expecting 10 members of parliament uh, and then the regional minister. Uh, but what I am gathering is that we may end up having um, 53 persons uh, taking part in voting today because uh, one of the uh, founding fathers uh, has uh, unfortunately uh, passed away. And then I'm told that the regional chairman, uh, Mr. Kutin, uh, is also not in town and so we didn't uh, take part in voting. Uh, at this place, let me say that the um, police uh, has put in place adequate security measures uh, to ensure the safety of each and everyone here. So even before you get to the actual voting center, um, they put in place about um, three layers of security. That is, you get to the first point, the second point, and then the third point before you are allowed entry um, to the voting center. Uh, except for the fact that 
um, the press are not allowed uh, to be at the actual voting center. Uh, we are kept behind the second uh, mayor of the security, and so we are not able to tell as to what actually is happening at the um, voting center precisely. Thank you very much, Akwesiado, for that wonderful report. Let's now go to somewhere in the Greater Accra region. I'm sure it's the Greater Accra, the, y, the same YMCA, yes, that's it, where the Member of Parliament for the Domi Kwabinya constituency, Sarah Joseph, who I'm told has cast a ballot. She's had an interview with the, with the press, and let's watch and listen to what she has to say. Come to you, don't worry. They mean by it is not representative. We have decided as a party that this is how we're going to do the shortlisting. It is enshrined in our constitution. It is constitutional, it is legal, it is proper. Any group can decide on their own how they organize their own affairs and mind you this is um, a group of, group of private individuals who've come together to form an association which we call a political party which is designed in accordance with the rules for the formation of political parties in this country we have the right to determine how we organize our own internal affairs the important thing is that whatever process we go through must conform with the rules that we have decided for ourselves and so far everything has gone on exactly as our constitution has prescribed so i'm happy with with the arrangement so far i'm happy with the conduct of the elections so far and i know that at the end of the day we'll come together as a stronger party fortified and better able to take on anything that the main opposition party can throw at us. I know most of the time uh, party members are calling for unity after an exercise like this, but at the end of the day, we, most of the time have uh, the party divided. Uh, uh, among the aspirants, what kind of structures have been put in place to ensure that at the end of the day, the party still come back together to support whoever we become the flag? This isn't the first time the MPP is going through this procedure. I, th I think this is our second time that we're testing this special delegates um, arrangement. And we've done internal elections several times. You can't please everybody, but we're Democrats. And so we believe that what the, the majority says is what we should all go with. And so far, it's worked well for the party. We have a very robust dispute resolution um, arrangement in place. We all talk to each other, and we all, we've all agreed that this is an internal contest. It is not a war. It is just one of the arrangements that we're putting in place to finalize our um, front for the main contest ahead. So I'm confident that just as we've always done it, there may be issues, but we will sit down and discuss it and resolve them in the spirit of... Um, amicable resolution and one party united for a common goal which is retaining power for the benefit of the people of this country. As you're going in there to cast your vote, what will you be looking out for to pick in your best fight? Um, I am focused on casting my ballot for my preferred candidate and I'm sure others would also do that. And at the end of the day, whichever of them emerges the top five, we would go and sit down and talk to them and decide how we um, conduct ourselves going forward. Any special qualities you'll be looking at for? Oh, competence, of course, and defending our party's record, um, being a unifier, having concrete uh, policies for us both for the conduct of the elections and beyond for the governance of the country going forward demonstrated proven 
um, competence and track record. So all of that for me are reflected in one candidate, and I'm going to cast my ballot for number 10. At the end of the day, to the aspirants who will not be making it the top five, what will you want to tell them? They still remain members, leading members of the NPP. It's incumbent on them to work with whoever emerges leader to work together to ensure that we present a united front for the 2024 elections. Losing an election isn't easy, but they know that out of the 10, only one can emerge victorious. So as true Democrats, as true um, patriots, as true committed members of the party, I expect all of us to close ranks and unite behind whoever emerges victorious and forge ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's the. All right. So that's the member of parliament for I believe Ablekuma West, isn't it? I hope I got it right. Ablekuma West. That's the member of parliament. That's uh, the minister for communication and digitalization. Um, now let's go to Patrick Buama, who is I believe the majority chief whip. Yep. Yes. The media has interacted with him as well. Um, Okay, what is the... He was the... I don't know. He was the... Yeah, but he's the member of parliament for Kankwe... For Kankwe sanitation. Sanitation. Yeah. sanitation. Yeah. So, okay, so ask him when we get through to him. When, when we get that interview, we'll, uh, we'll show you the, we'll show you some shots of that. But let's come back in-house whilst... Yeah, okay, so I think Patrick Bama is talking, isn't he? All right, so I was asking right, so the I qualities asking. you are looking at to choose your, 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 your five. One, somebody who unified the party. Two, somebody who appealed to the greater Ghanaian community of voters come next year, December. Three, somebody who will be able to put together a very good program that will resonate with Ghanaians. Because you must have a program that resonates with the vision of the electoral college of the country. And people must believe in your program and your vision, and they must trust in you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Honorable, how is the, how is the process? Very when smooth, can. very smooth. And all the... Right, and so, yes, we have been speaking to some of the delegates coming in. We've spoken to Esla Ufo. We'll be bringing you shortly the, that interview we had with uh, Sarah Adwa Safo as well. And so, Moro, if you can hear me, this is what is happening here at the YMC, a delegates are coming in to vote and we are expecting that even before the 1 p.m. deadline we should be done because there are only 72 people uh, coming to vote here at YMCA and so far we have had a number of them, close to 20 of them come to cast their vote and so uh, as we are assured that by 12 we should be done voting here. Moro. Of the centers would have finished voting, but anyway, Derek Adoti, thank you very much for that report. Um, so you had Derek, my colleague, YMCA, interacting with Minister for Communication, MP for Blake Kuma West, Esla, um, uh, Esla Ousu Ekufu, and also Patrick um, Yabuama, who is the member of parliament for Kaikwe Central Constituency. Sorry about the, the initial mistake that I'm not confused with, I'm not on prayer. Sorry about that. Uh, he's just a member of parliament. So again, let's come back in house, but please bear with us. The nature of some of these events are such that we'll be going in and out. So, you know, our resource persons would be commenting, but when something happens out there, there are lots of people who are watching us who wouldn't know what's happening out there. So, you know, it's going to be back and forth, in and out, in and out. So please, please bear with us. Yes, so you're saying that if you can, if you can, if you can land on your, your commentary on the super delegates conference where you think that it is unnecessary, it yeah. defeats the essence of expanded electoral quality, if you can, if you can just summarize it, okay. so that we can move okay. to some other issue. Like, uh, but before uh, you do that, I'll beg of you again. Again, let's watch Ajua Sarah Ajua Safo. She's also been talking. It doesn't take that doesn't much take time that to much. go through the entire process. I Where do you think this woman votes? What do you think this? What do you think this? And I think it's it's very um, commendable. And I, cast, I, I based my vote on the qualities that I was expecting in who is better fit to lead the party. And I, I'm looking at a unifier because after elections, there are a lot of divisions, anger. So someone who can unify the party, someone who 
it's also marketable to Ghanaians because we're going to market the person for 2024 elections. And again, um, someone who would um, campaign on the good works of His Excellency the President to make sure that we break the eight. So this is, the, I mean, these are the three characteristics that I looked out for in the 10 that are where on the list. Honorable, I saw you leave your phone behind. Is that to avoid the temptation of taking a picture of your ballot? I think so. It was part of the uh, modalities and the rules that came with this election, that nobody should go in with a phone. Um, but some people, like myself, we had our party cards digitalized, so it was on our phones, and you need to prove that you are actually a party member. But I went through that. Uh, I crossed that hurdle and I was able to cast my vote. But, but yes, phones are not allowed. But Honourable, today's voting is that a process to select, not actually to get the flag, uh, the, the flag bearer? Where yeah, it's a short list. Where do you base your voting on such qualities like a unifier and market type of person? You have not read that yet. Why are you grounding your voting based on those qualities? You are not in the place yet. We are not in. I don't, I don't understand no, I when you say you are not in the place yet because this is not an event, it's a process. Yeah. So the process of selection, this is the first process and you go to the second. Yeah. So I don't see why my quality should change at every step of the process. It should be one so that I can be able to um, put my finger on the one actual one that deserves to be the party leader. Honorable, so. many have argued that I mean, they should have been, this should have been straight uh, forward and not to categorize them into two, whittling it down to five, and then uh, later on um, getting a sole person to represent the party. What's, what's your take on that? I think we've gone through a lot as a party, and we've tried many modalities. And um, the, the, the time we had 17 contestants was the, the, the time, the dawn for change. And we thought that having such a process in our constitution would help the party. So um, I don't see anything wrong with it because, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Because collectively we decided to have that in our constitution so that for the main contest we won't have more than five. We don't have, want to have the 17 episode again. So I think it, it was a, a progression in our constitutional uh, arrangement. And finally, finally, for, for a first time or a foot soldier sitting out there, with what you've seen, will you say that uh, the internal party um, structures for elections, um, there's that thing that will lead the party. We have seen everything come here peacefully. Is it a picture that the NPP wants to put out there and that come what may, you guys understand the democratic process and during the election itself, you guys will do the need for I mean, the party itself and it for the soldiers. You come, you do whatever you need to do, live peacefully. Is that what you are painting, the picture you are painting with this? Exactly so. Yeah, exactly. That most definitely. That That is all that we are trying to put across. Because all our supporters in the constituency will definitely look up to their MPs, their M MDCs and stuff. So I think that what we... All right, that's uh, Sarah Hajua Safo. Someone was just telling me that he, you know, uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament for uh, uh, Tamale Central says he's fallen in love with the way she speaks lately. Me? Ah, I've never said uh, that. Please, he hasn't said that. Don't, 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 like don't, don't, don't bring problems here. American. American. She's trying to slam you. <laughs> I've just directed him to, to my, my very good friend. Don't bring brother. Wahala here. Uh, I, I, know, I know, I know. Where no, but he hasn't said anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I want us to wrap up on this before we, okay, we move to right. some other issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like I'm saying. Mm -hmm. right. So, if you had your own way, this super delegates. No, no, come if on. I have my own way. Okay. Why? If, if, if the number is more than. Well. Uh, all the aspirants okay. should be going to okay. the grassroots, mm -hmm. reach constituency by constituency. Right. That's how the American system is. Yeah. And then they'll be getting some votes. So by the time they finish with the last constituency, okay. we'll know the top three. Right. And I'm saying strictly should go to the grassroots right. because they are those who decide that, oh, okay. as for this person, right. um, again. Okay, yes. <laughs> Shelly Ayokobuchi, the Foreign Affairs Minister, has been talking as well. What has she been saying? 
So far, so very, very good. But what, what, things, what qualities are you looking out for? Oh, I'm looking for, let me say that every one of the ten are well qualified to lead our party. But then you also look, uh, need to look beyond, which is who will help us or who has a better chance um, if he or she leads. And this time is all he's, if he leads, will help us break the eight. And I believe my candidate will. In terms of unifying the party, what should the party do after this internal process? Oh, I think that, I mean, we all understand that. Uh, even all the ten people understand that there's only one person who will win this, this, um, this election. Uh, and then, of course, the main one, which is on the fourth, uh, two people can't share that spot. And therefore, um, everyone going into the race knows that um, they stand a chance, but it is one person who will win. So that's, that's basically it. So if you do not win, you rally around the winner, and we prosecute the agenda to, 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 to break the eight and, and get into, back into government in 2025, 7th of January. But so far, it's going well. Yes. At the end of this exercise, um, the person who will make the winner extends invitation to you to be a running mate. Would you accept it? I, will, I, I, think I'll, I think about it. <laughs> but it's not something that you, 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 a decision you take lightly. So you think about it, you consult, and all of that. Is it worrying that we don't have any females contesting? Oh, well, eventually we will. For now, it's not worrying. Um, it's not worrying. No female has um, expressed that interest and gone forward. But it's not worrying. It, eventually, it will happen, like it has happened in other places. So, well, is this process really telling Ghanaians that the NPP really understands uh, the real democracy and the processes you Oh, I believe so. Absolutely. You can tell from what is happening and the reports from all over the country that we understand what we are doing very well and we also know that it must be done uh, in a very decorous manner which is befitting of what we are all about, a very decent uh, party. And the, 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 the one who wins will win with a very clear um, margin. Oh, ho, ho. well, we are we are we are here <laughs> to pick our leader. Why are you why are you thinking of a running mate at this point? We are here to pick our leader. It's something you'd consider if it comes to race. Well, anybody, I believe anybody in the party will consider it, including myself. So it doesn't really. Um, don't know what to say except to say that any one of us will consider it. But today we are we are choosing our leader and eh? hey number ten is number one he will he will lead wide margin yes that's my candidate. <laughs>
vice president, Dr. Mount Barrio, of Continue. He's capable, he's committed, and I think that's what it takes to transform the economy Ghana. It's a global phenomenon. Ghana is not the only country going through this. We should have be praised for the leadership of President Kufado and his government. We should be praised for look at the way we handle COVID. The, the situation is because of COVID and Russia being war. There are challenges, but we're not going for the challenges. We are committed and determined to make sure that we solve the problems and make sure Ghana should have faith in. All right, <laughs> it's getting, it's getting. Um, I'm told there's some serious problem in the Shanti region. Uh, there's some uh, chaos somewhere in the Shanti region. Let's do this quickly. Let quickly have the video of the confusion. Then we'll come back in house and continue with that conversation. What's happening? <laughs> But um, Abdel Basit is our reporter there. Abdel Basit will be telling us what's the cause, what's the cause of this confusion because we've seen people creating, uh, well, saying away, change, whatever it is. But we ought to understand what brought about this um, confusion. And uh, Abdel Basit, if you're ready, please do this quickly because we have to come back in house and continue with our analysis. My resource person has been sitting here for a while now. They ought to, they ought to uh, be giving enough time for, the, for them to tell us what they make of today's event. So, Abdel Basit, if you're ready, please join us. Let's do this quickly. Let's tell, so you can tell us what is the cause of the confusion we have just witnessed. Abdel Basit, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, Moro, I, I'm ready. Good, here. You know, good. The, the voting started here exactly 9 a.m., and it was moving on smoothly until the youth organizer of the party, in the name of Patrick uh, Raff, came to vote. And unfortunately, per the rules of the new patriotic party, no one was supposed to uh, capture or show out who he voted for. But this man raised what he voted up to the crowd, indicating that he voted for the vice president. This uh, caused confusion at the center. So, you know, per, per the rules, to that, do, do, that ballot should be nullified. So uh, when the EC official decided to do exactly that, he also decided to uh, protect uh, what the issue official said. So it raised a whole lot of confusion around the voting center. Quarters were pushing for them to be accepted, while others who are rejecting this. Most of the agents are also rejecting it. But so far as it has been a law no one, that no one should show who he voted for. They will not allow that vote to be part of the ballot. So, so that is exactly what caused the confusion here at the voting center. Otherwise, most of the MPs have voted here, and I can say for sure that the original minister was first to vote over here. And due to the security situation over here, any member of parliament or any uh, delegate who passed through uh, the security uh, bar barricade have to be set. You have to leave your phone behind behind the barricade before you enter the premises. So this is what has been happening here this morning. There are a lot of party supporters outside the voting centers. Others are shouting that we are going to uh, change. And others too are saying that we need number two. Others are also saying that uh, 
your term is passed. So give us the opportunity to, to, to be the new front of the party. Meaning that uh, the term of Alan Martin has passed, so they need a uh, vice president to come. And other two are saying that so far as vice president is part of the old government, they should go so that a new person will also take over. Right now, I'm spe speaking with you. This is exactly what is happening at the uh, forefront of the premises. I see. Um, Abdel Basri, can you confirm if, if this is the KNUST campuses? Come again. Is this KNUST? Yes, the law, in front of the law faculty of the Kwame Nkrumah yes, University of Science yes, and Technology. Yes, voting center is. Okay. Initia, initially, yeah. they decided not to allow the party supporters to, to troop this place, but uh, unfortunately, most of them are here, and they are still making noise outside the polling center. They, even though there are a lot of security, you have to pass through about three barricades before you get to the center. I see them doing the change sign. Am I reading correctly? Change from what to what? Yeah, that's what I indicated earlier. Some of them are saying that so far as, uh, so far as uh, uh, the vice president has been part of the government, he should go uh, along with the president. Mm. And other two are also shouting that uh, they need a new face to take over the party. So wow. this is the sign that they are doing. Both supporters of Alain Martin and uh, Dr. Baumia are doing that thing in front of the uh, voting center. I see. That's interesting. Abdul Basit, thanks for that report. So, Abdul Basit is reporting to us that there was some confusion at um, the law faculty premises at KNUST where the youth organizer of the party in the Shanti region voted and actually exclaimed that he had voted for the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. And then the supporters were there saying, no, you've broken the rules of the game. And so let's take his vote out because it is against the rules set out to guide today's exercise. And so that's what brought about the confusion. And as you can tell, you saw, you saw two groups, one saying change, one saying maintain. But so we'll come back in-house now. Uh, those of you who have expressed some concerns that you're not, we're not giving enough time to our resource persons. We're now going to give enough time to our resource persons to tell us what they make of what has happened so far, and then we'll take it from there. Mr. Dugan, if you can please, in summary, so okay. that, because I want us to move to some, okay. other, some All right. other issue. Uh, yeah. in, in summary. Yeah. I would rather prefer that <laughs> okay. all the aspirants, I give the opportunity to even if, if, if they are, what they call it, 20, million. 25, okay. they should be going from polling station, uh, constituency by constituency, meeting the grassroots. Okay. Because mind you, the votes come from the polling station. Yes. It doesn't come from anywhere else. Right. So you go there and get yourself to the polling station, mm. uh, the polling, the constituency in the polling station yeah. as, as executive. Okay. And they will... Uh, what you call vote for you anyway. Okay. So among the 20, if they are 25, right. they, uh, what you call majority will have choice for maybe A, B, C, D. Right. And then you move on. Okay. So at the end of it all, like the US system, hmm. that's, that's how it looks like. Okay. At the end of it all, then we pick the, the top Who three. Okay. No, we pick the top three. Okay. And then we have the presidential primaries okay. based on the top three. Right. And mind you, these top three have been chosen from the grassroots. Right. You see? Okay. Now, um, the danger mm -hmm. with these elites okay. is that somebody who has got them in their pockets can give them a list mm -hmm. of these are the people you should vote for. Okay. And so they'll pick people who the grassroots doesn't like, okay. doesn't feel comfortable with. I see. You see? So you can find somebody who, who the grassroots loves, mm. but to just give the list, and that person will not be, because if that person is able to make the Five, mm -hmm. whether the person is the last on the list, if he's able to make the five, mm -hmm. you see, he's going to cause trouble when we go to the uh, main primaries. I see. So yeah. you, left the, you, you believe that this structure is unfair? I, I, I believe because it's, in the first place, like I said, okay. it defeats the purpose of the expansion of the electoral That's college. fine. That's fine. I, come back. I don't know whether you agree with him, Honorable Mutala Mohammed, that you think that a special delegates conference is not necessary and that the party should have just allowed, just like the NDC does, so go and make a case... If the people like you, that's it. Well, I think that it is not only uh, public who are concerned right. about the fact that we've been sitting here and yeah. your producer has been showing the interviews. The I think that I've sat here for almost an hour or more Apologies. without Apologies. having a word. I think Apologies. it truncates our thoughts. Mm. And good morning to my sister. I said that she's not taking care of me. <laughs> <laughs> good morning to my brother. Well, uh, mm. it is very clear 
Well, the, that, the, the director of the program, the producer, uh, uh, Abdullah, who's a very good friend, says he personally apologizes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it is very clear that there is a problem. Okay. First and foremost, the process of allowing just 960 plus people to engage in the super delegate elections to trim the number from 10 to 5 is completely undemocratic. Completely. For me, it's a slap. How do you mean? It's a slap in the face mm -hmm. of all the principles expected of not just broadening the base to in you know, to encapsulate everybody in participating in the electoral processes or in the electoral process of electing a candidate, but it defeats the purpose of, of democracy. Okay. If the, the reason for expanding the electoral college, which everybody agrees, in 2016, the NDC expanded the electoral college, exactly. made it more broader so that people could participate in determining who becomes their parliamentary candidate. Of course, there were some challenges that we encountered, you know. And going forward, I, I think that that is how we expand our electoral, our, our, I mean, we broaden the frontiers of our democratic engagement. Right. If the reason was to broaden it, why would you then, out of the hundreds of thousands of would-be participants in the electoral processes of electing a presidential candidate, you select just few to determine that, assuming out of the 10 candidates who are contesting, there is a particular candidate the grassroots wants. But how, what percentage of the grassroots constitute the 950? Because if you look at the 950, it's systematic. It seems to me that the elite within the regions and within the constituencies. Now, assuming that the grassroots of the NPP would have preferred a particular candidate, but the elite, you know, 960 plus, don't like that particular candidate. It means that automatically the wish of the grassroots would have been defeated. Mm. Well, if the person doesn't get to the five people who will be elected through this super delegate con con conference or congress, it, is going, it would have been terminated. Yeah. Now, assuming that there is one of the ten who is more capable to change the fortunes of this country, to yeah. clean the mess that is perpetrated by the very elite who are given the exclusive right to elect out of, select five out of the ten. The, the, it's not only the MD, MPP who should have been denied that brain to correct the mess, but the entire people of this country would have been denied the opportunity. So that's why I think that it is undemocratic. Okay. But it is very clear, and we can pretend how much we want to do. The contest in this election is ethnic, unfortunately religious, and that is the saddest aspect of it. And the ethnicity and the religious nature of it is perpetrated by the very elite who ought to have known. It is very clear that the Achim faction within the MPP are supporting Baumia, and they are supporting Baumia because of President Nanado. That is the reason. And majority of the Asante faction within the MPP are supporting Alan. It is very clear. I mean, look at the number of people who are all supporting Alan. Taking into consideration these two ethnic groups, and let no one tell me that ethnicity doesn't have a role to play in politics. Everywhere in the world, ethnicity, regionalism, or if like geographical location, has a role to play in politics. But if you do not manage it well, particularly in our case, that is where the danger is. And I'll give you a classical example. In the US elections in the year 2000, majority of the Muslims in America who traditionally were Democrats, if you look at the previous elections, voted the Republican Party in the 2000 elections because Al Gore's running mate was a Jew. True. And that informed the position mm -hmm. they, they, they take in the elections. I'll give you another example. Come to think of even Obama's election. Of course, the blacks have been predominantly Democrats. Democrats. Yeah. But huge numbers voted the, Repub the Democratic Party because of Obama and race, ethnicity played a role everywhere it does. In our case, particularly in Ghana, the reason why this for me is frightening is the level at which it has been trumpeted. So they can deny that, that but that's a fact. Apart from the Achim Asante division, there's also Kufo and Nanado's division within the MPP. Go, Victor Usu, I mean, that played. So we are seeing 
a second round, for a third round. <laughs> what happened between in the Victor Usu's uh, elections, you know, in the in and the will in and power will in 19, the that, UNC. that that also played in the MPP's presidential congress in the year 2008. Of course, he would deny that President Kufour didn't have a candidate, but everybody knew mm. that President Kufour's preferred candidate at that time was Honorable Alan Chirmantin. And the only way, or one of the easiest ways you can identify that is that those closer to President <coughs> Kufour at that time were rooting for Alan. Today, they can deny the fact that the establishment candidate is Dr. Baumia. Look at all those closer to President Nanado. They are all supporting Dr. Baumia. Look, I was shocked when I listened to a radio station and my good friend, Honorable, uh, the former minister for, for, for information, uh, Mustafa Hamid. Hello, under President Gufo. Oh, uh, Frank Ejekun? No, not Frank Ejekun. No, no. He comes um, on, on no. Good Morning Ghana. Uh, there was Obushi also Obushi. 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 So, so when I heard that the spokesperson for Alan, and it was Nanakumia, I was flabbergasted. Why? I was flabbergasted because I know how close Nanakumia has been with Honorable Alan. Flabbergasted just means you're surprised. You know? In fact, uh, I was shocked. He's, he's a PhD. <laughs> so, you know, he's very sweet. You know, I, I, I was, so I was, I was surprised that the, he was. I mean, of course, he has the right to to choose who he campaigns for. Okay. But for him to be a spokesperson, I was surprised, to be very honest with you. But of course, of course, he has that right to choose who he wants to. There are other candidates that I knew, and some of them have had some private conversations with them, and knowing their position about President Nanado and Dr. Baumia as to how they ran this economy you know, to a ground zero, mm -hmm. how, how they have messed up this economy. I've had private conversations with certain individuals. I'm not talking of Nana Kumia in this case. I mean, certain individuals, even in Parliament. And suddenly, they have changed, and they are now supporting Dr. Baumia. The only reason, in my opinion, I think that they have suddenly changed, considering what I know, is because of what Machiavelli once said. You know, and if you permit me, that human beings are greedy of wants and needy of gains. As long as you shower your blessings upon them, they are all yours. So perhaps some blessings have been showered, showered upon certain individuals for which reason principles... Are you, are you suggesting they don't have conscience? No, I'm saying that some blessings have been showered okay. upon certain individuals for which reason principles have actually taken a sabbatical leave. Let me ask you this. Can, can I finish? If I have a reservation with Nanadu yes. as president, do I transfer that onto the Dr. President? Baumia has been the chairman of the economic management team. And those individuals who have expressed strongly their discontent against Nanado's administration do so on the basis of how they have run the economy maybe, of this country. I'm coming. Maybe. I'm saying that they do so on the basis of how the economy has unfortunately mm. been run. Mm. And they did not only express their disgust against this government, looking at Nanado just as an individual. But they strongly talk about the promises, and if I can quote the word, sugar-coated words that were used by Dr. Baumia, you know, prior to the 2016 elections. Okay, so let me and they have expressed it. So let me suddenly... Okay, let me not sidetrack you. Yes. You're talking about the possible reasons why they decided to go... The Baumia. Yeah, so, so okay. one thing I've seen is that yeah. a lot of our colleagues, even in Parliament, and a lot of Achim NPP people are rooting for, for <laughs> Dr. Baumi. It is very clear. Look, the agenda of the, N, of the MPP initially was that Dr. Baumi was going to run with the Minister for Finance. That was the agenda in 2024. Where's your, your source? Oh, that was I, oh, I mean, your source? Oh, you know I am properly positioned to... There are a lot of information I have given you <laughs> in private which turns out to be true, isn't it? Well, that's true. So I'm saying that the agenda was that mm. Honorable... Uh, 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 Dr. Bomia was going to run with Honorable Kennedy, uh, Honorable uh, Kinofurata, but, but because of certain factors which you all know, they decided to move away from that. I'm told that Honorable Estella is also rooting to be a running mate. You just had the Minister for, for Foreign Affairs who virtually is announcing to us she that she wouldn't mind at being all. a running mate yeah. <coughs> be, because they're looking at the fact that the NDC's running mate is right. Professor Nana. Right. I mean, Professor Nana is the gap between Professor Nana and, and these individuals is just too wide. But at least clearly. Also the female, the female it's, not, it's not just about having a female, female but having a female of standing, a female 
who, who is not corrupt, a female who has demonstrated I mean, her intellectual prowess as far as the concerns of this country are concerned. But that is not the issue. Mm. I'm just looking at that. So, so they can them, deny... Some of them are doing this for self-serving purposes. It's possible. They can okay. deny the fact that there's no ethnicity in it. It is. Okay. And again, I have listened to some members of Honorable uh, the Vice President's campaign who want to talk about religion. I mean, for me, that is extremely galen. Why? Look, Moro, I don't care who is the President of the Republic of Ghana. As long as that person treats every Ghanaian equally, as long as that person seeks the welfare of both Christians, Muslims, and traditionals, and everybody mindful of the fact that this country is a secular state, if you want to go on that tangent, leaders who have contributed significantly to the success and the growth of Islam in this country have not been Muslims. For us to have even a holy day where we celebrate our festivities, you and I know, when we're in school, Eid, both Eid al-Adha and Eid al you know, Fitr. Fitr, we were forced to go to school. People who would have been home, you know, celebrating the Eid festivities with their families were forced to go to work. And in fact, in some instances, I remember, on the day of Eid, some of the teachers knowing that those of us who were Muslims would be at home, they would take a duty roster and, 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 and write names of students who didn't come. It took not a Muslim president, but a Christian president to give us that opportunity where we celebrate our Eid without any difficulty. Several others. I'll give another example. Senegal. Senegal has a population of almost 98% Muslims. But they were ruled by a Christian for 18 years. And those were the success and the progressive movement of, of either economy or social issues, you know, where social equity was established, where Senegalese can knock their chest and say that, yes, we have a leader. Almost 98% Muslims at the time. And they are the Christian who ruled them for 18 years. So this idea of the fact that because Dr. Baumia is a Muslim, and therefore they expect us to vote, and they say some of these things, but, Everybody but, but what, choice, what choice do you leave the MPP? No, but Evan, I'm Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Moro. I'm just saying that there's no smoke without fire. What yeah. choice do you leave the MPP? When they, would, when they tell you that elements within the NDC keep accusing them of, of not liking Muslims and liking Nordness, no, which they want to prove to the NDC no, no, the, the element, that they like Muslims, no, they like Nordness, no, and, element, and, and the the NDC, about their The NDC has <laughs> never said anywhere yes. that the MPP doesn't like Muslims. What we have said... But that's what the no, comes no, to say. No, what we have said repeatedly... So it no, what we have times. said repeatedly yeah. has to do with the way they treat Nordness. Let's get a sharp difference. There's a sharp difference between uh, and Muslims. Muslims. And we say so based on evidence. We make ref yes, we make yeah. references to the aliens compliance order. Some of them are now living in homes that were built by the so-called foreigners, and they tell us that they live in Nima. Let's find out who built those those facilities. We have always talked about that. They want to fix and that apart, history. No, they want no, to fix their, that history. Their actions are not demonstrating mm -hmm. they are willing to do so. If their actions were demonstrating that they are willing to do so, Thomas Brony was a deputy minister for interior who was contesting elections with Honorable Collins Dowda. Mind you, Collins Dowda had been a member of parliament before. Thomas Brony took Collins Dowda to court that he was not a Ghanaian. Yeah. That was 2004. Okay. So I'm saying that the actions and inactions do not demonstrate and point to the fact that they have indeed, you know, insulated some of these thinkings. The point I'm simply making, the idea of trying to weaponize religion, ethnicity on the basis of elections you know, they do not agar well for the safety and cohesion of this country. Okay. And this thing has been done much by mm -hmm. the Dr. Bomia, you know, you know, group. Okay. But let me also make this point. Yeah. Everybody knows. Sometimes they fake nature. Dr. Bomia, who and his team, who are always telling us that vote him using this religion. He attends churches more than even Christians. What's wrong with that? Ah. If you tell he, me he doesn't, you, he doesn't go to worship. You remember when oh, he, he goes does. to fraternize. You remember when President Mahama, in the presence of the chief imam, yes. made references to a authentic hadith. Mm -hmm. And in Islam, we say, Sahih, hadith right. that is so authentic. Right. When Dr. Baumia got the opportunity, he tried to ridicule President Mahama and said that, oh, then you must as well convert to, to, to Islam. Right. You remember he said that in the presence of the right. chief imam. Right. Now, wouldn't you even be but happy as a Muslim? Oh, hold on. Wouldn't you be yes. happy as a Muslim mm. if you have a Christian who make references to Bible quotations? It tells you how broad-minded President Muhammad is. 
and you could not even quote a single hadith. President Mahama, who is a Christian, quoted an authentic hadith, hadith with the Sahih, in the presence of the chief imam. You, 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 you attempt to, he attempted to ridicule him and said that you must as well convert to, to, to Islam. I mean, so if other Christians uh, or President Mama were to tell you that you attend church services than even pastors in this country, why not convert to Christianity? It tells you the desperation of this man. So I just want to urge them. They should distance themselves from this religion and ethnicity. Look, we are ethnic beings by nature. We are religious, whether you, you are practicing or not. But the point is that this country, we have chosen to be secular. It doesn't matter your religion. What matters is that every Ghanaian is treated equally. Every Ghanaian is respected. The national cake, everybody gets his, his or her portion based on the effort you put in legally to be able to access that. But the idea of trying to use that for me doesn't agar, agar well for the peace and stability of this country. Another very important point that I want to emphasize. I mean, when the president said that he doesn't have any candidate, you listen to spokespersons of the other candidate. He says, look, we don't, we don't trust him. We don't. Because they know that his candidate is Dr. Baumia. Now, if you want to stretch that, why didn't they support His Excellency Alaj Ali Umama, who was a true and true MPP? Why didn't he? I also disagree with people who are now saying that Dr. Baumia never belongs to the MPP. You listen to that. I think yesterday or the day before, right. they interviewed someone. He said that he's an alien, he's a new person to the party. Mm -hmm. We know that the, minister for, the former minister for Agri doesn't like Dr. Baumia because he accuses his father of the way he treated his father and for which reason he doesn't like Dr. Baumia. It doesn't matter whether he's a new person to the MPP or not. Okay. He's an MPP person. Right. He has been a member of parliament. He has been a vice president, a, 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 a running mate to your presidential candidate, I think, for two terms. He has become a vice president for eight years. So that idea of he is not one of us, for me, they should shelve it somewhere. The father was a UP man. Right. My grandfather was also one of the founding fathers of the Buzza Dankwa tradition. Yeah. He wasn't... No, I thought he cross carpeted no, 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 too. He never yeah. cross carpeted. He has always been a CPP man. Good. But then he cross carpeted to PND. To, to PND to go. Exactly. Yes. So if, right. if, if Dr. Baumia had never been an MPP person and then he decided to join MPP, because political parties, you don't need to swear an oath before you join. You choose which political party you associate yourself with. And he does so. What is wrong with that? We have people who belong to the UP tradition and the CPP who are now in NDC. The NDC is the conglomeration of people who believe in the center left and Wouldn't center right. Would it have a problem if he said he's a newcomer? No, but he can no longer be a, a newcomer, newcomer in their party because... Compared to... No, he can no longer be a newcomer. Ah, Francis Essiam. Is it? NDC. Exactly. Yeah. A woman organizer of the party. Mm -hmm. But she's now an, an, an MPP yeah. person. Why is it that they are not talking about that? And the thing didn't start today. You remember, I think Gloria Kufu. Mm -hmm. Was that an interview or she wrote a piece? Yeah. Questioning Dr. Baumia. In fact, she was, she was quoted by chasing the, the elephant to the bush. The, to the, bush yeah. the book which was written by the former yeah, Dr. Atta Dr. Atta Kennedy. Yeah. And, and very strong words against Dr. Baumia and the way the father treated them and a whole lot of. Okay. I really don't think, think that those arguments are well for this country. And that's okay. why I, I can tell you, it is very clear All right. that the best candidate to elect mm. In the 2024 elections, in no doubt, is President Mahama. But okay. last one, Muru. Mm. If you observe all the people interviewed right. and observed all the candidates, they are not talking about how they break this economy. They are so conditioned about breaking the eight. One day themselves have admitted that we are in a mess. Look, debt to GDP is terrible under President Mahama. A little over 60, they took it to over 100%. CD to dollar. 3.7, and Canada, Japan himself exposed them. Today, it's almost 12 cities. But unemployment, you, but, let me finish. Unemployment but, rate was 6.8%. But, but they've also said, they said, a worse NDP government is still better than the NDC. They've said it time Moro, and again. Moro, I'm just telling you, it's not about no, what... No, I get it, Moro. I get, no, I get that Moro, it's I not get about what, what it's, No, it's not about what they say. Yes. Or what we say. No, the reason they say they'll break the eight, that's what Moro, I'm saying. I'm saying you. that it is not about what they say yeah. and what we say. Mm. That is why, if you give me a minute, I'm stating the facts. So that the P, your viewing public will come, come to their own conclusion. President Mahama, debt to GDP was a little over 60 percent. They said he was incompetent. Mm. They took it to over 100 percent. Dollar to city was around 3.7 percent. 
Now it is almost 12 cities. We were spending about $500 million in the importation of rice and poultry products into this country. We are now spending over $2 billion. Unemployment, and that should be the major concern of any government, particularly in a developing country, expand the economy, create the needed jobs, so that you reduce unemployment. 6.8 under President Mahama. The last census is 17.4 unemployment. Look, corruption. This country, it is more corrupt than even the word corruption. Go and read the, 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 the Afrobarometer done by the CDD. Yeah. And also look at the, the corruption perception it index. Is. The highest we ever chopped in this country happened under President Mahama, where we when we had 48%. The lowest of President Mahama is what they are celebrating. In fact, the lowest we have had, I think, under the Fourth Republic, happened under this government in 2017 when they got 41% of it. Nothing is working in this country. Nothing is working. So if you tell me that it doesn't matter who you elect, that person can match President Mahama. And I present to you the facts. The 2024 elections are going to be conducted on the same mantra, on the same mantra which the 2000 elections were conducted, where President Kufo said, if you're sitting them, my tree is not that good. If you're sitting them, not too about pack. You look at your own conditions. Exactly. And, and, and decide who you should vote. Right. It is very clear that this country is in a mess. It is very clear that all the candidates, except few, and if I can make reference to what Honorable Kennedy of Japan said, he said that, look, all those who contributed in creating this mess should not be elected. He's come out of, he has come out of the No, but he said that. He said he's, he's dating look, his own party. Look, you see, the, the front-run candidates, yeah. both Dr. Baumia and <laughs> Honorable Alan Chirmantin, Alan Chirmantin. Mm. no amount of perfume in Arabia, in fact, let me say qualified, oud perfume, that's where you get the best oud perfume, no amount of oud perfume in Arabia can be used to wash them so that they can be insulated from the economic mess created. They wouldn't. Right. When we were told in this country, you remember that infamous you know, media engagement where Dr. Baumier said that the economic team, the economic team, the Professor Jambafo, the Alan Chirman team, he mentioned those names. Mm. They cannot be starting to run away from the mess in okay. this country. Okay. University, Central University made their auditorium available for Dr. Baumier to be engaged in the voodoo economics almost every month. Every single thing he criticized President Mama on has come to not bite him, to devour him. President Mama stands tall. The elections we are going into in 2024 are going to be conducted on the basis of the living conditions of the people of this country, on the basis of the economy, and decency in governance, where you have over 54 family members serving directly in the government. When President Nanado, in February 2016, said in Kumasi that he was not going to run family and friends government. And you know why? It was only Joyce Bauer. Honorable Joyce Bauer, prior to her appointment, had been a practicing lawyer for 18 years. Maritime. She was made a deputy minister. Yeah. You are even the first lady today who also said they were not going to run family and friends government. Today, we are not only running family and friends government, we are running family and friends government, cousins government, nephews government, you know, abandoned friends and forgotten friends government. Everybody is participating in this country. So if the people of this country are fair and looking at the things President Mahama did, they accused President Mahama of corruption without a scintilla of evidence to the extent that the day President Mahama lost her mother, that was the day my good friend Manasseh published those falsehoods against President Mahama on the fourth issue. The day, and Ghanaians, nobody questioned the ethics of what he did. Right. They celebrated it. Mm. Today, they are so rich in this country that you have a minister, one minister, keeping millions of dollars in her home. When we were told just some few months ago that the reason why the dollar is flying like you say, boat and my two year old daughter running is because some unpatriotic Ghanaians were hoarding the dollars in their home. Little did we know that those dollars were being kept in their homes by the minister. And I'll conclude on this you have a governor of Bank of Ghana. 
Oh, come there. No, okay, I'm, I'm just concluding on this. No, no, I'm, I'm concluding on this because you are a journalist. Yes, I know. Or practicing I know. for several no, no, years. I guess. I, 32 I, 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 million Ghana cities spent on yeah, communication. The reason why I'm saying you should hold on with this yes. is because we're going to look, at some point in the program, we're going to look at, does it matter who the MPP elects? And then you can, you can come in with all those issues, you know. So, but we're not there yet. For now, we're looking at the candidates and what they present and so on and so forth. Now, I want to ask you some of the question. You know, a lot of the people who are following Dr. Mahmoud, but first, first, first I'll take your general comments. Mm -hmm. But what do you make of this talk about the fact that the MPP has the finest opportunity to, to kill this perception that the MPP is an Akan party? The MPP has been Akanized, if there's, a, if there's any such word. And they say the opposition has been very critical of them, that the MPP is an Akan party. The MPP has to look, or wants to look, or has to look like a national party. And so this, if they have any opportunity at all, this is the best time for us, for them, to present a non-Akan here, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, who is a northerner, for two reasons. One, to kill the Akan tag, and two, to slug it out with the NDC in the northern region, where the NDC appears to be still relatively stronger. And that once they are able to slug it with the NDC in the northern region, the NDC is it's, 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 it's finished because the vote in Ashanti region, it's guaranteed. Do you understand what I'm saying? The vote in Akan areas, including the Ashanti region, is guaranteed. They don't have a problem with that. The challenge they have is the northern region. They have to go to the northern region and slug it out with John Mahama. Once they get the votes there, that's it. It's a done deal. Game over. So two questions. Your general thoughts, and then you can come to this thing well, about the MPP has a final, final, final opportunity to, well, let me say to dismiss this Akan tag. Good morning to your viewers. <coughs> Good morning to all Ghanaians and good morning to my CPP comrades yeah. and good morning to my brothers. Um, I, your general I, thoughts first. I am a bit confused about your question <laughs> because the point is that you said northern region. Yes. Northern region is Tamale. Yes. Well, the northern that, part of Ghana. Good. Listen, the northern part of Ghana. I want to tell you, people don't know the dynamics of the northern part of Ghana. Okay. The people in the northern part of Ghana, if they, they believe in they will not vote Baumia because he's a northerner or he comes from Malawale. You don't believe in ethnic connection? No, they don't. Because if you know them, the group of people are very principled and straightforward are from that side of Ghana. Okay. If this is, they, what they believe in is what they believe in. If you want to find very truthful people, I'm not saying nobody should get me wrong, yeah. but they are very principled and they are very true to their word generally generally okay so the fact that you pick baumia doesn't mean that those who want cpp those who want ndc those who want mpp will change what they believe behind it. no it does not go like that hmm. besides if you are putting all the constituencies there <coughs> you put them together there are about 57 constituencies true. ashanti is 47 so what are they talking about? And should it be Baumia? Yeah, okay. Ashanti is guaranteed. There's, 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 there's no problem. No, there. please, so wait, no, wait. Yeah. Why should it be Baumia if you are looking for a northern person? Okay. He's the vice president. There's Ambrose Derry. No, but he's the vice president. But Ambrose Derry, if you talk about their, their uh, Buzia, Dumbo, um, um, whatever they tried. Uh, the, Dampa Dampa Dampa, yes. Ambrose Derry is that line. So she, is it because, no, no, because he's the vice president does not mean that he's the, better than Ambrose Yes, Derry. or he's better than any other. If they are making the argument okay. that they want a northerner or somebody from the, the northern city, part of Yes, Canada. then there are people in there who are from the north. It shouldn't, shouldn't, it shouldn't be necessarily Dr. Dr. Baumia. Because you see, Dr. Baumia should be serious and concentrate on making sure that this economy works to redeem his own image and his integrity. But well, what makes you think he's not doing that? Ah. The fact that he's contesting means he's abandoned. But what, his work what about the economy. do you know the kind of work that goes in for you to contest for a race? Now the work is going to start. Right. He has to visit all the constituencies, talk to all the delegates. Very and that, yes, and this is a very big electoral college, almost 300,000. Yes, about 250,000 thereabouts. Good. So the point is that 
he's going to abandon his position as in this critical moment he has abandoned Ghanaians to pursue a personal agenda a personal agenda of becoming a president let's look at it he has abandoned us but as the, but as the, but as the, but as the, but as the how do you put it? That, does the governance system runs a ground? I mean, does it does it ground to a halt? Just it is not the, the governance. Vice president, the president. We the are business talk, of give government still continues. Please, with govern, the, the, the when you look president. at the governance system, there are different structures right. within the governance system. Okay. We have the economy, we have the social, we have the political, legal. We have the legal. We have all of it. He okay. is directly in charge of the economy. Right. And that is what runs this country. And that is what dictates what we do, our wherewithal, how we exist, our shelter, our food, our health and everything. Please go to the health system today. Right. If you don't have money and you are sick, you will die. Mm. Even when you have money, the expertise, they are doing well. But the, the, the equipment that they have to use is um, not available. Okay. Are you getting me? Yes. Sorry, I, 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 I'll just interrupt you briefly. I, I beg you. I beg you. Yawabia Samoa is the spokesperson for the Alan Camp. Let's listen to him briefly. We'll come back. Right after this, we'll come back to you. The rules are solid. But as we speak, as we speak, incidents in the Northeast region have made us very, 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 very disturbed. Our agent in the Northeast has been beaten. Why? He's in the hospital now. Why? Because he protested the showing of ballots, which is completely illegal according to the rules. Nobody is supposed to vote and show the ballots. They are voting and showing the ballots in the Northeast. When our agent protested, he was beaten up. He's in the hospital now. We, the Alan Shemati campaign, is rejecting the entire result from the Northeast. We are telling the party headquarters. We are telling the elections committee, we are telling the vice president's team, we are telling His Excellency the President to put his foot down. Anything to do with adding and including the Northeast results in this election will mean that the results are a sham. And it will go on in other places from what we are hearing. In Kumasi, fortunately, when the youth organizer did that, the vote was invalidated. The youth organizer voted and showed it. For whose benefit are they showing it? They are showing it for the benefit of the vice president. It is the vice president who wrote the according to the world. It was invalidated. It almost resulted in a translation. It was but it almost degenerated into a choir. In the North East, they have beaten our agent. Our agent is in the hospital. And they were showing the vote because they were voting for the vice president. So they they'd be asked to show the vote. If they, add the result, what would you do? if they add the result, it's obviously a public sham. Entire his excellency the president to put his foot down. Because if we all make rules and we decide that the rules will not be enforced, the rules are for the benefit of the public and the candidates, and yet on the ground they will not be enforced force is applied, impunity is applied, and nobody is able to do anything about it, then the result is a sharp. Well, well, some can say that, I mean, your request is a bit far-fetched. The matter could be easily resolved. Why? In what way will the matter be resolved? If, if the ballots that were showed have gone into the box, how will the matter be resolved? The ballots that are being showed have been put in the box. How will the matter be resolved? The rules say that any ballot that is showed is invalid. That is what the rules say. Any ballot that is showed is invalid. So if you are voting systematically and showing it systematically, and the looking on, and an agent is assaulted for protesting, then it's grounds enough to reject the entire result. Is it when are you foreseeing that defeat? That is why I have to talk about it. There is nothing like defeat in this. It is a selection. It's a mere selection. Talking about we are enforcing the rules. Margin of what victory? victory for the vice. There is no victory when you select five people. Where is the victory? You are selecting five people. We are talking victory. Those who need it to demonstrate their emptiness are the ones who are pursuing it. Those who need it to demonstrate emptiness are the ones who are pursuing it. There is nothing about victory in this. What it is is that. The party, the true election, there's only one true election, November 4th. But to begin to assault agents at this time and to begin to flout the rules of unity means that the president, His Excellency, the party leadership, what they are 
are behaving like a faction. So ought to be where? The, the agent is in hospital. Who is assaulting? He's be, he's reporting the police. Who and is he, assaulting your agent? The, the, he's been assaulted. He's in the hospital. So in the northeast. If their reports will come out, that he's gone to the police, the police have given the hospital form and the statement to the police will be made public in due time. So we have has reported, case, we have reported. If there's a case, why are you picked to call on the vice president to put it to his feet? Yes, because, because it, they are doing it on his behalf. It is his vote that they are showing. They are not showing Alain Sematin's vote. It is the vice president's vote they are showing to confirm that they voted for him. Are you saying the party has structured. Are you cited for security in the I am saying that the rules are being infringed with impunity. And when our agent, who is supposed to protect our interests, protested, he was assaulted. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that that means that the vote in the Northeast has been contaminated. One of the and that practice. vote that has been have contaminated. Have petition? Yes, we are filing everything. We are doing everything. We are bringing it to your public notice that the Chiremati team will move for invalidation of the entire Northeast regional results. Thank you very much. That's the well, interesting developments um, here. The, you just heard the spokesperson for the Alan campaign, and as Yabo Abiyasama was complaining about some development in the Northeast where uh, we're told that uh, the delegates there vote and then they show who they voted for, which is against the rules of the game. And so they're asking the, uh, electoral, the special uh, uh, presidential election committee to, to actually delete or to cancel all of that because those votes are contaminated. Indeed, he claims that when they are when their agents protested, they were beaten to pulp. That's what Yabo Abiyah Samoa uh, has been telling the press. We are also told that Honorable Kennedy Japon has actually placed a personal phone call to the Vice President, and he's told him some really harsh words. Let's listen to what the Kennedy Japon has been telling the Vice President. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, don't go for position. I'm going um, yeah, I'm telling you, don't go for a position. I'm going to go for a position. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, don't go for a position. I'm going to go for a position. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, don't go for a position. I'm going to go for a position. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, don't go for a position. I'm going to go for a position. Whoa, 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 whoa. But this looks like a movie, doesn't it? Ken a Japan. We don't know why he is we don't know why he's mentioning the vice president's name. And and yes, we'll get our reporter to tell us exactly what happened. But just heard it. He says Bamia should talk to his boys. I don't know what he means by that. And that well, he, said no, he said if if he wants to the party position. to go to position, he should let him know or something. I don't know. But see the party will go to position, position. if he wants the okay, party. But what do you make of this scene? I'm sorry yeah. for distracting, but briefly, what do you make of this scene before you go? I think you or, to make a or is the Chris, Chris Tendugan, you want a to comment, comment on this? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, or yeah, like come to, yes. yes. I'm what very sad. No, I'm very sad because okay. there's a tendency coming in the MPP okay. when we go for our internal elections. Right. And the same things that we complained mm -hmm. against in general elections. Okay. Writing of the stolen verdict. Right. And uh, other harassment at polling stations. I remember uh, election 2000. Uh, uh, what they call it? Uh, Communal battles. Yeah. Hans was was was, was slashed right. with, with 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 a knife, mm. and all these things. Mm -hmm. Once you identify yourself even as an MPP in certain uh, what they call communities right. in your constituency, you could be lynched. And what happened in two thousand and twelve? So, can I finish? <laughs> and so you see, we are having a situation where people are violating the protocol, okay. election protocol. You know what? Uh, we, we first saw Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. Now, there was no violence mm -hmm. because probably the pro alan group is very strong there. Now the Northeast, we hear that an agent 
who has got the right to protest, protested, and he has been beaten. Okay. Beaten up. Mm. You see? So, if, let's say, Ashanti Rejozo decide that anybody they, they perceive to be Balmia, mm -hmm. the one or the person to vote, it will be chaotic. True. You see, I, the, the MPP now, I, I mean, I, excuse me to say, our national executives are not strong enough to put their foot down okay. on some of these things. All right, so let's get an explanation for a reporter so that it would answer the question that Anaya asked earlier about what we have, what we have uh, uh, caused uh, Kennedy upon to react the way he did. As Chrissy, we saw Ken obviously very furious, very angry and upset about something. What's happening? Yes, um, Moro. So what uh, actually happened here was that um, we just saw the Honorable Kennedy was near Japan, um, coming from the direction of the actual voting center uh, to where his vehicle was being parked. And then uh, we heard him speaking to someone I cannot, uh, I do not know, uh, on phone. Uh, but what I gathered is that um, he was picking signals uh, that his agents at some places uh, were being intimidated. And so he was uh, sending cautions uh, to the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and then the entire DP uh, to be very careful with that um, turn of events at some of the voting centers. But how do you know, I don't know that you're the right person I should be asking, how does he know if those agents are Balmier's agents? Well, I don't know, because these agents, I don't know whether they wear, oh, they, they identify themselves. Okay, okay, so then that's a moot question then. So that's why he reacted the way he did. Yeah, that's, that, that's the reason why he reacted the way he did. Okay. And uh, when you listen to the, to, to, to the, to the audio, uh, he mentioned uh, Dr. Mahmoud Balmier and then uh, the president's name because he thinks that um, they may be behind um, that sort of activities. I see. But we just heard him say, I mean, he spoke for just five seconds. Were there other things he said that we didn't, uh, wasn't yes. captured on that video that you can share with us? Okay, so uh, let, me, let me try to do um, some sort of uh, uh, transcription of what he did because, you know, uh, midpoint, uh, his handless signal as uh, to uh, stop filming the event. So, coming from the actual voting center, what the Honorable Kennedy Japan was saying was that, why are they sucking my agents from the various venues? And then he mentioned, Dr. Mahmoud, I will near you, I will make you lose. And then he said, this is MPP, and nobody can intimidate my agents. He was mentioning those things in P. So these were the comments that were being made uh, by the um, Honorable Kennedy at home. And even when his handlers uh, asked him to calm down, he was rather asking them whether they are aware of those happenings or not. And so clearly, um, the man is not happy uh, with the way things uh, maybe uh, things are being handled uh, elsewhere uh, in the country so far as this voting exercise is concerned. Oh, Akwesi, thank you very much for this report. Um, interesting turn of events. Uh, Akwesi Ado is our Central Regional Correspondent, was telling us about some very, very unfortunate um, uh, developments in the Central Region where the, uh, an aspirant, one of the leading contenders, uh, the Honorable Kennedy Japan, is seen upset about something. He was, on, he was seen to, to be on the phone. Whether he was talking to the Vice President or not, we can't tell, but he mentioned the Vice President and said, and started warning the Vice President, let's watch that video again and it will come back in the house. I'm telling you, don't go position. I'm a position. I'm a good position. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm that he actually mentions the president's name as himself. He said, what I'll do to Kufado and Bamiya. Hmm, that's quite interesting. Anyway, so let me come back uh, in-house. Nanea, what would you make of this?
But the point is the MPP is going yeah. to opposition, so me, I don't understand what you say. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, no, but, no, seriously, I don't see why, because they, they are going to opposition. Yeah. For, uh, so I don't understand it. So uh, are they saying that they are coming to power? Uh, no, they are going to opposition, so he's just affirming what is going to happen. So why is it a story? I see, but... but, but no, 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 seriously, let me be, be serious. I am was saying that... you anticipated was going to happen? I didn't anticipate, but I'm saying that he's just affirming what is true. So whatever it is, MPP is going to opposition. Right, so that's interesting. Anyway. Because with the kind of economy that we have, all the issues that are there, mm. I, I, I don't think that they, they are going through a, a democratic exercise, okay. which has to be fulfilled. Mm. So it is not... But you have an aspirant threatening. It doesn't really matter. Because me, serious, me, my, my problem is that... He's a leading contender. Please, wait, wait. Let's be very objective here. My problem is that the agents who have been put... Why are they being intimidated? Because in my party, if a, a candidate has an agent, they don't go in one. We have maybe two, three people giving backup. Right. So why should an uh, agent should be intimidated? Why should I allow another candidate's agent to intimidate me? It is no story. I should stand strong for my candidate because my candidate cannot be everywhere. When the CPP is having an election, the agents are there. I mean, we don't go as one person or two. We go in groups. So at the end of the day, you can't just come and intimidate anybody's agent. So why are the agents being intimidated? Intimidate themselves, they are coming from a position of, uh, uh, um, the word is not even coming. They are coming from a position of like, they are at the back and uh, Baumia is in front. Why should the agents complain that they are being intimidated? Because you fight for your candidates at the ground. I see. You don't even bring but, your candidates into the matter because your yeah. candidate has a lot of things on their mind at that moment. Okay. Do you get me? So, you, you, so yeah. I was somewhere when you cut Yeah, me. so you're talking about, I was saying that the NPP, the pro um the pro Barmia people are saying that the NPP has a fine opportunity to change the narrative. That is but I am party. saying that if it is the northerner they want, yes. why should it be by force Baumia? Okay. Baumia has something mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. He has, a, has work. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of uh, programs during the time that they were um, vying to be... Uh, um, coming to, uh, to government. To, to government, right. A, a lot of uh, uh, programs that he did, a lot of economic um, summits, a lot of economic they conferences. They're all propaganda. The lies he yes. told Ghanaians right. into believing. And he, he kept telling us that they are going to make sure that no taxation, more production, one D, one F. <laughs> they say very beautiful things. So now if things have gone wrong, he's the one who should move from digitalization back to economy. Mm. He told us that he has put a, 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 a handcuff on the hands of the CD, <laughs> and the CD is not going to run. The CD is going to be encumbered. Fact, he said that he, it is locked at the police headquarters. Yes. And the keys handed over to the So me now I believe that the IGP <laughs> was talking about was maybe the Togo IGP, not the Ghana IGP. <laughs> No, no, seriously, because it, maybe it's only Togolese IGP, because if Ghana IGP and the city has been able to break jail like this. It's a fugitive now. Yes. But well, you just heard the delegate who said, why didn't you go to him and get for Which him delegate? The guy who was talking. The he fanatic. wasn't, he's not a delegate. Well, a yes, so a fanatic, fanatic cannot, yeah, yeah. cannot tell fanatic, us yes. that we should go to Baumia. It's not unfair when we take on So we should, like we should take taxi when we can't. This is what happened. Please. When we, they're we, taking the taxes, we, can't, we, we, we can't get money to eat and we should take taxi to Baumia and try, try to <laughs> ask him why the economy is like this. He should rather come to us and tell us how the economy is like this. You see, the point is that there's also... An aspect I want to talk about. Right. Every president, every human being can have a preference. Even when you have kids at home, there's one that you like very much. Do you get me? There's always one that is close to you, always one that you like all of them. Mm. But there's one who, I remember when my father was dying. It's not that he likes me more than anybody else. But I wasn't around, I was in the US. The doctor said that he was going. Everybody thought he didn't go out till the day I came to see him. When I came back, mm. you guess there's some always there's somebody that you are you have this affinity to. Even I don't see why Nanado is running away from the fact that he likes Baumia. It is not evil, it is not wicked that that is his preference because, in the mind, and everybody knows it, that he thought that after 207, Alan shouldn't have competed him anymore. And Alan gave him a run for his money, and he made him waste a lot of money. He thought that Alan should have waited till he has finished, like this time, for him to compete. But Alan competed him, I think, twice. True. 
Do you understand? Yeah. So we don't know what it is. So if he wants Baumia, it is that I mean I don't think any he should make excuses for himself that he wants somebody. Obama wanted Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Clinton wanted Al Gore. True. Clinton, Clinton gave Obama the opportunity. Do you get me? At the Democratic Congress, for yeah. him to come and speak, they had in their mind that going into the future, who can lead? Rollins had a preference in Atta Mills against his own wife. Today, Obama says openly that he likes Biden. But that does not mean that the system should be manipulated for the person. If ever J. Kufour said that he, he or people said that J. Kufour wanted Alan, it is not a crime. Nobody should make excuses for him. He worked with all of them and he knew who he thinks could do it better in his mind. So if he wanted Alan, fine. But the system wasn't manipulated for anybody. Because that is why during the Congress, at the first round, Nanado won, even though he did not get the requisite 50% or more of the valid vote cast. He got a simple majority. And Alan gave in to him. That go, because we don't have to go through a, a rerun and all that. So, if anybody has a preference, but do not manipulate the system for your preference. Okay. Do you get me? Mm. Do not manipulate the system for your preference. There is nothing. So I don't think that if I have a person, even if you have friends, there is one that you like more than the others. But it does not mean that you should not have the same opportunities for everybody. That's fine. But they're also on their, um, these super delegates. Yes. We need to, also, before we start condemning, is it constitutional? Mm. In a political party, the first thing you look at is what I am doing, is it in my constitution? Does the Constitution give provision for this? If the Constitution gives provision for it, then we also come to see how relevant and useful is this. Mm -hmm. Because when I did the calculation using even 200,000 voters, I got 0.48% of the whole population of delegates voting in this Super Delegates Congress. So how can 0.48% choose five people for the whole Electoral College. The issue of Ashanti. Yeah, yeah. You see, when, when MPP treats Ashantis like Jiglos, it is annoying. The Ashantis like, I'm too, well, too sorry, for, so before you come in, my understanding is that Ashanti is worship three things, and I use worship It here, is not true. I use worship here advisedly. They like the Asante Kotoko, they like the Asante Hene, and they like the MPP. It doesn't matter. It doesn't you, mean that doesn't I am, I am an Ashanti. Why am I not in MPP? I am a true, true blood, blue blood Ashanti. I am not even like a common. I'm a royal. So majority, maybe. I'm saying, why you am I not MP? You see, you belong the, to the minority. The, the MP. Five. So it doesn't mean that everybody. All Ashanti, yes, so there are Ashantis who are in NDC. Well, yes. my, my grandfather was one of the founding fathers of the UP tradition, okay. Nayako, mm. but I have never liked MPP. Okay. Because we're talking about the region. Because I because no, because no, because they, no, the, the region is also made of other. This yes, Ashanti is, is is the yeah, region that has stronger, yes. Ashanti. In Ashanti, the, the 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 struggle for independence, the head of yeah. it was in Ashanti region. My father, Bediaku Poku, Krobodu say, all those, they, they are from Ashanti. So it is very unfortunate if MPP makes a comment that, oh, half Ashantis, no matter what it is, they will vote. It the PV of Baines and Co., the PNDC, yeah, the NDC. Yes. The yes. The NDC. Yes. yes. So what, what are they telling us that we don't think? That we don't buy from the market. They've been taking you people for oh. that, that we don't we don't know what is right so and wrong. No sense of I, this analysis that our vote in Ashanti is secured. We only need to go and fight. I am us. telling you that Ashanti is made up of different. When you Ethnic come, groups. we have Zabun Zongo, mm -hmm. we have Abu Abu, yeah, we have Angonga mm -hmm. in Ashanti. We have the Ga community. All of them they have they achieved this. We are allegiance to the Ashanti Ashanti mm. Kingdom. Me when I was a little girl, as you see me, all my friends are from the north. I used to play in Abuabo and all those places. I used to speak Hausa very well to a point that I was speaking more Hausa than Chi, and my father stopped me. Where's the Hausa? Is he gone? It's gone. Crap. He made sure that <laughs> I. Yeah, yeah, he made sure. I was too bad. He made sure that my father made sure that the thing is gone. <laughs> you get me. So the point is that nobody should get up 
and say that because we are Ashantis and because it is MP. But after all, even if it is an Ashanti candidate yes. and so what? Okay. Do an analysis of the votes of MPP. Whenever you take out the numbers of Ashanti region, they are losing. They are going to opposition. Yes, 2020. NDC won nine regions. MPP won seven. Take out the votes of Ashanti region. They would have lost. Right. Because it's a, a game of numbers. So if you have an Ashanti candidate or you are touted as an Akan uh, party, and so, so what? what? Really? Ah, because that is where you get your votes. But if you think that you want to diversify, if you think you want to diversify, what, what people like Odoi Sykes, Darucha, yeah. these are people who help the party. Mm. So why don't you go for the other people? Should it be by force um, and, and not that? Okay. Dankwa, Dombo, Buzia. Hmm? There is no Kofo. Who is Ashanti? I've heard some Nimbe. people say they should stop that. It's UP. There's nothing like that. That is what I'm done called Dombo Booz there. Yeah. Dankwa is Ashanti. But Dombo's name was added only in 2004 and four. by Dombo. the then National Secretary. They, it used to be Dankwa Booz there. They were not even mentioned. So Dombo is Upper East, isn't upper it? Upper West. Upper West. Upper West, yeah. Then. He's a Dagati. As a matter of fact, Dombo was the leader of the Northern People's Party with about 16 seats. Yes. Yeah. People didn't understand why Booz As a matter of fact, Booz even lost his, ele his elections. Yeah. And the chiefs wanted him. Right. When there was this decree to not have political parties on the line of ethnicity and religion, remember right. there was a Muslim party. Yeah. They formed the UP. Yeah. Then Buzia came with only his seat. They seized, he contested, and even lost. So people still find it extremely difficult to comprehend why. Dumbo didn't be, become the leader because he was the leader of our 15 or 16 seats. Right. So that's what, they, yes. that's what they want to fix now. Yes. So, the, fix so that Dumbo, oh. but, but, does he come from our powers? Yeah. No. So, please go ahead. so, so the yeah. point yeah. is Lebanon, that Lebanon. now you have um, um, Buzia, mm. that is a Bono, a Bono Afo. Bono Afo, yeah. Then you have uh, Dumbo, that is a power. Then we have Dankwa, that is um, Achim. Achim. Where is Ashanti one? No, um, please. At that time, uh, what they call it, Busia was from Ashanti region. Yeah. It's not to say that he's, he was an Ashanti. Ashanti. Mm -hmm. What I am saying, no, Mr. Dunga, please, you, not... ha you have these three things that you talk about. That is your representation. We but call no, ourselves they, they, in Chroma, they, they then Chroma. Condemned by, you know, please, even, even, even the former please, president, I am not it talk, doesn't exist. I'm not talking well, about, exist. they still say. Okay, that's so right. I'm saying that yeah. even if, okay, let's take Dombo out. If we say Dankwa Buzia, where is Ashanti? No, they say there's nothing like Dankwa Blah Blah. It's UP. No, but I'm, say, UP I'm saying that where is the Ashanti factor? Why, do, why, no, don't, UP why don't they talk about Dankwa Buzia, Dombo, Akoto? And America say to avoid this problem, they say they are UP. Who said they are? Which means Are you not here today, that president? And Nanado said we should name the University of Ghana after a Dankwa. Who was even Dankwa was a ah, criminal? Please. You see the point you know, is Dankwa, that Dankwa, yeah. Dankwa, If you read the Meredith, hmm. you know the the uh, the. Well, was well, I wanted to learn so that no. You if you read that, that, if you read that book, I have about two of it. Yeah. JB Dankwa was actually a CIA agent, and he was well, on the CIA well, payroll. Yes. And you want us to name a university after such? No, no, no. Let's not be sidetracked. I beg you. Well, please learn. Otherwise, you should lose a trend of thought. Yes. Please go ahead. I'm just <laughs> so, so, I, you know, so I am saying mm. that I am saying that. So this whole thing this about is your, move, let's move yeah, on to uh, that, You see, if you want to diversify, mm. there's nothing wrong. Okay. But if there is a candidate who has been there and your tradition is like we always go according to seniority or who has who is in the next need. Okay. Adu Boahe, um, was there? Nanado contested Kufo Kufo. One, they made Nanado hold on, then Kufo came. When Alan contested uh, Nanado and it, they didn't get what they had to put, and like they had to go for a, a rerun, Alan gave in. Mm. So, if it is now the time for Alan, why do you bring somebody? Right. We are not saying nobody should compete him on. Okay. But the point is that if it is the Ashanti thing, you want the Ashanti vote. When it comes to, so right now they want Ashanti region to vote for Baumia. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. But if it's truly the Nordna you are looking for, must it be Dr. Baumia? Right. Can't it be any other Nordna mm. who has been in the party? Dr. Baumia has work to do. Right. He has to make sure that this economy stands. Okay. And you see, the point is that they all talk about breaking the age. It's as if it is personal. As if we Ghanaians, they don't care about us. Right. 
Because you see, we gave them the power. Mm -hmm. The power, the sovereignty lies into the hands of the people. Right. And that is all they are talking about. We want to break the... It. Even Dr. Baumier's slogan, he says it is possible. Yeah. So I said this is a slogan standing on its own in a very vacuumous space. Right. So what does it mean? Mm. They said it is possible to break the eight. Yeah. So does it mean that everything is about breaking the eight? Yes. What is so fixated on breaking the eight? What is there that they want to do? We've given you what? How many years? Eight years. Now we have about 400 and something days left. What can you do within this short? Just redeem yourself within this 400 and maybe 38 days left for you to go. Okay. You have to redeem yourself. Michael has been sitting there for a while now. He's not had his bike now. But before Michael, you come in, I'm told that the, um, the that should the majority chief for isn't it? Anod Dompre has been reacting to the Kennedy Japan video. But before we play you the Anod Dompre video, let's watch Kennedy Japan's video. I mean, we have the full video now. So let's watch the entire video. I'm not done pray react. We'll come back in the house and pick Michael's thoughts. Michael, I'll be asking you whether the NDC should be, from what you said, I mean, well, I'll come to Mutala on that, but do you think the NDC should, 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 um, should be interested in who emerges? Because I've heard some, something like, well, some, somebody would be easier to be than somebody. Yeah, there are all these arguments that have been made. So I'll ask Michael his thoughts on that. But let's watch these videos, then I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. No, but I'm saying that yes. the NDC President Akutwa, member of showdown. Vice President, member of showdown. So, Mumma Chase, Mimi agent. I'm going to shut them. Put them best. Put them best in your best. You have. Yes. Mr. Yame, my challenge, President Akutwa, anytime. The security are up to tax right from the entrance. I was searched, I was thoroughly searched, and the scan was used on me. So I think they are doing their, their work as they should. I haven't uh, observed anything untoward yet. Of course, uh, we heard about some uh, misunderstanding between the agent, which has been peacefully resolved. And so, so far, so good. And uh, I move in peacefully and do what I have to do. Okay, so you being the uh, uh, agent for Dr. Baumia, I'm not largely satisfactory. I haven't observed anything until then. Camera, and, and that is, is is good enough. The EC has conducted itself well, and I think the agents are also up to the, the tax. They are all delivering. They are insisting on their rights and insisting on the right thing being there. So far, so good. Thank you. You mark my words. Any we've percentage? Been in, we've been in. I've said that already. I said you won't, you won't go below uh, eighty percent. We want to we want to go beyond that, and that's what we are doing. I can see from my eyes. I've not slept a wink because we 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 have a journey we have to embark upon, and that is to safeguard uh, the image of this party and this tradition. It's so 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 important. It's not just strategic that you should win. It's important that he wins. Uh, also for the 14th of this party and this tradition. It's going to win. Nothing will change. And how are you whipping your... But I won't tell you what my strategies are. What I know is that the ultimate result is what matters. At the end of the day, it's about he winning. After the win, we know he will. But we won a certain percentage. And that is why we are not sleeping. And I, I hope and believe that he will emerge and we will chop that percentage we are looking for. Okay. Oh, so that's the face of the, I want to believe that yeah. Northeastern um, agent, um, is that an Alan agent Alan, yes. or Ken? Okay, so that's Alan, Alan's agent, isn't it? Uh, sir, can you, Mr. Dugan, can you confirm if this is actually an Alan agent? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's with the camp, he's with Alan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's it. You yeah. can confirm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but he's been, he's been brutally beaten, yeah, isn't it? Well, that's serious. I mean, no, no, yeah, I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna show us the picture again. No, I mean, if 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 this is the elite doing this, yeah. the elite, yeah, mm -hmm. doing this, yeah. Oh, well, then uh, they're really the beating the guy. Then oh. uh, I can imagine the yeah, the non-elite, the the NDCs and the CPP. <laughs> <laughs> what they would do to us? So he can anyway, imagine what they would do to us. Yeah, well, you can imagine. You can imagine. You can imagine. You can imagine. You can, wow, but this is serious, eh? Oh, the guy doesn't, I mean, <laughs> he's, he's been totally defaced. You know, that's, that's very serious. Whoever did this, I think the police should arrest the person, uh, the perpetrators and deal with them. This is unacceptable. You can't do this in today's, 
in today's democratic dispensation. I mean, we've gone past that. Whoever did this must be arrested. I, 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 I totally agree. There's this. one thing. When there's intra party, party. conflicts like this, yes. you go to the police and you say, go and resolve it. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't You know, when he was given examples the about must come in. Yes. was being used, I was yes. reminding him mm. of 2012 yes. after the court had ruled. The President Mahama was duly elected as okay. the president of Ghana after the petition. Yeah. Second, including Nanado, when they had their, their, their forum there, people's vehicles were vandalized. Three years after that, a gentleman who had his children, in fact, he picked his children from school, yeah. and he had President Mahama poster on his car. Okay. They vandalized the car. The, the children were traumatized. Okay. And three years after, he said that the children were still traumatized. I mean, clearly, so if they can do this to their fellow NPP person, this is yeah. not just an ordinary NPP. I know that man mm. very well. Mm -hmm. This is a leading member of the party in Northeast. And by wow. the way, that is President, uh, Vice President well, well, Bomier's well, home region. Yeah. Now, if they can do that to their own persons, what can they do to people? We, we witness what happened in the 2020 elections, where men in uniform were used to gun down innocent people whose only crime was that they went to participate in the democratic constitutional you know, responsibility to cast their vote. We saw what happened at Echiman South. We saw what happened at Ablikuma. Yeah. We saw what happened across the country. Mm. Ayo Asu West Wagon, yeah. a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. We saw what happened. Yeah. What happened to those individuals? So if you want to see what the MPP would do, this is just a symptom now, if the elite, by his definition, clearly, if the elite who are participating in this superdelegate can do this to another so-called elite, what then happened in, no, but on the, the point, 4th of the, November? The point is that where, where was the police? What, what, what were they doing when it happened? The and also, what, 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 no, what no, arrangements? If you have few police there. No, what arrangements were put in place by the national security. officers? All right. Security and um, all, all right, that. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me go to Michael now. Michael has, no, has not spoken for almost just, an hour. Briefly. briefly. Okay. All right, please. Go ahead. I think that violence in our elections cannot be hanged on one particular party. Yeah. You saw what happened at Tripoli, mm. where the NDC MP shot at people. Right. How about Etiwa Kura, Etiwa Mu Bibi Kakra? President Nanadu said, Etiwa Mu Bibi Kakra. Etiwa, if you yes. want to know what happened I'm saying that President Nanadu said, Etiwa Mu Bibi Kakra. Because when because these the two people, they will not be let us. They are guilty. Yes, they are guilty. Let's go to Michael, I beg you. A woman organizer. Yeah, no, I understand. I get it. You see, MPP is all, they are always people. That one they did to us. The Minister Minister is talking after him. I'll take Michael's perspectives and then we'll take it from there. Then we'll close. All right, then. So that's Henry Quarter, regional minister, also interacting with the media. So, Michael, what do you, how much interest do you think the NDC should, or the NDC should really care less? I don't know. So far, if you have any preliminary comments to make before you get to that question, I'll be, I don't have a problem at all. Right. For that matter, I mean, for one to suggest that the NDC shouldn't care about what happens to the NPP would mean that uh, perhaps the person may not be a student of politics. Right. Indeed, you have uh, a number of aspirants, though they may be coming from the same government, which we all agree have failed woefully. It is the case that uh, each aspirant and his temperament, uh, emotional intelligence, uh, character, track record. And so depending on who emerges, the NDC, of course, should be particularly interested, interested in that. But of course, like I keep saying, it doesn't take away the fact that, listen, the NPP as a political party and forming government has performed abysmally, and that is going to be the test of the case in 2024 when we move for the elections. Now, a bit on the superdelegate uh, 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 processes. I heard the Minister for Communication, uh, Madame S. Lowe, who say that uh, they have the right to determine how to run their party yes. as a political party. Mm -hmm. But of course, how you determine or how you run your political party is governed by Article 55.5 of Ghana's Constitution. 
Article 55.5 of Ghana's Constitution says that, listen, in the internal organization of any political party, the political party must ensure that to a large extent you conform to democratic principles. True. So every political party in Ghana is injuncted by law right. to conform to democratic principles. Article 55.5. Now, what are democratic principles? Indeed, one cardinal principle of any democratic space or organization is participation. It's participation. So the key question is this. With this procedure, Super Special Delegate Congress, how is that inuring to meaningful participation of the general members of the party or the membership base of the NPP? And when you look at participation today, it is also the case that how you manage your elections, electoral processes can actually be outcome determinative. Mm -hmm. So the processes can determine the outcome of the elections. And it is no wonder this whole process is tensed. Because listen, by virtue of this arrangement alone, when you look at those who are to vote, their proximity to power, to the corridors of power, those who are to cut, the list is there, they are in their constitution, Article 5B or so. Majority of them are close to the corridors of power. And one can conclude or infer mm. that the likelihood that they may be going for the establishment's choice is high. And so this already from onset raises some suspicion. And so various camps who may not be the establishment's preference would always be on the alert. And so all that is happening today is because the process in itself doesn't appear to be fair. Mm. But you see, I keep telling my trainees that anytime you want to know the identity of a political party... Okay, so anytime there, you want to know the identity of a political party, please hold it right there. The Attorney General is talking just for a few minutes. The Attorney General Godfrey Damis is addressing the press. Let's listen to him. You'll come back to identity of a political party. Let's do this quickly. Inside in Article 21 of the Constitution, the person has the right to demonstrate on any issue at all. It has not been that the matter on which the person is demonstrating is correct. It doesn't mean that the perspective of that person is also correct. And I believe that at the end of the day, the whole nation will see the good works that the government has done. And I'm very confident that indeed, in terms of every sphere of the nation's life, economically, politically, even legally, and all, this nation cannot be in a better pair of hands than the, the leader chosen by the MPP. Do you think the concerns by the minority are justified? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not prepared to go into that at all. I'm really concerned about the progress that, or the process that we'll be embarking on today. And I've indicated to you that at the end of today, I'm very sure that we will let a candidate who will effectively lead the MPP to ensure that the effort of people who want to um, effectively ensure restoration so let's go to is currently moving. Right, so that's the Attorney General Godfrey Daming, uh, Daming. He says he's not going to stick his neck and tell her, tell who he supports, who he doesn't. But what for him, he's more interested in. <laughs> the process and how it's panned out so far. Michael, you're talking to me as about if you want to know the identity of a political party, what do you look out for? So there are three basic things you look okay. out for. One, you go to the constitution of the party. Right. Two, what the party says they stand for, who they are. And then three, what the party does in practice. Okay. These three key things. Now, today, the NPP has institutionalized this in their constitution. That, listen... We do not believe in, I mean, this is what is happening. Yeah. So, like he mentioned, the elites are choosing the candidate today. Okay. And then the candidate will, sub, will be subjected to the, is it November 4th? Yes, November 4th. Uh, yes. Which will be opened up for. But the tendency is high that everybody is going to be swayed, be moved by happenings of today, the results of today. And in other words... We want to carry the mind of the elite to the base, for the base to endorse the mind of the elite. Clearly, one would come to the conclusion that mm -hmm. 
Perhaps this may be a party that still is having issues with mass participation. Right. Just as Mr. Dugan, for instance, hinted right from history. And for them to now put it in the Constitution, politics of exclusion, because I've been reflecting on the pros and cons. Indeed, you are rather increasing costs of running this internal election. Okay. Because you have a first leg, you're going to have a second leg. Right. What is really the basis for this arrangement? But democracy if is, not for democracy is the establishment. No, democracy is expensive. If you want it well, it's going to come at a cost. That statement, <laughs> democracy is expensive. That, that statement. There's a difference between wasting resources. But this is the way. I mean, clearly. Okay. And we, we, we try to hide behind such statements. statements Democracy okay. is expensive. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, it doesn't we be, matter. We, should be, we, shouldn't be we have a first leg. We spend huge resources. We go for a second leg. And mind you, all those voting today will be voting the second leg. True. And so the question is what really is the advantage? What, what are we seeking? If not for the establishment to project their candidate, send a cue to the base. So the base know that, listen, this is what the elite are saying. This is what our political party is saying. And we have to follow course. And so the no, likes the of... Delegates, but you see, sorry, Michael, we, we need to sometimes clarify a few things. Oh. This, this structure, as we see it, has existed, if it, it existed even in 2014. So, it, I mean, if you make it seem as if it's been created purposely to, to, to quote and unquote, Give one somebody an advantage over the other. You may not be factually. You may not be factually. Are you saying that since 2014? Yes. Are you saying that? No, no. Are you saying that since 2014, the reasons I'm outlining here may not have been the reasons for creating this system in 2014? Okay. So, so your point is that it cuts across. It exactly. Matter. Okay. I get it. That's it's fine. for the establishment at a given time. Okay. To let to the base know this is our preference. That's fine. We are sending a queue, and for me, when you look at even how the party. Is governing today. And this is where I'm sure uh, 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 John Twist's case also comes in here. Mm. Look at, for instance, the Electoral Commission today and this whole thing about uh, voter registration and how clearly there are acts of exclusion. Right. And you see NPP MPs in Parliament basically supporting this. It started with Ghana card only. Mm -hmm. The NPP MPs who belong to this government saw nothing wrong with that arrangement. Even what is at stake now, which is registration at the district offices, it still, in a way, would disenfranchise a lot of people. From Bole to Bamboy, I'm told, that 114 yeah, kilometers distance. The one you heard in this conference about, yeah. Indeed, in their recent uh, National uh, Congress that elected Sami Oku as the regional organizer, Tescon came out crying that they've been excluded from the voter uh, 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 list. So, look at what is happening at sound today. Nobody cares. The president doesn't care. Government doesn't care. No emphatic statement on sound. The fact that we have Ghanaians in this country who do not have a representative in parliament. You see, so when you look at the issue of participation and exclusion, it is not, this is who the NPP is. And we need to understand that. And my worry is having this in your constitution clear act of exclusionism that listen for us we believe in only a few governing we believe in only a few making decisions for this country we believe in only a few determining the future recently i was listening to um, some news item on the bbc and this lady from i think asia was like now this they come to us they engage us but we don't find our voices in the policy document very instructive Issues of participation, well over. So now everybody is inching towards how do we open up the space? Mm. How do we ensure that people get involved yeah. and feel belonged? So this arrangement, as far well as I am concerned, is an affront to even Article 55.5 because your internal organization as a political party must conform to democratic principles. Right. And what more can be a democratic principle than participation. Right. And you are trying to influence even the basis mindset as to who they vote for mm. as far as the outcome of today's election is concerned. Mm -hmm. So clearly, when you weigh the advantages, 
against the disadvantages as far as this arrangement is concerned, it's only a case of the NPP showing who they are, believing that, listen, we only have to have a few of our chars, I mean, to determine the course, the future of the party. And that is what happens even in, 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 in government. I see. Interesting. Michael, I, I think that um, here, we'll uh, would take a short break. We have to go and stretch our legs a little bit. We'll be back in, in, in 30 minutes' time, you know, sip, get, you know, drink some water and, and so on. Basically, you know, refresh ourselves. And then we'll be back in 30 minutes, by which time the, hopefully the party would have been ready, or the electoral commission, sorry, would have been uh, getting ready to start counting, uh, you know, the ballots, and then we'll get to know where who belongs. Where. We may not get everybody returning because, um, well, you know, the, 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 some of our colleagues may have other things that they want to attend to. So if we come back and you don't see any faces, it's not because the person doesn't like it, it's just because they have to attend to other things as well. Let's also pray that they, they, they all come back. But I'm praying that they all come back. So we'll take a short break. We will be back after 12.30. October 3, 1955, Alan John Kwejo Chemantin served in the same position as Trade Minister between 2003 and 2007 during former President John Ajekun Kufo's era and Akufado's administration from 2019 until his resignation to vie for NPP flag bearership. He has an extensive and distinguished record in international trade and public policy, enterprise development, politics and diplomacy. Chamantin was Ghana's ambassador to United States and later Minister of Trade and Industry, Private Sector Development and Presidential Special Initiatives during former President Gufo's tenure of office. Chamantin served as a trade advisor at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where he coordinated the African Trade Policy Center. Chamantin made an attempt at the leadership of the new Patriotic Party in 2007, capturing 32.3% of votes cast. He was first runner-up to Akufuadu, who gained 47.96% of votes cast. Jamantin made other attempts at the party's flag bearership in 2010 and 2014, but placed second to Akufuadu, who won the primaries. In 2012, Ghana nominated Jamantin for the post of World Trade Organization's Director General to succeed outgoing Director General Pascal Lamy, and his candidature received the backing of the African Union. However, he did not make the short list for the final selection process in 2013. Dr. Mahamudu Baumia is an economist, banker, and vice president of Ghana. He was a deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana until his nomination as vice presidential candidate for the new Patriotic Party presidential candidate Nana Ekufatu in 2008. He also ran as the vice presidential candidate of the new Patriotic Party in Ghana's 2012 general elections and was the lead witness for the petitioners in the 2012 2013 presidential election petition which challenged the declaration of John Mahama as the winner of Ghana's 2012 presidential election. Alhaji Baumia served under various Ghanaian governments in various capacities, including a member of the Northern Territories Council, the Gold Coast Legislative Assembly, a member of Parliament of the First Republic, Northern Regional Minister, and Ghana Ambassador to the United Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Alhaji Baumia was in March 1999 awarded the highest national honor, membership of the Order of the Star of Ghana. Mahamudu Baumia's mother, Hajia Miriama Baumia, is a native of Basembe in the West Mampusi district. She was one of the first northern female students to gain admission to Wesley Girls High School, Cape Coast. Born into a large family, Mahamudu Baumia was the 12th of his father's 18 children and the second of his mother's wife. Mahamudu Baumia attended the Sakasaka Primary School in Tamale and gained admission to the Tamale Secondary School in 1970. 
1975. He was president of the Ghana United Nations Students Association in 1981. After graduating from Tamale Secondary School, he went to the United Kingdom where he studied banking and obtained the Chartered Institute of Bankers Diploma. He took a first class honors degree in economics at Buckingham University in 1987. He then obtained a master's degree in economics at Lincoln College, Oxford, and obtained a PhD in economics at Simon Fraser University, British Columbia, Canada, in 1955. His areas of specialization include macroeconomics, international economics, development economics, and monetary policy. He has numerous publications. From 1988 to 1990, Baumia worked as a lecturer in monetary economics and international finance at the Emil Wolfe College of Accountancy in London, England. He also also served as an economist at the Research Department of International Monetary Fund in Washington, D.C., USA. Between 1996 and 2000, Baumia served as an assistant professor of economics at Hankama School of Business, Baylor University, USA, where he also received the Young Researcher Award in 1998. Born on June 16, 1960, and hails from Asin Dumpim in the central region, Kennedy Ohine, Japan, is a Ghanaian politician and businessman who represents Asin Central in Parliament for the New Patriotic Party. He was first elected a member of parliament in 2000 to the seat of Asin North. He retained his seat in the 2004 and 2008 parliamentary elections. In 2012, he was elected in the new seat of Asin Central and was re-elected in 2016. He also retained his seat in the 2020 general elections. He is currently the chairman of the parliament's defense and interior committee and an aspirant for the presidential candidate on the ticket of the MPP. He had his secondary education at Addis Adel College in the central region. Kennedy Japan still remains one of few politicians who have never lost elections. Kennedy Japan chairs the Communication Committee in Parliament under the current presidency of Nana Akufuado. Born on June 15, 1961 in Accra and hails from Sharma in the Western region, Joe Gatti is a Ghanaian lawyer, academic and politician. He's a former Attorney General of Ghana from 2006 to 2009, Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament from 2013 to 2017 and Railways and Development Minister. 2017 to 2021. He started his early education at the Richer School in Accra and later attended Infant Supreme Senior High School in Cape Coast. It was during his time at Infant Supreme School that his leadership qualities began to show. He was appointed House Prefect of Picard Packer House in his senior year and he used his good offices to champion the development of sports and student participation in sports programs at Infant Supreme. After Infant him, Gatte enrolled to study law and obtained his LLB degree in 1986 from the University of Ghana and BL from the Ghana School of Law in 1988, qualifying to be called to the Bar of Ghana in that same year. Joe Gatte took up a job as an associate at the Chambers of Lawyer Guira in 2nd D. Later, he joined the firm of Ekufuadu Prempe and Co., a leading law firm in Ghana, which was co-founded by his colleague, parliamentarian and cabinet minister in the John Ajikun Kufu administration, Nana Ekufuadu. Gatte left this firm after seven years and in 1994 co-founded the law firm Gatte and Gatte with his wife, Fua Gatte. He's an authority in corporate and investment law. Kwabna Eje Ajepon is a Ghanaian civil engineer, politician and dedicated sports enthusiast. Born on March 6, 1962 in Kumasi, Ghana, he embarked on a distinguished educational journey, culminated in a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. A Japan's professional trajectory was marked by his roles at the Ghana Highways Authority, where he conducted engineering evaluations of major roads 
unsupervised critical repair works at airports. In 1992, he co-founded Constro Consult Limited, a firm specializing in geotechnical investigations and foundation design. His political engagements date back to Ghana's return, where he played integral roles in new patriotic party campaigns, including the Edu Boahim presidential campaign. A Japan's expertise in communications led him to serve as press secretary to the president, overseeing media coverage of significant national and international events. His sports enthusiasm saw him anchor a prominent sports program on national television and cover major sporting events worldwide. Kwabna Ejeye Japan's legacy is characterized by his multifaceted contributions to engineering, politics, and sports, reflecting a life dedicated to excellence, service, and nation building. Born March 23, 1965, Francis Adenimo is a Ghanaian politician. Francis Adenimo, the former Asante Mampon legislator, is therefore in a historic campaign that is daring the established names and faces to become MPP's flag bearer. The civil engineer is contesting to leave the MPP, arguing that the party needs fresh candidate to break the aid. He identifies as a Christian and is married with three children. Adenimo hails from Mamponyinampong, a town in the Ashanti region of Ghana. He attended the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where he obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering in 1993. He also attended the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration and obtained an Executive Master's degree in Public Administration. Adenimo is a development planner by profession and civil engineer. Dr. Kofi Kunodu Apreku is a Ghanaian politician, economist, and a member of the second, third, and fourth parliament of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. He was a member of parliament for the Offensive North constituency in the fourth parliament of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. Dr. Kunodu Apreku was born at Akumadan in the Ashanti region of Ghana on September 7, 1954. He had his primary and middle school in Akumadan. He continued to the Trinibu Akodia Secondary School between 1967 and 1972 and continued his education in South Albany High School in Oregon, USA. After winning an AFS international essay competition, after which he studied for economics degrees at the Oregon State University, taking a doctorate in the subject, Dr. Kunadua Preku was Minister for Regional Cooperation and Nepad in John, Nekuf in John Kufo's administration from 2003 to 2006. He also served as the Minister of Trade and Industry under Kufo from 2001 to 2003. In 2008, he was appointed by the Economic Community of West African States Council of Ministers as ECOWAS Commissioner for Macroeconomic Policy and Economic Research, where he was responsible for multilateral surveillance mechanism that involves regular assessment through joint surveillance mission of the economies of ECOWAS member state to ascertain whether the convergences criteria are being met. He provides economic and statistical data for member states and help them to attain the convergence criteria and the ECOWAS single currency. He also liaises with the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, African Development Bank, among other financial institutions to support the development of ECOWAS regions. Dr. Preku has had an extensive and successful professional career in the both and public sector. Dr. Owusu Efriye Akutu, born on October 1949, is a Ghanaian agricultural economist and politician. He worked for more than a decade with the International Coffee Organization. He is a member of the New Patriotic Party and was the member of parliament for the Kwadasu constituency from 2009 to 2016. He is currently a cabinet minister in the Nanado administration and serves as the Minister of Food and Agriculture of Ghana. Dr. Wusefri Akutu was born to Bafor Sei Akutu, a prominent member of the pre-independence national liberation movement and also a chief linguist at the Menshia Palace. 
He had his tertiary education at the University of Ghana, Legon, and graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture. He then studied at Cambridge University, where he obtained a Master of Science in Agricultural Economics. He earned his Doctor of Philosophy degree at Cambridge in 1985. Afriya Akutu is married with seven children. He is a member of the Catholic Church of Ghana. Dr. Afriya Akutu was employed by the International Coffee Organization in London, England. Among the positions he held were economics, senior economist, principal economist, and chief economic advisor. He also served as a consultant to the World Bank, a United Nations agency on soft commodities, namely cocoa, coffee, and sugar. After working for over 18 years abroad, he returned to Ghana, where from 1995 to 2008, he served as the CEO of Goldcrest Commodities Limited and Plantation Resources Limited. Boache Tremantin Ajako is a Ghanaian economics politician and former banker born in 1956 at Kumasi Tsuk. To Kwasi Ajako, who was a merchant and the United Party activist. His mother was Jane Lazi Paddy from Kobo Odumasi in the Eastern Region. Ajako attended the KO Methodist Primary School in Ashtown and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Primary School in Kumasi. He then proceeded to Infantipim School in Kipkus for his secondary education from where he had both his GCE Ordinary Level and GCE Advanced Level. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and Political Science from the University of Ghana, Lagos. He immigrated to the United States of America as a political refugee. Whilst there, he obtained an advanced professional certificate in banking from the American Institute of Banking and Master of Business Administration in Financial Economics from Pace University, New York. He was the vice president of the Bank of New York and the former minister for energy in Ghana. However, the economist Ajako entered politics at an early age and was at the time the national coordinator for the Ghanaian Union of Students and Youth Associations from 1979 to 1980. He was a founding member of the New Patriotic Party in 1992. He held several positions in the party, including chairman of the Dan Kwambuzia Club of North America and briefly served as a trustee of the Buzia Foundation. He was elected the coordinator for the New Patriotic Party in North America. Ajako was appointed as national campaign manager of the New Patriotic Party in the 2012 presidential election. He was appointed the policy advisor to the presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party during the 2016 election and in January 2017. Adako was appointed the Minister of Energy by President Akufuadu in 2019, but later resigned. Kwejo Nsafwa Poku is an entrepreneur with 21 years of experience in the country's energy sector. He also serves as board director of multinational companies such as Pan-African Capital Ghana Limited, FIFC Management and Development Limited. Kwajo Nsafwa Poku was the country director for Gasop Oil Ghana Limited from June 2008 to September 2012. He worked as special assistant to the Minister of Tourism, the late Honorable Hawa Yakubu, from January 20, 2001 to May 2002. He has been endorsed by the Ashanti Youth for Good Governance to contest for elections for the position of President of Ghana on the ticket of the new Patriotic Party in 2024. Beyond today is for the five people who have been selected. In any event, I am sure that per the results that would occur. Because I, I think that maybe one, two, three people may, may share all the votes. Mm -hmm. You get me? And in that sense, even the other two that would tag along may find that it will not be necessary for them to go to November. So uh, they may want to align with, with any of the one, two or three um, candidates who will emerge from in this particular um, shortlist. Mm -hmm. Well, what it will do to internal democracy it, it, is that it will bring cohesion. It will, it will show that we are united, you know, um, that we are focused, we know what we want. You know, I would prefer such a scenario even than for the votes to be split into bits and pieces amongst all the ten people. I would I don't even mind if all the if the, all the votes went to one or two people. I don't mind. 
because then it will show that we know what we want. Okay. No matter how hard we see the economy is, which is, you can't compare this economy to Bahamas. You can't. It's not true. The they governance. Said you have the best of resources. You have the best of support that uh, you have ever had, or any government has ever had under the Fourth Republic. Which is why we have the best programs that any government has ever had under the Fourth Republic. Thank you. To whom much is given, much is expected. We will, we will do the numbers. When our candidate is elected, they will hear from us. Listen. Did Mahama do any, any, any free SHS program? You know how much it costs to do a free SHS program? Do you know the number of people who have had opportunity since MPP came to power to become, excuse my language, human beings who otherwise would have been lying on the streets? That program took money to do. Did Mahama do a one district, one factory program? The kinds of products that we are nurturing and putting out. The, for the first time in Ghana, we hear that Ghana has um, a, what do you call it? A higher uh, what do you call volume of exports over imports. That hasn't happened in a long time. In 2016, we were importing plantain. Have people forgotten? You see, Mama is running because he says that Ghanaians have short memories. So he's hoping that everybody will forget what um, um, he did. When, when he was vice president and president. But you see, you can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all the people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. It is not possible for all 32 million Ghanaians to have short memories. There are those of us whose memories are not short who will remind the rest of the people that we were importing plantain, now we are exporting it. We were importing maize, now we are exporting it, and etc. etc. I tell you, I have friends in NDC. I met one of them um, several months ago. I won't mention his name. And I said, Honorable, how are you? He said, Oh, uh, in key. He said to me, eh, me call you my primaries, no one more. And I'm school. And I said, well, when you watch your parliament, we'll die, like stop. Don't go again. He says, Debbie, 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 2024, I have a papa one. This is when you want me to stop. And I said, I want to cast a papa. Oh, say eight years or so. You see? So that is the mentality they have. It's not as if there is anything, they have an agenda, they have a program, they have a manifesto, they have a good candidate, nothing. It's just like eight years or so. If it's eight years or so, let's go, we'll see. The second layer. So I'm here to go to the third layer, the fourth layer, where I'm going to vote. So, but so far so good, especially the election committee, then also the national, the damn marvelous world. I must admit. You know, initially there were a lot of intimidation and all those things. But whatever petition we gave them, they granted almost all of them for the sake of peace and unity. So so far so good. And here, Central Region, you know we are a disciplined region. I don't expect anything bad to happen to embarrass us. Over 18 years in business, Appointed Time Printing Limited has delivered quality service to some of Ghana's well-known brands. With our equipment capacity, we are able to deliver 1,500 pieces of polo and t-shirts in one hour. This is only possible with us. For retailers and wholesalers, we offer for sale high-quality polo shirts and t-shirts in different colors at affordable prices. We have a one-stop shop for all creative designs and billboards, 3D signages, flexi banners, car branding, stickers and posters. Locate us at the old GNTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade, Accra. Contact us on 0501-454165, 0501-454167. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Appointed Time GH, Appointed Time Printing Limited, our printing is a... Hello. 
My name is Roland Walker. I'm here at Dwellers Court. It's one of the many courts belonging to Estate Masters. And they are into service plots, property management, and luxury homes. And just in case you want to make that decision to invest into a landed property, Estate Masters is the right choice to make. If it is from an indenture, a site plan, you want it also barcoded, all is available. You might have heard about Chopoli. It's where we have the next cottage of Estate Masters. It is not only one of the thriving, but the most inviting landed property site for you also to invest in. We encourage you, do invest in the next cottage at Chopoli. It is just close to the yet to be demarcated airport that also will be a valuable property for you to invest in. JA Plantful Ghana Limited has introduced the all new Jetto X70 Plus to the market. Jetto X70 Plus is a modern, spacious family SUV with a stylish design, advanced technology, and outstanding quality that promises you luxury with affordability. Jetto X70 Plus comes with an exceptional engine warranty of four years or 100,000 kilometers, giving you the ultimate peace of mind for years to come. And our dedicated service center at J Plant Pool offers you a wide range of car services and world-class customer support. Be exclusive and outstanding. Get yourself the all-new Jetto X70 Plus. Get in touch with J Plant Pool Ghana Limited on 020-0000-831 or info at jplantpoolgh.com. Visit jplantpoolgh.com for more information. Level 3 presents Cape Coastal Graphic to a Fashion 2023. Inside and behind the Adisada School Complex. Running from 30th August up until 10th September 2023. Let me see 30th now. A big strap house party. 31st August. Say to a fashion homecoming connect. And on 1st September. Party in Orange. That is the official Afasha Orange Friday after party. And on Saturday, 2nd September. It's plenty. Black and gold affairs. Happening live. Inside Level 3. Staff to for four and which will play will happen live on 10 September with live match between Manchester United and Arsenal with live commentary from Castle F. Remember to see the new Bruna on your official all white party with our surprise artists with classic music in the background kind of sketches DJ Ty DJ Sketches Suspect DJ DJ Scotty DJ Junkie and Nestle MC MC Romeo Taylor and MC Shitless who hold you down in a grunge style media partners Cape FM Property FM Castle FM and Metro TV Sponsors Origin Stabia Dalko Fuji and Menwa. For inquiry show reservations, call 0244 925 412 or 0558 224 902 level 3 and 25. I'm here to go to the third layer, the fourth layer, where I'm going to go. So, far so far so good, especially the election committee, then also the national, the damn marvelous war, I must admit. You know, initially, there were a lot of intimidation and all those things, but whatever petition we gave them, they granted almost all of them for the sake of peace and unity. So, so far, so good. And here, Central Region, you know we are a disciplined region. I don't expect anything bad to happen, to embarrass us. And I'm not going to create any confusion here. We we'll make sure we are one party. We vote. Anybody who wins, you know, we all come together and, you know, face NDC. So I don't have a problem at all. But this is your home region. What number of people are you expecting to win at the end of the day? Oh, at least, uh, at least, I'll get eighty percent. No doubt about it. I'll get eighty percent. So we should be rest assured because they're going to honor me for so my hard work uh, and my commitment to the region. I think 
everybody you talk to, all the delegates, know what I've done for Central Region, and they think this is the time also to reward. So I know I'm going to get massive votes from Central, no doubt about it. No matter the amount they give them, no matter the intimidation, they have conscience and they know that this is the man. And look, whoever will do what, any election that I don't get involved will go to the position. So, I mean, that should remind them, especially those who are playing dirty games and all sorts of things. The one person, if you bring 1,000 MPP people, let them talk. No Ghanaian will listen to them except Kaleja Pong. One. One person. So I'm not as afraid. I mean, if you like, go and read the Bible, the story of Gideon. <laughs> the story of Gideon. And you will see. So everybody should be calm and let's wait till one o'clock. We are all going to be vigilant. And I know this number of journalists here there will be peace because you'll be watching you'll be watching and you know make sure things are done properly so i'll say thank you very much and let me go to the next stage and see what is happening thank you president of the member will show down vice president member will show down so mama chasing me agent i'm gonna consult them what do you miss what do you miss you have yes I'm telling you, I'm I'm telling you, I'm telling you, i I'm telling you, i I'm I have gone into the box. How will the matter be resolved? Mm. The balance that are being showed have been put in the box. How will the matter be resolved? The rules say that any ballot that is showed is invalid. That is what the rules say. Any ballot that is showed is invalid. So if you are voting systematically and showing it systematically, and the EC are looking on, the police are looking on, and our agent is assaulted for protesting, then it's grounds enough to reject the entire result. Is it, are, are, are you foreseeing the defeat? That is why perhaps you are about the, There is nothing like defeat in this. It is a selection. It's a mere selection. You are talking about we a margin of victory. the rules, hmm. margin of what victory? Victory for the vice There is no president. victory where you select five people. Where is the victory? You are selecting five people, we are talking victory. Hmm. Those who need it hmm. to demonstrate their emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory. I see. Those who need it to demonstrate emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory. There is nothing about victory in this. What it is is that the party is peacefully selecting five people who will go to the true election. There is only one true election, November 4th. But to begin to assault agents at this time and to begin to flout the rules with impunity means that the president, His Excellency, the party leadership who are in charge of the election and the vice president's faction, I'll call them a faction because they are behaving like a faction. So who, are you, to be who are you alleging is assaulting your agent? Yeah. Who are, who the is agent is in hospital. Who is assaulting your he's agent? Been, he's reported to the police. Who is assaulting he, the, your agent? The, the, he's been assaulted. He's in the hospital. Assaulted by in the northeast. The reports will come out. The, he's gone to the police. The police have given the hospital form and the statement to the police will be made public in due time. So the party we have has reported, as a case, we have reported, if that's the case, why are you quick to call on the vice president? Ballots in the northeast. When our agent protested, he was beaten up. He's in the hospital now. We, the Alan Shemati campaign, is rejecting the entire results from the northeast. We are telling the party headquarters. We are telling the elections committee, we are telling the vice president's team, we are telling His Excellency the President to put his foot down. 
anything to do with adding and including the Northeast results in this election will mean that the results are a sharp. And it will go on in other places from what we are hearing. In Kumasi, fortunately, when the youth organizer did that, the vote was invalidated. The youth organizer voted and showed it. For whose benefit are they showing it? They are showing it for the benefit of the vice president. It is the vice president whose vote they are showing to the world. It was invalidated. It almost resulted in a cancellation. It, it was cancelled, but it almost resulted in a cancellation of the entire election because it almost degenerated into a quarrel. In the Northeast, they have beaten our agent. Our agent is in the hospital. And they were showing the vote because they were voting for the vice president. So they would be asked to show the vote. If they but honorable, the result, what would you do? If they are the result, it's obviously a public sham. That's why I'm telling the entire world, including His Excellency the President, to put his foot down. Because if we all make rules and we decide that the rules will not be enforced, the rules are for the benefit of the public and the candidates, and yet on the ground they will not be enforced, force is applied, impunity is applied, and nobody is able to do anything about it, then the result is a sham. I don't know, but some can say that, I mean, your request is a bit far-fetched. The matter could be easily resolved. East region, mm. Are you citing poor security in the Northeast region? I am saying that the rules are being infringed with impunity. And when our agent, who is supposed to protect our interests, protested, he was assaulted. The That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that that means that the vote in the Northeast has been contaminated. One of the party and has that vote that has been have contaminated. Have you filed an official petition to yes, the Yes, we are filing everything. We are doing everything. We are bringing it to your public notice that the Chiramatini team will move for invalidation of the entire Northeast regional results. Thank you very much. Okay. Have uh, gone mm. into the box. How will the matter be resolved? Mm. The ballots that are being shown have been put in the box. How will the matter be resolved? The rules say that any ballot that is showed is invalid. That is what the rules say. Any ballot that is showed is invalid. So if you are voting systematically and showing it systematically, and the EC are looking on, the police are looking on, and our agent is assaulted for protesting, then it's grounds enough to reject the entire result. Is it, are, are, are you foreseeing that defeat? That is why perhaps it is you are about it. There is nothing like defeat in this. It is a selection. It's a mere selection. You are talking about we a margin of victory. the rules. Mm. Margin of what victory? Victory for the vice There is no president. victory where you select five people. Where is the victory? You are selecting five people. We are talking victory. Mm. Those who need it mm. to demonstrate their emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory. I see. Those who need it to demonstrate emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory. There is nothing about victory in this. What it is is that the party is peacefully selecting five people who will go to the true election. There's only one true election, November 4th. But to begin to assault agents at this time and to begin to flout the rules with impunity means that the president, His Excellency, the party leadership who are in charge of the election and the vice president's faction, I'll call them a faction because they are behaving like a faction. So who, are you, to be who are you alleging is assaulting your agent? Yeah. Who are, who the agent is in hospital. Who is assaulting your he's agent? Been, he's reported the police. Who is assaulting he, your agent? The, on the, he's been assaulted. He's in the hospital. So in by the who? northeast. By the reports will come out. The, he's gone to the police. The police have given the hospital form and the statement to the police will be made public in due time. So we, have has reported, as a case, we have reported... If that's the case, why are you quick to call on the vice president? ...ballots in the northeast. When our agent protested, he was beaten up. He's in the hospital now. We, the Alan Shemati campaign, is rejecting the entire results from the northeast. We are telling the party headquarters, we are telling the elections committee, we are telling the vice president's team, we are telling His Excellency the President to put his foot down. Anything to do with adding and including the Northeast results in this election will mean that the results are a sham. And it will go on in other places from what we are hearing. In Kumasi, fortunately, when the youth organizer did that, the vote was invalidated. The youth organizer voted and showed it. For whose benefit are they showing it? They are showing it for the benefit of the vice president. It is the vice president whose vote they are showing to the world. It was invalidated. It almost resulted in a cancellation. It, it was cancelled, but it almost resulted in a cancellation of the entire election because it almost degenerated into a quarrel. In the Northeast, they have beaten our agent. Our agent is in the hospital. And they were showing the vote because they were voting for the vice president. So they They'd be asked if, to show the vote. If they but, but honorable. The result, what would you do? If they are the result, it's obviously a public sham. 
That's why I'm telling the entire world, including His Excellency the President, to put his foot down. Because if we all make rules and we decide that the rules will not be enforced, the rules are for the benefit of the public and the candidates, and yet on the ground they will not be enforced, force is applied, impunity is applied, and nobody is able to do anything about it, then the result is a sham. Honorable, some can say that, I mean, your request is a bit far-fetched. The matter could be easily resolved. East region, mm. are you citing poor security in the Northeast region? I am saying that the rules are being infringed with impunity. And when our agent, who is supposed to protect our interests, protested, he was assaulted. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that that means that the vote in the Northeast has been contaminated. One of the party and that vote that has been have contaminated. Have you filed an official petition to Yes, the we are filing everything. We are doing everything. We are bringing it to your public notice that the Chermatini team will move for invalidation of the entire Northeast regional results. Thank you very much. Okay. Have uh, hmm. gone into the box. How will the matter be resolved? Hmm. The balance that are being showed have been put in the box. How will the matter be resolved? The rules say that any ballot that is showed is invalid. That is what the rules say. Any ballot that is showed is invalid. So if you are voting systematically... I am. Except that I think it's an overkill. Uh, the, the, the number of security men here is a lot. I think it's an overkill, but probably it's only out of abundance, of course. Otherwise, there's really nothing to worry about our election. I think as a delegate, I must ask you this. Some asked as a voter, were you, you part of You this? are a journalist. What I say, whether it's true or not, is your responsibility to verify. I drove from Bekwai here. My vehicle is parked here, right there. I'm going back straight to Bekwai. Nobody has come to me. All the people voting here are people who live in Ashanti region. So why does they need to come anybody? And these are not, uh, excuse me to say, ordinary people. People with means on their own. People with active leadership roles in the party. So to suggest that any of us will be camped is, I think, unfair to us, who are alleged to have been camped. It's, it's most unfair to us. At the end of the day, I know you couldn't be expecting him to leave the special electoral college today. Yeah, they announced earlier that my support is for him, but the vote is supposed to be secret. So how I voted, I don't have to say anything about that. But my hope is that the first five will be part of it. Then the real issue is after here, uh, so that you emerge the main winner to lead our party at the next general election. My expectation is that uh, we will have a very peaceful and orderly uh, process and that we will all conform to the rules and regulations as set out in the guidelines without contravening any section of it so that there will be peace and quiet in the, in the region as well as in the overall at the end of the day, it's how we comport ourselves that is most important. This is an internal election, and I expect that all of us will have our eyes on the bigger prize, and therefore the real thing. People can speculate, people can have the figments of their imagination, and people, a lot of people only attempt to manufacture consent, right? At the end of the day, most people speaking or speculating or punditing don't even know the stuff. They don't have a vote. They haven't gone to stop to delegate anywhere in this country. They haven't campaigned before. So punditry is very easy. You see, what do one do you ask? It didn't know. The strict language of the Constitution and its regulations is that, for example, you say National Council shall determine the venue. Shall the what does it suggest to you? One, it is a college, not colleagues. And it's the, the language further says that the National Council shall select the venue. It didn't say the National Council shall select the venues. Somehow, 
somebody has convinced us that the word venue is the same as venues. It is like the Supreme Court telling us that the word may is the same as shall. So here we are. I think it is a totally wrong interpretation. In 2014, when we did it, we regionalized it, recognized that it should have been in one place. However, there was the excuse that because we were in opposition and didn't have the resource, and therefore could marshal all the delegates to one location, let us atomize it to the regional level so that it will be cheaper for us to handle it. That was the reason, and we went along with it. Is that reason still valid? I doubt it. But council decided, right? And there is no quibbling thereafter. We may then have to go back and revisit, after this, revisit the strict language and spirit of the Constitution in order to avoid any further confusion surrounding this particular event. I think that as a party brimming with lawyers and intellectuals, uh, our constitution, the language of our constitution, does not give us the strict uh, spirit and language to allow us to say that this world is clear. We'll have to revisit that after this. The security are up to tax right from the entrance. I was searched, I was thoroughly searched, and the scan was used on me. So I think they are doing their, their work as they should. I haven't uh, observed anything toward yet. Of course, I, we heard about some uh, misunderstanding between the agent, which has been peacefully resolved. And so, so far, so good. And uh, I move in peacefully and do what I have to do. Okay, so you being the uh, agent for Dr. Baumia, I know they largely satisfactory. I haven't observed anything until I speak to camera. Uh, and that is, is, is good enough. The EC has conducted itself well. And I think the agents are also up to uh, the tax. They are all delivering, they are insisting on their rights and insisting on the right thing being done. So far, so good. Thank you. You mark my words. And a percentage. We've been in. I've said that already. I said you won't, you won't go below. Uh, 80 percent. We want to we want to go beyond that, and that is what we are doing. I can see from my eyes. I have not slept a wink because we 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 have a journey we have to embark upon, and that is to safeguard uh, the image of this party and this tradition. It's so 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 important. It's not just strategic that he should win. It's important that he wins uh, also for the fortunes of this party and this tradition. He's going to win. Nothing will change. And how are you whipping your... But I won't tell you what my strategies are. What I know is that the ultimate result is what matters. At the end of the day, it's about he winning. After the win, we know he will, but we want a certain percentage. And that is why we are not sleeping. And I, I hope and believe that he will emerge and we will chop that percentage out of the floor. Okay. <laughs> Actually, um, I'm the first to cast my ballot today, and everything went on smoothly. Uh, I don't think there should be any problem here. Uh, what I'm pleading with all the aspirants that they should not allow some of the supporters to come here and jubilate or maybe make any noise. This is election day. Election day, all campaigns have ceased. So we should allow the delegates to come and vote. We have just about 120 people voting here. I don't think this should take more than two hours for us to complete the vote. Thank you very much. Everything was smooth. We've seen a heavy deployment of police. Um, how, uh, why necessary is this arrangement? It's necessary because we want absolute security here. We don't want anybody to come and mess us up. There's internal elections. All the ten candidates qualify to lead the party. I endorse anybody. The, the election is not mine. If I had, I would decide it. I don't decide it. It's the delegates in our party that decide it. Mr. President, Ghanaians say they are not happy with the way conditions are. They are tired. They are suffering. 
I'm, I'm the first to admit it. I've said it several times. I'm the first to admit it. That this is how we're going to do the shortlisting. It is enshrined in our constitution. It is constitutional, it is legal, it is proper. Any group can decide on their own how they organize their own affairs. And mind you, this is um, a group of, group of private individuals who've come together to form an association which we call a political party, which is designed in accordance with the rules for the formation of political parties in this country. We have the right to determine how we organize our own internal affairs. The important thing is that whatever process we go through must conform with the rules that we have decided for ourselves. And so far, everything has gone on exactly as our constitution has prescribed. So I'm happy with, with the arrangement so far. I'm happy with the conduct of the elections so far. And I know that at the end of the day, we'll come together as a stronger party, fortified and better able to take on anything that the main opposition party can throw at us. All right, so I was asking right, so the qualities asking you are looking at to choose your, 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 your five. One, somebody who unified the party. Two, somebody who appealed to the greater Ghanaian community of voters come next year, December. Three, somebody who will be able to put together a very good program that will resonate with Ghanaians. Because you must have a program that resonates with the vision of the electoral college of the country. And people must believe in your program and your vision. And they must trust in you. You are honorable. How is the, how is the process? Very can... smooth, very smooth. Let me say that all the candidates standing today for MPP are very good. They are good. All the 10 candidates are capable. But the one, one person who can soar above them, and the best brand, the best candidate for MPP, is Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Farah. That's it. It's not about how old you are, it's what you can bring on board. Vice President Mahmoud Farah can bring quality, commitment, and transformation to party and to government. Let's all go for back to the like I said, all the 10 candidates are good, but one source above them is Vice President of the Mountain. The Vice President has really, really shown, he's shown a lot of commitment to involve all the initiatives of the government. So there's no historical candidate. I think that Ghanaians and MPP, they know who can deliver. They know who can take from where President Kwadra has left. I think the obvious choice is uh, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud. So you support the Vice President? I support Vice President. So why, why do you support the Vice President ahead of the nine others? He's demonstrated concern to the party. He's been involved in all the initiatives that President Kwadu has done. And I think that where President Kwadu will leave off, his first president, his first vice president, Mama, uh, vice president uh, Dr. Mount Bayo, continue. He's capable, he's committed, and I think that's what it takes to transform the economy of Ghana. It's a global phenomenon. Ghana is not the only country going through it. We should not be praised for the leadership of President Kwadu and his government. We should be praised for look at the way we handle COVID. The situation is because of COVID and Russian Ukraine war. There are challenges, but we're not running for the challenges. We are committed and determined to make sure that we solve the problems and make sure. Ghana should have faith in MPP that we can, we can solve the problems and make Ghana work in it. The, the election is not mine. If I had, I would decide it. I don't decide it. It's the delegates in our party that decide it. Mr. President, Ghanaians say they are not happy with the way conditions are. They are tired, they are suffering. I'm, I'm the first to admit it. I've said it several times. I'm the first to admit it. That this is how we're going to do the shortlisting. It is enshrined in our constitution. It is constitutional, it is legal, it is proper. Any group can decide on their own how they organize their own affairs. And mind you, this is um, a group of, group of private individuals who've come together to form an association which we call a political party, which is designed in accordance with the rules for the formation of political parties in this country. We have the right to determine how we organize our own internal affairs. The important thing is that whatever process we go through must conform with the rules that we have decided for ourselves. And so far, everything has gone on exactly as our constitution has prescribed. So I'm happy with, with the arrangement so far. I'm happy with the conduct of the elections so far. 
and I know that at the end of the day we'll come together as a stronger party, fortified and better able to take on anything that the main opposition party can throw at us. The second layer. So I'm here to go to the third layer, the fourth layer, where I'm going to vote. So, but so far so good, especially the election committee, then also the national, they done marvelously well, I must admit. You know, initially, there were a lot of intimidation and all those things. But whatever petition we gave them, they granted almost all of them for the sake of peace and unity. So, so far, so good. And here, Central Region, you know, we are a disciplined region. I don't expect anything bad to happen, to embarrass us. And I'm not going to create any confusion here. We'll make sure we are one party. We vote anybody who wins. You know, we all come together and, you know, face NDC. So I don't have a problem at all. But this is your home region. What number of votes are you expecting to win at the end of the day? Oh, at least, uh, at least, I'll get 80 percent. No doubt about it. I'll get 80 percent. So we should be rest assured because they're going to honor me. So my hard work fight, uh, and my commitment to the region. I think everybody you talk to, all the delegates, know what I've done for Central Region, and they think this is the time also to reward. So I know I'm going to get massive votes from Central, no doubt about it. No matter the amount they give them, no matter the intimidation, they have conscience and they know that this is the man. And look. Whoever will do what. Any election that I don't get involved will go to opposition. So, I mean, that should remind them, especially those who are playing dirty games and all sorts of things. I mean, one person, if you bring 1,000 MPP people, let them talk. No Guinea will listen to them except Canada for one. One person. So, I'm not as afraid. I mean, if you like, go and read the Bible, the story of Gideon. <laughs> the story of Gideon. And you will see. So, everybody should be calm and let's be till one o'clock. We are all going to be vigilant. And I know this number of journalists here, there will be peace. Because you'll be watching. You'll be watching and, you know, make sure things are done properly. So, I'll say thank you very much. And let me go to the Oh um, yeah, I'm telling you. Don't go to position. I'm a go position. Oh yeah, I'm telling you. Don't go to position. I'm a go have gone into the box how will the matter be resolved mm. the balance that are being shown have been put in the box how will the matter be resolved the rules say that any ballot that is showed is invalid that is what the rules say any ballot that is showed is invalid so if you are voting systematically and showing it systematically and the ec are looking on the police are looking on and our agent is assaulted for protesting then it's grounds enough to reject the entire result is it are, are, are you foreseeing that defeat that is why perhaps it is you are, about it. there is nothing like defeat in this it is a selection it's a mere selection you're talking about we a margin of victory. the rules mm. margin of what victory, victory for the vice there's no victory president. where you select five people where is the victory you are selecting five people we are talking victory mm. those who need it mm. to demonstrate their emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory i see those who need it to demonstrate emptiness are the ones who are pursuing victory there's nothing about victory in this what it is is that the party is peacefully selecting five people who will go to the true election there's only one true election november 4th but to begin to assault agents at this time and to begin to flout the rules with impunity means that the president his excellency the party leadership who are in charge of the election 
and the vice president's faction i'll call them a faction because they are behaving like a faction so who, are you, who are you alleging is assaulting your agent yeah. who are the agent is in hospital who is assaulting your he's agent? Been, he's reported the police who and is assaulting he, your agent the, the, he's been assaulted he's in the hospital so in the who? northeast who? the reports will come out that he's gone to the police the police have given the hospital form and the statement to the police will be made public in due time. So we, have has reported, as a case, we have reported as a case. Why are you quick to call on the vice president? Ballots in the northeast. When our agent protested, he was beaten up. He's in the hospital now. We, the Alan Shemateen campaign, is rejecting the entire results from the northeast. We are telling the party headquarters. We are telling the elections committee. We are telling the vice president's team. We are telling His Excellency the President to put his foot down. Anything to do with adding and including the Northeast results in this election will mean that the results are a sham. And it will go on in other places from what we are hearing. In Kumasi, fortunately, when the youth organizer did that, the vote was invalidated. The youth organizer voted and showed it. For whose benefit are they showing it? They are showing it for the benefit of the vice president. It is the vice president whose vote they are showing to the world. It was invalidated. It almost resulted in a cancellation. It, it was cancelled, but it almost resulted in a cancellation of the entire election because it almost degenerated into a quarrel. In the Northeast, they have beaten our agent. Our agent is in the hospital. And they were showing the vote because they were voting for the vice president. So they They'd be asked to show the vote. If they but, but honorable. Results, what would you do? If they are the result, it's obviously a public sham. That's why I'm telling the entire world including His Excellency the President to put his foot down. Because if we all make rules and we decide that the rules will not be enforced, the rules are for the benefit of the public and the candidates, and yet on the ground they will not be enforced, force is applied, impunity is applied, and nobody is able to do anything about it, then the result is a sham. Honorable, some can say that, I mean, your request is a bit far-fetched. The matter could be easily resolved. East region, mm. Are you citing poor security in the Northeast region? I am saying that the rules are being infringed with impunity. And when our agent, who is supposed to protect our interests, protested, he was assaulted. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying that that means that the vote in the Northeast has been contaminated. One of the party and has that practiced. vote that has been have contaminated. Have you filed an official petition to Yes, we are filing everything. We are doing everything. We are bringing it to your public notice that the Chermati team will move for invalidation of the entire Northeast regional results. Thank you very much. Okay. I am. Except that I think it's an overkill. Uh, the, the, the number of security men here is a lot. I think it's an overkill, but probably it's only out of abundance, of course. But otherwise, there's really nothing to worry about our election. I, I think as a delegate, I must ask you this. Some as a, as a voter, were you, you part of this? You are a journalist. What I say, whether it's true or not, is your responsibility to verify. I drove from Bekwa here. My vehicle is parked here, right there. I'm going back straight to Bekwa. Nobody has come to me. All the people voting here are people who live in the Shanto region. So why does they need to come to anybody? And these are not, uh, excuse me to say, ordinary people. People with means on their own. People with active leadership roles in the party. So to suggest that any of us will be come to is, I think, unfair to us, who are alleged to have become. It's, it's most unfair to us. At the end of the day, I know you phoned you expecting him to leave the special electoral college today. Yes, yeah, I announced earlier that my support is for him, but the vote is supposed to be secret. So how I voted, I don't have to say anything about that. But my hope is that the first five will be part of it. Then the real issue is after here. Uh, so that he will emerge the main winner to lead our party at the next general election. We promise you that we're going to be off, um, not off, but we're taking about 30 minutes break. We've taken about, let me say, well, 58 minutes. Well, we had to take some rest, um, uh, didn't we?
Uh, we've been talking since 8.30, analyzing the New Patriotic Party Special Delegates Conference, which is underway. And um, thankfully, we're back. This is Metro TV, and we're bringing you all that you need to know about the, this very, very old, this all-important exercise that the MPP is undertaking. The MPP has to prune 10, prune or has to whittle down 10 persons who are aspiring to lead the party into the 2024 elections. As per the party's constitution, any time the aspirants go beyond five, they've got to go through a special delegates um, system to be able to bring the number down. And that's exactly what is happening. And that's why some, some people have said this contest is not necessarily about who's winning. Of course, if you're not past the five, then you've lost. But it's nothing like winning once you're past the five. Um, while some disagree, some say if you're past it, it's not enough to be part of the five. You have to be number one. If you're number one, it means that you will be number one throughout. It's game over for the rest. So it depends on where you belong. It depends on which school of thought you want to associate with. But it's, it's a debate that will continue, um, you know, ad infinitum. Um, so if you tell me, you, I'll give you a WhatsApp number very shortly if you tell me where you belong. Do you think that if, say, A, uh, aspirant A gets 70, 75, 80%, then it means the rest should just kiss their uh, presidential ambition a goodbye. Or you think that they still stand a chance. Um, or you think it doesn't mean anything. So that's, that's where we are. But there have also been some developments, some very unfortunate, some interesting, some intriguing, some also a bit funny. Uh, but the ones that, depending on how you see it, um, some feel... Uh, it's, 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 you can say it's in bad taste or it's an indication of what the party should be gearing up or should be preparing for, um, depending on how the, how the party works things out, has to do with what Kennedy Japan uh, has done. Uh, Kennedy Japan has fired a very, very serious salvo. He's thrown a missile to the Jubilee House, the vice president and the president. He said he would give them a showdown. His only problem, according to what he said, of course, we can't independently, uh, you know, verify or confirm. But what our reporter said, he heard Kennedy Japan saying, is that some of his agents have been attacked. Yeah, some of his agents have been attacked. And he's extremely furious. He's extremely upset about it. And that's why he's warning the president that he's going to give the president the vice president the showdown. Really, well, we'll, we'll see how that, that, um, that plays out. So those are some of the sites. We've also heard Yabo Abiyan Samoa, who is a former director of communications of the New Patriotic Party, who is a spokesperson for the Alan Kam, who was also extremely furious about the similar incident. He said his, the northern eastern um, agent of the Alan Kam has been attacked. Yeah, And we saw some pictures flying around. In fact, uh, Mr. Christian Dugan is one of our resource persons. He has actually been able to confirm, since I know him, um, I know him, and I can confirm to you that he's been attacked by some, um, pff, some persons, perhaps some hooligans. And we asked the question about why the police um, have not been able to take the person on. But that's another conversation for another day. I told you earlier that once we're leaving, some persons will to be leaving us. Some of, some of them will be joining us. Fortunately, we've been able to get at least majority of the resource persons who were with us earlier to be with us. But we're fortunate, again, to be joined by, we have a new addition. And that new addition is Mr. Alfred Thompson, who is um, a member of the government's communication team. But for today, not for today, but for some time now, he's been um, happily and, um, you know, um, how do you call it? Um, well, he's been happily uh, associating with the vice president's campaign. And he says he believes in the vice president. He believes the vice president is the best person to lead the new patriotic party in 2024. And so he's, he's uh, made time to join us this afternoon. He's going to be here till the last ballot is counted, um, the, the results are declared, and then we can look at, the, we can look at the, the outcome, and then we can analyze it and take it from there. Um, but at this juncture, let me say a very big thanks to Duke um, Enimedu. I, ho I hope Enimedu. Enimedu, yes, yeah, fantastic guy. He's, um, you know, he works with the NPP's directorate. He's been able to work some things out. Um, he's been very supportive of what we do here at Metro TV. Duke Enyemedu, uh, we well, thank you so very much for um, your, your hard work. So let me come back in house here. Yeah. So I have Michael Niabe, who is a political and a governance analyst, is with us here. And uh, Michael, please uh, give us a wave. Let them know that you're still here because I've, you know, some ladies have sent me a message. They want to know whether you're still here. I don't know why no some man ladies. has sent a message. So ladies were asking, where's Michael? 
you know, I don't know, but yeah, Michael can explain better. Uh, Mr. Know. Christian Dugan, Daniel Dugan <laughs> is also <laughs> here. And uh, he is with the Alan Com. Mr. Christian du uh, Daniel Dugan, mm -hmm. thank you very much uh, for staying with us. Well, no lady has asked whether you're still here, so that's why. <laughs> yeah. Nane Ajantua, she nearly escaped. We had to find a way to make sure that she stays. She's a very busy woman. Oh my God, never met anybody who's that busy. But we've been able to get her to stay. Nanea, we're grateful. Thank you so very much. Uh, Mr. Alfred Thompson is the new king of the block. Boss, good to see you. Great to see you. Yeah, you, you, I, I see you're still, you know, the, your level of optimism is still there. The but fire why, why of optimism is, is yes. still who, there. Who is he representing? What number are you looking at? 70, 75, why is he, is he 80, contesting? 85? Why are you asking well, the he's, he's a spokesperson for the Balmia campaign. Oh, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, a spokesperson for, he's one of the spokespersons for the Balmia campaign. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are here yeah. to do what? Yeah. <laughs> what are you here to? I'm here to speak to the people of Ghana. Uh, you are not part of the people. About what is important in this country. About MPP. Right. And, and what are you here so, to do? Like, like, this, this, this house matter. Let's talk into the house. Now we're on air. Alfred, so what was been happening in the camp? What have you picked up so far? Um, you have any so reactions? Far, quick ones? Yeah. So far, the voting has been going on perfectly well. Before I left right. the Revolution Center, we had over 86 percent. Okay. Where did you vote? Who have voted. I don't Greater vote Accra. special delegates. Oh, okay. okay. I, I was You'll be monitoring. To, to Central Region yesterday, but okay. um, as you said, you had to bamboo me and pulled me to go yeah. to stay here and do some media work. Very important. Which um, I think you are happy about because yeah, definitely yeah, once I'm here and discussing things with you, you are glad. <laughs> so I would say that yes, over 86 percent had voted. It looks quite good. And then, uh, I mean, we are believing to get a uh, majority of the uh, over 90% that will be voting, ah, casting their votes. That's your target? Yes. Our, our target is to get majority. Okay. Yeah, once we get majority, we are okay with Oh, you're it. talking about the people who voted so far. Well, more yeah. than 90% oh, okay. yeah, have voted. More than 90% right. who have voted. We, right. we are believing to get majority of it. Okay. And that alone is a clear sign for us mm. because um, victory is ahead. And mm. once victory is ahead, it's a starting point okay. to doing anything. Um, definitely in elections, you get people using emotional um, intelligence and other things to try and bamboo their way. You get people who, <clears throat> because they know that they couldn't perform, they'll find any way and any means of accusing everybody apart from themselves right. from um, um, saying that, yes, um, we would have won if not for this A, B, C, or D. Mm. In elections, everything happens. And we expect people to brave up and say that, okay, if this has happened, what steps do I take? Right. But not immediately rush on TV or media and come and say that, oh, and this person is doing this or this person is doing that. Right. Because when people start doing that, mm -hmm. one, I see it as a defeatist approach. Right. Two, I see that you see yourself as a loser and mm -hmm. so you want to blame everyone apart from yourself. So I expect that once we are in a competition, okay. Forget about whatever anyone is doing. Your focus is to make sure that you block every loophole from people rigging you, block every loophole from anything going wrong, right. and you make sure that you focus on getting your number, your percentage that you aim at right. getting. Mm. And that is exactly what you are doing as a Baumia team. But he says and his agents have been beating, and agents, agents have been harassed. Which That's agent what he said. has he, been beating? Himself and Yao Baumia are complaining of saying, uh, what's the name, uh, Kennedy Pong. And he blamed and the vice it. president for that. So the, the vice president. president sent people to go and beat your agent? That is why I say that you know when you are when you want to lead people, you show a high level of uh, acceptance of certain things and uh, evaluating I before you, you want come. To be charitable. There's a word. Yes, you want to use, there was but, a word yeah. I wanted to use, but you know, <laughs> sometimes too, when once you're on media, you should also be careful of yeah, what you use because yeah. he's a senior brother. Right. I can't use derogatory words on him. I, I should be very very circumspect. I agree with, with that. What I say. I agree with that. Because anything I say against him. It's against the party. Right. He's a party member. And anything I say against and that's how I expect him to also behave. So he's Listen, an exercise yeah, patient. Yes. You want to lead. If you let emotions carry you, before maybe you come out and come and say, I'm sorry, then I think there is a problem. Right. Because people will come and say all sorts of things. And earlier on, one of your sister stations, I used an example. If I'm doing uh, or I'm going to carry out elections and I go to a Ganamse place and they tell me that, oh, when the people come, they come and arrest N NDC people and leave MPP people to do Ganamse and you also believe in that, then I have a problem with you as a leader. Because you should know that everywhere you go, people use emotional intelligence to beat you. Right. So as a leader, you should also know how you carry 
or you accept certain information right. and carry it out. Yeah. And that is what I expect every leader to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the truth. I will sleep and wake up any day and tell you that my leader, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is on top of 100% point on that. When you come and tell him something, he won't rush and come and talk. He needs to do his investigation. He needs to make sure that what the information he's getting is right okay. before he will take steps in making sure that, um, that's, um, what do you call it? Uh, right. And as you can see in your short yeah. um, counting as it has begun, it's it's uh, after the party, one. We closed fact, at the, one. So. the electoral commission, of course, the parties work with the electoral commission. They mentioned, they told us that at 1 p.m. counting will start and we can see that the counting has begun. Sure. And this is the, the moment. NPP head office. This is the moment. This is for the MPP head office. Head office and so yeah. we're very soon going to be, we're going to be finding out who is winning and who, well, not winning, but who is number one, number two, number three, or the first five as far as this particular place is concerned. Yes. Um, at, yeah, so I, yes, I was landing. Let me, quickly, let me, okay. let me oh, learn yeah, quickly. Please, please so um, leadership entails a lot of things. Leadership entails a lot of psych. Leadership entails a lot of um, management of emotions. And as a leader, you don't just come out and vet your anger on anything you hear, say, or do. Um, I believe that my senior brother in the future would try and get PRs around him mm -hmm. to do some of the stocking because as a, as a candidate or as a person who is part of the team who is going to be elected and basically we, uh, he's part of, we believe that he is part of the front runners. So um, we are expecting that he should get people who will talk on his behalf. Right. And when he goes to vote, he steps back and do his, he can do his background work okay. whilst people speak on behalf of him right. and not showing your face every time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it's leadership with delegation. Okay. I don't think it's right. All right. And uh, you want to add something quickly? Yeah, as my For brother, me. yes, because I don't see why you should say that he's being emotional. Because Yabuabi and Samuatu was emotional. Mm. In Kumasi, there are some resistance. So it means that there's something oh, going... Oh, a game of emotions. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Some, some uh, resistance there, there's from Kumasi, and I'll show you the resistance where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah, well, wherever it's coming from, there is a resistance. It's our camp that they are resisting them from voting. But you haven't shown emotions. No, I am saying that once somebody shows emotion, then it means that there's something going on that the person is not happy with. The way the person exacts their resistance, you cannot dictate it to that person. Right. Okay. So, you get me? You cannot dictate it because he knows the extent of what is going on. And if he or she reacts in a certain manner, I do not think that anybody should fault the, the person because the person is going to be a leader. Perfect. Do, do you get me? The person is upset. The, 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 the reaction of Yabuabia Samoa in one camp and Honorable Kennedy, a Japan in another camp, are very synonymous. <laughs> see, so how is it that two people from different camps okay. have a synonymous reaction to a situation that is going on on the ground? Thank you very much. So you, you wanted, you, you you wanted some dictate. answer or reaction from that? No, I don't, but I just want no, to tell you, you wanted that, to know. that so you don't I'm, have to dictate. I need, I need to you, give you, you a response to that. that. If you're prepared to lead, then you must work on yourself. I am saying that. That's the point. Do you agree? Are you telling me? Do you agree? A leader, you to lead, a leader, then you must work on please, your. A leader, a leader is a human being. On your temperament, being. yes. A leader is a human being. Mm. And a leader can be angry. A leader can be upset. Yeah, but how you show it? De depending on what is going on on the ground, I'm saying that two people mm -hmm. from different Out camps. Out of 10. Huh? Two people. Out of 10. Mm, from the same different camps are emotional about a situation. Mm synonymous actions concurrently. No. Your point is their reaction to tell you how serious the matter yes, is. Yes, okay. so you cannot, won't just so you cannot the dictate it. Okay. Maybe there are people who are even not happy with what is going on. Mm. But they cannot come out the way these two have come out. Okay. But I mean somebody comes out in a certain manner. Mm. You cannot dictate. Okay. Because it depends so, on what the person has. He is there to win. Yeah. So if there is an impediment being put in his or her way, to win the person will react okay good so now let me explain to her because she wanted to understand some of these things one when we are saying you said that kennedy japan a candidate as against Bobby and Samoa, a pr person for alan mm. alan did not react that is what i expect him to do right you see you let your people talk that on one, your you behalf oh. how he does it well nanaya no, no, see, nanaya you sometimes can't. you see no 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 let us let us let us let us be circumspect on how he, 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 we he, want he, no, he, nanaya, he, he, he has an opinion debut nanaya. you have your opinion don't you and i'm responding to your opinion don't respond to my i am because you asked me a question and i'm telling you what i'm explaining 
Michael. Okay. Oh, you can go okay. to him and okay. come. Michael, please come in. Yeah, Michael, please come in. Ah. Yeah, you get it. And I think if you when are we to cheat attempt him, to go come. behind the reaction yeah. or what may have influenced the reaction okay. and the manner in which he reacted, mm -hmm. I'm sure it may not be a simple case of uh, someone thinking that the agent had been... Uh, you know, this whole issue about ah. establishment candidate, this whole issue about the system favoring a particular candidate, this... A number of issues, confluence of factors may come in to even influence how you react over right. a simple issue. You get it? So it will be very simplistic to suggest that, no, as someone who would want to be president, then there is a standard or a particular way in which there may be a lot of things happening. But I agree that emotional intelligence is key. Mm. But again, going behind the reaction to really on earth, there is a lot going on, as we are all seeing now. A lot right. going on. Mm -hmm. So... All right. The results have started trickling in. Sorry, the results have started trickling in. And let me, let me just quickly do this. Um, so we have the results for the Upper West. So MVP Superdelegates Conference, Upper West Region. Kennedy Ohini Ejipong had two. Kennedy Ohini Ejipong. Confirmed. Two. Confirmed. Yeah, well, this is coming from our reporter on the ground who was there when the counting was done. So this is provisional results. Let me put it this way. Right. And then we have Alan Kojo Chermanting. He had four. Alan Kojo Chermanting, four votes. Akoto, Dr. Efri Akoto, three votes. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, 23. That's Upper West. Dr. <laughs> Mahmoud Baumia, 23. And I'm going to repeat it. So in case you just joined us, the, the voting has ended, counting is underway, and we have some of the results. We have that of Upper West, so please pay attention. Upper West, Kennedy Japan, two. Kennedy Japan, two. Alan Kojo Chairman Teng, four. Dr. Efri Akoto, three. Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, 23. Sport Ballot, one. Sport Ballot, one. So. And the rest? And the rest. The rest Zero. not out yet. That, it means well. No, it means they, they, they didn't get anything. It means they didn't yeah. get anything. Okay. Yeah. It means they didn't get so anything. These are the first five. Yeah, that's it. So Akoto, I said, is three. Mahmoud Bamiya, 23. Alan Chairman Ting, four. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Japan, two. Mm -hmm. So here it's we are. Uh, yes, that's yes, that's that's the it means the rest, the sport ballot is one. It means the rest got nothing. Got nothing. Yeah, the rest got nothing. Because there's nothing okay. uh, attached so to the end. You see, yeah, with, with with this, definitely. Okay, um, and, and, and let me, let me and also my say that was the talking WhatsApp about. line. Sorry, the WhatsApp line is um, because a lot of you have been asking me to, you know, to, to advertise. So it's zero two four four three zero two four 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 three two four nine eight zero two four 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 three two four nine eight. So that's the WhatsApp line uh, for you, the viewer, to also contribute and let us know what you think about. Um, the Super Delegates Conference, if there's any issues that you want to bring to your draw or bring to attention, please let us know. Yes, so that's it. So 0244-432-498. That's the WhatsApp line. Please go ahead. I'm happy my region. I just saw my region's own. Central okay. region. Central is out. Well, won't take it from a politician. We'll, we'll no, temporal. I can, I can <laughs> just mention temporal you, anyway. Okay. Yeah. 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 Once, once doctor, once doctor is leading the idea, you get it. You get it. Why are you easy? It will, yeah. You get it. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. once doctor is leading there, I'm okay. Because, yes, you're making a point. Her candidates, her candidates, Predicted 80%, and that is what is causing all candidate? this case. Okay. Uh, Bruhaha okay. over there in who Central Region. Right. He predicted 80% for himself. <laughs> but who is my candidate? It's Kanai Tok. He said my candidate. Your candidate. Your candidate. Kennedy is your candidate. Your candidate. Kennedy is your candidate. Please, let's focus. I beg you. Let's focus. 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 Let's you have a point, and I mean, leadership is leadership. Leadership comes with a lot of qualities. Written and unwritten. Right. And you have to be very, very careful about how you portray yourself as leading. Right. Because they expect so many things from you. Mm -hmm. Some they will tell you directly, some they will not tell you. Yeah. But everybody sits back and watches how you behave as a mm -hmm. leader. Mm -hmm. And that should portray in the type of leadership you want to present mm -hmm. for the next um, generation. Okay. Whatever happens, I don't want to show a leader or a presidential candidate mm -hmm. who is very, very, very... Uh, emotional 
about so many things. Right. I wanted to use the word, but I've corrected it to say okay. emotional about so many, many mm. things. Yeah, you have something, an adage you say in Fanti. I have pinning your mante mante. Right. It's not for nothing that the leader or the, uh, the elders use that adage. Sometimes as a leader, you pretend as if you haven't heard certain things to okay. watch and see mm. what is going on. Right. There are so many things that have gone on in this um, lead up to the elections. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, if we are going to take everything one by one, mm -hmm. Dr. Baumia should be the first person who should be complaining. Right. But he, every time we meet, all he tells us is that let us keep focus. Let us not lose sight of whatever we are up to do. What we need to do is to make sure that we are hitting the ball at the right time. Okay. Let us not respond to people because people will say things to distract okay. you. Alfred, let me just say, let me just do this quickly. My understanding is that when I advertise the, the WhatsApp line, some of you are rather calling instead of sending messages. Please, it is not a call line. I beg you, send, type, type whatever you want to say. Type it so that we can read. Don't call the line. Please don't. Please don't. Because when you call, you, you disrupt us. Please just type the message and then we'll read it to um, the hearing of the public. Um, Africa, can I move on to somebody else? I think you've made your point about okay, you know, okay, what is expected okay. of a leader oh, the, and oh, so on and so forth. Um, no, he's not, well, no, we're not allowed to read it. He's a politician. No, we're, 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 we're still... I have plenty here, but yeah. you will not yeah, take well, it No, we'll take it from a politician. I mean, sometimes <laughs> you have to take But my region, <laughs> right. I'm happy doctor is leading. No, that's fine. Because we'll, that's we'll, my region. We'll find out soon. We'll find that's out soon. That's my region. And I'm glad. Yeah, so I don't know whether you have any quick... Because I have a specific question. I don't know whether you have something you want to say. Or I should go ahead with my... Oh, well, um, okay. I, think, I think the gentleman and the lady and the gentleman over there has okay. dealt with this uh, emotional what about issue that goes on. Okay. Um, he thinks that some of the, you know, the Alan Kam has overreacted. They should have been a bit more measured uh, because the hallmark of leadership um, is also to be, you know, to, to, to work on your temperament or to be, to manage your temper. And so... He, does, he, 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 he's not, he doesn't have an issue with the Alan Kam because he feels that, look, Yababi Asama is spokesperson. He can overreact, so yeah. to speak. But in the case of Ken, he thinks that Ken could have done better with the way he overreacted. I don't know whether you have a, yeah. an opinion. That is his opinion. I All respect right. his opinion very much because, okay. uh, of course, you don't want a leader who will just hear something and then jump out and, you know, and react before. Okay. Thank you. But, of yeah. course... Uh, we have we had a leader in this nation for 19 years who just reacts and then just bust out and then. But he was a military man. He's a military man. Oh, you can understand him. You know? No, but he's a human because, being. Well, that's true. Mm? Uh, okay. <laughs> At some point, he didn't react. <laughs> well, I agree with. You. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get the point you're making. You see. Yeah. So um, I, I don't have much to say about okay. it. You see, because we all know the the person. Kennedy yes. at your points, yeah. you know, and so he 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 reacts right. on issues, okay. right? Okay, and then he comes out to speak his mind, whether you agree with him or not. You just speak it and whoa. Right. So um, that's all I have to you say. Have to say. Okay. So far, you've seen Upper West um, the Upper West results. Do you have any quick comments to make? Well. Um, I mean, so long as the election is peaceful, mm. so long as there's nothing hanky panky. Was it the kind of results you're expecting? It is. Alan is for uh, Barbara 23. Oh, yeah. oh and I, some I, of the results that I come yet to confirm, it, it's beginning to look like the stretch. No, the I told you is, that we are dealing with an elite group. Right. So and the elite group will have their mentality yeah. where they have to go. Mm. So I cannot. <laughs> I'm going to get up and challenge these results. Right. You understand me? Okay. It, so basically, you anticipated it. You said? You anticipated it. What's for you is important is that you have to be, you have to be part of the five, the first five. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know whether... Abdallah, can I go ahead and read the results that you sent to me? Because if... All right. All right. So I have that of Central Region. So Central Region results are coming out. Kennedy Ejipong had 19, Central Region, 19, 19 for Kennedy Ejipong. Baumia had 25, Central Region. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting. That's the same thing you have, okay. Baumia had 25 from Central Region. And Alan pulled four, four votes from the Central Region. Akoto Efriye pulled three. 
Akotui free three. So Kennedy Japan nineteen, Bamia twenty five, Alan four, Ekoto or Akoto a free three. That's central region. Okay. Let's now go to Volta. Now, when you don't hear me mention the name of any candidate, it means the person got zero. That, that's what he means, you know, because you don't have anything, so there's, there's nothing attached to your name. Let's now go to the Volta region. Now, Volta region, Ken polled four. Ken, Ejapon, four votes. Alan, four votes. DMB, Dr. Mahmoud Bamia, 29. 29 for Dr. Mahmoud Bamia. Let's now go to Bono East. Bono East, Kenejapon, six. Alan, three. Akoto, three. Baumia, 22. 22 for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Northeast, I'm told Baumia pulled everything. Everything, he's got, he got everything. So he's, the only person whose name is there is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. That's what I have. That's what I have. Now, but these are provisional results. And so, um, where is that? Provisional results, like you can see, if we put it out there, provisional results from Upper, Upper West. I've run you through that already. We'll, we'll show you that of uh, Volta region. We'll show you that of um, Bono East and so on and so forth. So here, yeah, this is where we are. Um, uh, okay, so, well, so these are the results that we have so far <laughs> coming in. Now, let's not look at Savannah region. Savannah region, Kennedy Ejepon, seven. Kennedy Ejepon, seven. John Alan Chermantin, one. John Alan Chermantin, one. Joe Gatti, zero. Kojopoku, zero. Efria Koto, zero. Kwabune Ejepon, zero. Francis Adainimo, zero. Kofi Kunedo Apreku, zero. Chairman Ting Boaching Ejako, one. Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, 19. Rejected, one. Okay. Do I need to go over again? Savannah Region. Savannah Region. Kennedy Ejepon, seven. John Alan Chairman, no, sorry. John Alan, yeah, John Alan Chairman Ting, one. Joe Gatti, zero. Kojopoku, zero. Efria Koto, zero. Kwabune Japan, zero. Francis Adainimo, zero. Kofi Kunedo Apreku, zero. Chairman Ting Boache Janku, one. Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, 19. Rejected, one. That's Savannah region. Oti region. I'm going to read that shortly. Oti region is loading. Oti region. Kennedy Ejepong, five. Kennedy Ejepong, five. Alan, six. Jogate, zero. Kojopoku, one. Dr. Akoto, two. Kwabneje, Japan, zero. Adainimo, zero. Dr. Preku, zero. Ejako, zero. Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, 16. 16. So I'll go over again. Uti region. Honorable Kennedy Okumpreku, Ejepon, five. Alan Kwejo, John Alan Kwejo, Chiramating, six. Jogate, zero. Kwejopoku, one. Dr. Akoto, two. Kwabuna Aje, Japan, zero. Adainimo, zero. Dr. Preku, zero. Ejako, zero. That's Boache Ejako. And then you have Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, 16. So that's from the OT reading, Special Electoral College Election. So these are the, these are the results we have so far. Yes, these are the results we have so far. We have more to come. And, um, well, so you can see central region results being displayed on your screen. So for those of you who probably didn't hear me or you're just joining us for the first time, this is what we have. Yeah? This is what we have. All right. So, hmm, it's interesting. Right. So we are waiting for the other results. In fact, some of them are trickling in, but until I get the green light from my producer, I'm, never, I'm not going to read it. Yeah, so I'm read it and waiting for my uh, producer to send me. And uh, yeah, so Mr. Mr. Dugan is from the Allen Camp. Now, what do you make of what what so far is strictly? You said it's not surprising. No, no, it's not surprising. It's purely an administrative process. 
Um, what is but when I look at the results that have come through so far, it looks like the third so, position which class. looks like well, well the one? first three, well, the second and third position looks a bit competitive now. If you look at the results that are coming in, you know, because in some cases Alan is getting four, uh, Ken is getting three. In some cases, quite Ken is getting four, Alan is getting three. It, it looks, it looks a bit, a bit, um, yeah, yeah. To react to. Um, and, and, and Alfred or, or Nanea? No, 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 no. Uh, Mutala was saying okay. certain things. I okay. just want to react. Um, because he said it here, okay. I think it's related. You know, he was talking about unemployment figures okay. being very high in this country. Mm. But if you look at the statistics... Oh, I thought we've gone past that now. Now, now no. We're, no, we're talking about the results that are coming. We're analyzing. No, we've gone past that now. <laughs> okay. Anyway? All right, my Those final are general comments. governance issues. Okay, yeah. my final comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my final, final comments. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm. Yeah, so I'll come back to you on this. All but, right. Yeah, so um, we, you know, when Nanaya was talking earlier, she mentioned about the fact that when you look at the messaging, okay, um, okay. All right. So we have the Bono. Well, okay. So I mentioned, I talked to you. Well, I run, you, I run the Bono results by you. We'll not put it on the screen. The Bono. provisional results by the Bono. Now, we're saying this is provisional because it's yet to be certified or confirmed by the Electoral Commission. And the Electoral Commission, Six. Um, the final results will be declared yeah. by the Electoral Commission or the Electoral Commission's headquarters, I believe so. Three, yeah. three. Okay. So, uh, but how do you... How, they, they're collating all these per regional basis. Per, per regional they're basis. <coughs> to the, it's a strong room. So any presidential candidate announced by the Electoral Commission the Electoral itself. Commission, yeah. So when they collate there, mm. they'll finish and then announce it and come and declare right. the winner at their party head office. Yeah. That's how it's done. Right. Yeah, you declare. Yeah. But I mean, it's well, a competition. It's an internal, it's an Once it's a competition, no, no, no. it's a competition. No, no, the five are winners. No. Good. You I'm declare, happy, I'm happy this matter you come declare out. as it is. I'm five. Happy this yeah. matter five five, yes. five okay. will come no, out. I'm but I mean, I'm saying I'm happy this matter So you are declaring the five. No, yes, yes, the five I'm happy this matter come out. There was, a, there was an issue Mr. Dugan raised. Mm -hmm. um, it may look like. It, it, may, it may look like it may not necessarily be that necessary. It may not be that necessary now. But we still, I would like to pick your thoughts yeah. on it. He raises a very interesting point about the superdelegates uh, conference, and yes. he thinks it's is undemocratic. No, he didn't say it is undemocratic, but he says, says it defeats it's, it's the defeatist. Purpose. That's the word he what used. Purpose? Now that his reasoning is simple: that you have expanded the electoral college because you want more and more people to come in. You don't want this elitist kind of thing where few people just go and sit sure. somewhere. Depending on how much resources you have, you sure. can you know influence them and manipulate them for them to vote for a certain candidate. And so you've expanded the electoral college. Now, if you've expanded the electoral college, why do you close it? And then say, let's go back to the expanded one again. Because, for instance, he talks about this one, 961. It will be easier for you to whip people into line, whether monetarily or using the moral swishing or using the, you know, the, the, um, uh, 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 the state machinery, etc., to whip people into line. Because the numbers are not that huge. Okay? And like he said, that's why we're beginning to see the... Okay, where, so he said, that's why we're beginning to see the kinds of outcomes that we're seeing. But in the bigger, the wider... In, uh, how do you call it? Uh, within the wider delegates, you know, space, you, you can't, you can't do that. And so he thinks that it, it makes nonsense of what the party has been okay. doing by expanding the electoral college. I okay. don't know where, where, so where, where you stand. Let me this. let me come in on this one. Okay. First, I needed to correct the first. Um, this then, it's not you don't declare one particular winner. You are declaring the five who made it to the next stage of the elections. So it's the five that will be declared, and then the other five they would have to step aside. Before we went into an expanded okay. college, what were we doing? These were the same things we were doing. That is the super delegates. Right. They were the people who were electing a presidential candidate. Okay. So we saw it that, listen, let's widen it up and okay. add more people so to it. So very interesting, and very interesting. Ashanti, um, okay, so let's look at the party headquarters. Yeah? yeah? The party headquarters. The results have just come up from the party headquarters. And okay, anyway, so... Kennedy, <laughs> Ken Ohini Ejepon, 32. Ken Ejepon, 32. Alan Kwejo Cheremanting, 25. 25. Jogate, 1. Kwejo Poku, 0. Kwejo Poku, 0. Ousu Efriye Akoto, 2. Kwabena Ejepon, Three, 
Francis Adainimo, six. Ousu Efri Akoto is two. Kwabina Japon is three. Francis Adainimo is six. Kofi Kunido Apreku is zero. Boache Jakon is zero. Mahmoud Bamia, 107. Dr. Mahmoud Bamia, 107. So that, there we go. Do I need to read it again? So one, one, one more time. Kennedy, Ken Ohine Japon polled 32, and this is the party's headquarters, MPP headquarters. Now that's not the headquarters. I mean, we're not, it's not necessarily, that when we say the party's headquarters, we're not saying the, the party's functional or national, no. The different, different people who have, uh, exactly, uh -huh. aha, that's a very important, yeah, uh, yeah, right, uh, right. Uh, other, other right. So, uh, Kennedy Japan pulled 32, mm -hmm. Alan Kojun Chiromanting pulled 25, Joe Gatti had one, uh, Kojopoku zero, Osui Fria Koto is two, Kwabana E Japan is three, Francis Adanimo is six, Kofi Kunedo Apreku is zero, Boache Jakun is zero, Mahmoud Bamiya is 107. So, that's from the party's head quarters right so here we go all right so i think there's a point uh you were the one on the floor you were on the floor oh okay you're responding okay oh you are responding to okay so now the, we started with the special delegates who were the normal people who went to vote for the presidential candidate okay and the party saw it wiser let's say let us increase it and add all the police station executives okay so that is where it so let me read ashanti region there's a lot of oh. interest in ashanti region sorry sorry about that ashanti region but they are good results i see most of them so i didn't <laughs> see the party headquarters. so in ashanti region bomia polled 97 votes 97 votes alan polled 10 votes alan chairman team polled 10 votes kennedy japan polled six votes Efria Koto polled five votes. The rest got zero, 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 zero. Okay, so I repeat it. Bamia, 97. Alan, 10. Kenny Japon, 6. Efria Koto, 5. So the rest got zero, Alan. zero, zero. Yes, Alan polled 10. So that's what we have. Okay, please, your response to him. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what it is. I'm that's trying what it is. to the figure line. out who the fifth person will be. That's what um, it, it's I don't difficult. know whether it's, it's Nemo or another person. Yeah, but it's difficult. Or Joe Gatti. Nemo or Joe Gatti. Yeah. And Boache Jaku has so, one or so, two, one or two somewhere. So you mean there's a keen contest between Adai Nemo and Joe Gatti as to who's, who will be the last and person? And Boache Jaku. The three of them. Uh, well, because, because so far Boache Jaku had six regions. regions. So we have a long way to go. So far, we have six regions. Jaco hasn't got any yet. No, no, Jaco had one somewhere. But what I'm saying. But I've seen some other. Yeah, what okay. I'm saying so, is. Uh, I, know, I think, I think more, six more, votes more is early days, yeah, because we have 16 yeah. Yeah. regions. So, let's, eight, what we cross, yeah, what we cross look, eight, yeah, we'll get a sense. Yeah, trying to look at the pattern. Four, yeah. five. Yeah. That is six, four, six. Eight. Eight. You, have, you have crossed eight. Eight. Right. You have crossed eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have. Oh, we've crossed eight. No, no. Um. Uh. Eight. But then. You haven't crossed it. Yeah, I don't have eight. Okay, no, no, no. We have six. No, no. The headquarters added. Had to be eight. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, we yes. just remove the headquarters from there, and we okay. are looking at the regions. Yes, 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 so yes, we have yes. seven regions. We have seven regions. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So fine. now they added the other five mm -hmm. to make it. Then we had the seventeen people who went. That was in two thousand and eight. Yeah. Seven. And seventeen. Two thousand and seven. Two thousand and seven. Sorry, 17, I mean two thousand eight presidential yeah. election, but two thousand and seven. And then we had to go to Congress yeah. to see that, listen, we don't want a whole number of people coming on the ballot paper every time. It doesn't speak well of the party. So we need to do a special Congress to narrow it down to five, which the Congress, that is the highest decision-making body of the party, approved. That's the National Congress. They approved it and said that, yes, let us use the special delegates to prune it down. Then we go to the second segment, that is the... For the final oh yeah but i mean national congress once it's decided and approved who am i who am i to you but to the party to the party they needed to do that to the party they needed to they needed to prune down and that is what they did and they decided on it if on the, on, on hindsight now we think that listen 
let us maybe do interviews, let us look at certain, let us look at certain criteria to prune it down instead of going for an election, you can also look at that. But as, as a party, once things are coming up, you evolve and you try and change certain things to suit the dynamics of the present day. That is why a party like NDC, when they went and they did it, an open ballot, and they realized it wasn't going to help them, they came back and said, no, we cannot let every Cardberry member vote. The next one, they had to close it. They had a closed circuit one. And so you always look at the challenges that you face and then um, see how you can evolve it. And I think it's in a step in the right so you direction. Say you, so you disagree with uh, Mr. Dugan that... Uh, no, I mean, it's, once it's come up, I mean, everyone... The can take a second look. Yes, a second look. It's, I wouldn't shut it down that it's defeatist. I would yeah. say that we are always trying to make sure that we update ourselves with new things. Do you, agree with, those who say, do you agree with those who say, statistically, it is possible for somebody to emerge six, the sixth person, but may not qualify for this, and yet may go to the, 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 the larger... Pool. I do not, I do not and agree, do, and I do, do not and agree do well. with that. Why would I say that? Mm. If you are able to go to 200 and, uh, 220,000 delegates, delegates, and you campaign, mm. and they buy your message, when you are doing 971, you should be able, or 955 now, you should be able to at least convince them to get a sizable number. Okay. You should, you, you see, Elections is about your message you sell, how you present yourself, and what you are bringing on board. It's about the individual and the message. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, well, I'm equivalent of regions. Okay. The ballot paper would have, the ballot paper would have a space without any candidate at all. And so, if a voter. If, if, you don't, if you don't like any of them, mm -hmm. then you vote for that space, actually. Um, no, no. What, what, that means is that, what that means is that the ordinary voter is not only restricted to these limited options, but they see voting as a statement. And so, for instance... No, no, I'm coming. And so, for instance, with this superdelegate conference thing, I am sure there are others at the base, like Moro is saying would want to register a statement. But unfortunately for them, the five have been kicked out. So they wouldn't get the opportunity to vote for any of the five that may be kicked out of the, I mean, flowing from definitely, the super Definitely. Out of the 10, you'll get someone who has a cousin, a brother, or a sister who would want to vote for them when you go to a bigger platform. Once the number increases, you should know that you always get someone who will get even one. Here, you are getting people who are getting zero. But once the number increases, you get, definitely get someone who will get one, you get someone who will get ten, mm -hmm. you get someone, but the pattern will be the same. Okay. The pattern will be the same. Right. Mabaku, please go ahead and tell us what, so far, if you look at the seven regions that have come out, plus what we saw, uh, the results that have come out from the party headquarters, what, you, what sense do you make of it? Do you, <laughs> it's, is, it, it's, is, it, is it what you'd say? It's well, not surprising at all. It's not surprising at all. No, no, not at all. It's not. Okay. But the gap, and, isn't, it, isn't it very wide? Isn't it? Isn't it um, Curiously wide. Well, that equally may not be surprising because okay. when you look at the electoral college for this particular elections, clearly, if the whole thinking about establishment preference is anything to go by, largely those voting in terms of their proximity to the corridors of power is very, very close. And so whatever the establishment thinks, I'm sure many would want to go by that direction. And so it's not surprising at all. I mean, you have five, of course, in March as those that will go for the November 4th uh, election. I mean, from now until November 4th, how, for instance, the party is going to uh, solve these issues that we already seen, I mean, the misunderstandings, the trust issues, it's a major thing because you have just uh, September, October, two, three months, to do proper reconciliation of sort because people are having issues with the processes. Right. And this whole thinking that there is an establishment uh, a preference, mm -hmm. which indeed we can all attest to per our observations. And so for me, that's a major hurdle the party ought to cross, how you basically ensure the, not necessarily the losing side, even those who would be, be kicked out, they equally have a role to play as far as the 4th uh, November elections because they have a support base, the okay. main, mm. at the base, which the others would be hoping to rely on them. So how the party resolves the conflict that may come out as a result of this superdelegate co conference 
is a major, major thing for the party to handle going to the, the, the November 4th. Should the, the, should, the, should the losers, after the um, results are declared, should the losers throw in the towel because if the numbers we're seeing is anything to go by, and if you want to go with a school of thought that the numbers and indication of what is likely to happen in November 4, and as the majority leader, Chairman Sabunsu, has said, anybody in his view, and if, if it gets 60, 65, 70%, it's game over. I mean, for anybody who attempts to contest even in the November 4. Well, so, so this, actually, this, this actually brings us to my earlier point I made that electoral processes could actually be outcome determinative. Okay. So the processes by themselves can actually determine the outcome of an election. Okay. And so some may say, yes, of course, whoever emerges the victor or whoever leads among the five, and depending on the margin, it's, it's, it makes political sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, others will begin to even raise issues of cost that we are going to another election. And so all these legitimate reasons will come to bear now. And so if you still want to have the election on uh, November 4th, being part of the five, but... Of course, either the second, third, fourth, or fifth, then you'll be like standalone kind of guy. Uh, everybody say, ah, but he's won. Look at the margin. Let us allow peace to reign. Uh, we, we want us to go and spend this huge amount of resources on November 4th. Why don't we? Like it happened in the in, in University of Ghana, I think, with the same MPP uh, National Congress in 2007 or, right. or so. Good. So, mm. and others keep saying that, listen, this could have been carefully planned. Deliberately so, such that when the establishment produces their preferred candidate, quickly we move into that mode where such arguments are advanced to kill even the November 4th uh, elections. And let's, Charlie, give it to the, the, the winner so he leads the party. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, with, uh, with the point you say, and I keep on hearing this then over and over and over candidate. the establishment candidate. What is the establishment? The establishment is MPP. So if you tell me that one candidate is an establishment candidate, then that candidate is liked and wanted by the party people and the grassroots. You know, when... Yeah, yeah. It is not NPP. It is MPP. No, no. So you would construe that to mean NPP. But when we say establishment candidate... We are talking about the president. I mean, the nucleus. The there is always precisely. In fact, even within the executive, even within the executive, there's a nucleus. It happens mm -hmm. in every political setup. Okay. We can't run away from this. Now, let me let me give you let me give you a bright example that happened when I was in school. When we were in school, we usually would not learn. Then we would go out, and when exams comes, then you see that Wesley girls have got a quadruple A's and all those things. And you know what we are always saying? We are blaming it on a poor, that the yeah, at that time, school, Sylvia so Boy, that. who was the registrar at uh, Waik, because she went to Wesley Girls, was giving them a poor. So my mom went to head Wesley Girls, and I went there one day. I saw the way they were went, learning, and I told myself that if in my school we had a quarter of the way these people were learning, I'm sure we would have done A's in all our subjects. Mm. You see, so you can have a perceived or conceived mind. When you come down to the work that Dr. Baumia put in for this Congress, he didn't see it as just any ordinary thing to Alfred, select. coming to your, I'm own, coming. Scenario. I'm your coming. own scenario. I'm coming. Let me, let the me learn. The SHS you level. Mm -hmm. You go to the school, you see mm -hmm. the way they are learning. Some mm -hmm. have uh, their labs, some have uh, mm -hmm. structures. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they take advantage of what they have. What they have. The structure. Thank you. And it's so, okay. And if you do that, and you're going to call that because uh, maybe someone has learned and has succeeded, you will say that that person is supported by maybe a person who worked or went to that school and is at that office, I have a problem. Mm. Learn no. and get it. I disagree. When I was going around with a doctor, it got to a point I asked that, what are the other candidates doing? Alan Chamantin resigned in January of this year. He didn't start his campaign till around May, June. You can't blame it on doctor that he has started his campaign and had gone wrong. Before he started his campaign, he had met key people and I've spoken to them. Those key people are voters in the special delegates. If he's gotten it, and those key people have influence in their constituency, if it translates to votes, the person has worked for it. Mm. If an establishment supports you, and we have a bright example that happened in 2007, where Alan was assumed as an establishment candidate, but when he went to Congress, he lost. 
because he didn't work he assumed he was an established candidate but here is someone who doesn't sleep day and night and is on the road traveling by bus not by official vehicles and all the v8 and things you see yeah, we, we saw but traveling by bus working there. hard dropping from it got to a time i was on one of the buses when it got it broke down because of a bad road he got down and sat in someone's car and they moved him to the place because the people were waiting for him about two hours and he couldn't say that, oh, because my bus is sports, I wouldn't go. So some of us had to trek back whilst he went there to work. And when such a person works and he's getting such results, and he come and tell me that he's an establishment candidate, I would say, yes, he's an establishment candidate because MPP has established him and has made him who he is today. And I support him 100% because this is a hard worker. This is someone who will not come out and say that, oh, I don't have a message. When in education alone, you have this thick book for first four years that you can sell all the projects you've done. And you come and sit down and tell me that I don't have a message. And he is working and he's telling you that, listen, even on top of my head, I have 100 messages I can give you right now to go and sell as a party. I have a problem with you. That is where the problem is. So people should work and stop being, um, trying to um, tag people in certain names. Whether you tag him or not, the Ghanaian people will take a decision. And the decision is that we want someone who is hardworking, someone who believes that we should move Ghana to the next level, someone who understands and appreciates our problems, and that person is the person who we should take him for him to lead this country to the next level that we need. That is the establishment candidate. And he's established by Ghanaians, he's established by MPP, and we will all support him <laughs> to be the right candidate for Ghana. Uh, no, right. To the extent that you conveniently... Now now, um, uh, before no, don't get to the case now. Let me, oh, no, 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 General, no, no, no. what is happening? I get it. I get it. That, Mr. Dugan, yes, please go ahead. Oh, you, have, you have nothing to say about the. No, no, no. I was just, I was just about to ask a, a question. But if you, oh, that's if in the absence of you have anything to contribute to what they've already said, I'll just go ahead. I'll go ahead and ask a question. Well, uh, um, it is, it is quite interesting, mm -hmm. right? That um, yes, we read it already. Yeah, <clears throat> it's quite interesting, right? And um, somebody has got his view of what he talks, what he says about established. And he also has got a wonderful view to talk about established Establish candidates. Establishment candidates. You see, what a minute. You see, um, if, if, if I take his view right, it means that somebody has used the resources he has in where he is to to what they call it, uh, build upon himself. That's a plus, right? You see, what I'm saying that, if I'm taking what you are His definition of establishment, establishment candidate is, yes. It means that mm -hmm. somebody who uses opportunity okay. to use what he finds himself in to, pro to, to, to promote himself okay. is a plus, mm. you see. Because... Um, who would have known Alan if he hadn't been made, uh, let's say, trade, trade minister. minister since Kufour's region? Who would have known him? Mm. He was there. He used the opportunity, yeah. the establishment, to sell himself, yeah. you see. So I think that um, it, it is very good that he's got this huge, uh, what do you call it, um, um, uh, compilation of... Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, resources that we have, and uh, we really, we really need these ones for, for the general election. Mm. You see, and uh, I'm saying this because when we come to, you say you are going to give me time to es express my views on some comments made. You see, and it's built on something like this. Okay. You see, so I think that um, MPP, yes, we have a message. Only that our communicators are not hard enough. Mm. That's. That's why you find the NEC people going round, 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 round. Somebody came and said that the one DC, one factory, only eight factories has been built. Some, somebody also comes to say that uh, uh, government hasn't built any factory. Meanwhile, the, 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 the policy of uh, 1DYF says government shouldn't build a factory. You see? So we, we, we have a message. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is in the next five minutes, we, in fact, we, have, we well, so my session will end in the next five minutes. So there's another team that's coming. Um, and that team, before that team arrives, uh, my very good friend, my colleague Desmond, would walk us through what social media has been saying, what social media has, has been buzzing with as far as today's event is concerned. And that once Des, Desmond is done, um, the next team would, uh, would take over from us.
uh, with another team of um, analysts. So um, let me take your concluding remarks a minute each based on so far how the process has been, what I think has been largely successful, even though there's some results that I'm, not, I'm sure when the next team comes, we'll read the other results, but at least based on what you've seen so far, how the parties conducted the exercise and uh, the results that have come in, you know, so in a nutshell, uh, do you think that it's been largely a good day, a successful uh, event or exercise? Let me start from you, Nanaya, because you haven't spoken in a oh, while. Oh, I think that they've done what they have to do, but right. I mean, this kind of jubilation, I see somebody has won. I think all five of them, they are not, oh, the, the five person is not coming out clear. Yeah, it's not very clear. Yes, but they, they've all won. The first but three. The uh, first three, I mean. Looks more it, apparent. Yes, it's coming out. So I also don't believe that 0 0.48 of the general electoral college should, should make anybody happy. Right. Do you get me? Mm. And it's also like an elitist club that has gone to elect an elite, mm. one of their own. So, I mean, seriously. It's not something to make noise about. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole thing, it's not something to, because it, it was expected. Mm -hmm. that, for instance, Ashanti region, most of them are government appointees. Are you saying most uh, of, but, of but, the MPs, but, but, but yes, yes. Danaya, are you saying that these guys couldn't have opted not to vote for the leading candidate and nothing will happen to them? They could no, have, but I'm they saying could have, that they could have elected if, not to vote if for this him. is your co, yeah. once the person is your co, and even if you don't believe in him? Oh, but that one, it's, it's, a, it's a club. Because 0.48% yes. of the whole electoral college right. of over 200,000 voted. Right. It's not even 1%. Okay. okay. You get me? Right. It's not even 1%. Mm. So even if we use 200,000, and I believe it is more than 200,000, mm -hmm. it's 0.48%. Right. So I don't think it's anything for somebody to celebrate that we have weighed and we have won. Okay. It depends on who is voting. Okay. If they are, the people are um, Dr. Baumier's people, because he's in government, he's been working with the people who have been chosen, a mm. lot of them, mm. members of parliament. So it's is, purely solidarity. Yeah, me and it's I, not. It's not, it's not a, a, an issue of a belief in the person's you, ability. You know, the point is that before um, Alfred came, we were saying something, that they think that it's time mm. to... Um, they uh, bring up a northern, a northern candidate. candidate. Yeah. There's somebody from mm, the north. Mm. So they'll do whatever it takes to also like send a signal. Okay. Because how many people will just break down and look at the number of people who have voted? Okay. So it's just a way to signal to the grassroots that, oh, this is what the people want. Mm. They'll be going around talking about it. Yes, he's done well. Yes, amongst his elitist uh, friends. But interestingly, he, was, he himself was predicting about 70, his camp was saying they would get no, what? They said not less than 71%. Not less than 71%. Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. They, that's, so, that's uh -huh. it. Now, it's, it's, it looks like it's almost almost 90. It's almost, yes. So, it looks like it's almost 90. Mm -hmm. So, but that is what it is. Okay. It, 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 it looks like, mm -hmm. yes. So, I mean, the point is that... If mm -hmm. Bamiya hadn't polled, assuming it's 90%, mm -hmm. if Bamiya hadn't polled it's 90%, would you have said he's failed? With, with, based on all the things that have been said, or establishment candidates, he has resources, blah, blah, blah. If he has been able to pull say, 90%. Me, for me, for him, it is not whether he has failed or he has made it. Hmm. Mm? He has a job to do that he has not done. Okay. And for me, it, it's gone that nothing. Is more, that is more important Yeah, that is because you. the economy is in shambles. Okay. And he is the head of the economic management team. So, so, that's so, what you so if I go to market and I buy tomatoes, and I buy whatever, and the price is high, inflation is moving around 44 percent so then it is his name i remember okay that he told me he would make it better for me right about seven years ago okay and it is like this and today he wants to come back personally mm. as a personal agenda to be president okay when we are in, we are in that street all right um so nanea would to it would take leave of us because we've been keeping here for a while uh, we, we we'll be leaving in the next for the next two three minutes or so so i'll give a minute each to everybody um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Michael, uh, uh, I mean, but Michael, if you were delegates, if you were delegates and you saw these numbers, assuming you initially didn't want to vote for Baumia, and you saw these numbers, can this influence you? Can this have some kind of a psychological um, effect of a sort? Well, there is no way one can suggest that the outcome of today's election wouldn't have a bearing or some form of influence okay. on the minds of the delegates it from will? November 4th. It will. Okay. And indeed, I actually see Dr. Baomia campaigning 
on this success actually. Okay. Because this is very instructive for him. Mm -hmm. And because what, these guys could have ditched how, him. How more can you because convince of these guys could have ditched him? Precisely. How more can you convince the base of your party than letting them know that listen, even at the super delegate conference, this is what I got. Okay. The people believed in my message. They believe that I mean, so clearly he would take advantage of that. Okay. But again, it appears as though this trend which is coming up now is making the NDC feel good. And it appears it's going to be interesting. Give me interesting times ahead. Eh? <laughs> okay, I've heard you. Abuza Dugan, concluding remarks. Yeah, he's saying, he's saying that based on what the numbers that have come, it's possible for a delegate to have a change of mind, even if he didn't want to vote for Bamiya, not to vote for Bamiya, because the guy out of 961 votes is polling almost 90-something um, percent. Or you don't think it would have any effect? Oh, you mean, oh, still on the governance issues? Oh, I thought we've gone past that a long time ago. That's, 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 no, I beg you. <laughs> I've gone past that. Because the guy is not even here. Mutala has left. You know. Well, and we're, we're, you know, we're about to wrap up too, so, right. yes, sir. Um, food, but most likely. Okay. You do not have to okay. underrate. Okay. The intelligence. The intelligence of, of the, the delegates. Of, of, of the grassroots. Of the grassroots, okay. And I'll give a striking example. In 2008, Nana won uh, led the first round yes. by 100,000 votes. Right. Right. That's right. the general election. I'm talking about the general election. Yes. Mm -hmm. talk, no, I'm not talking about the primaries. Yes. I'm talking about the general, general election. elections. Yes. And then there was uh, what they call it, a runoff. Yes. And the, f and the first runoff he was beaten, and the third runoff he was also beaten. Yeah. You see. And then he had negative 40 something thousand. Mm hmm. You see, so these days, those at the grassroots cannot be taken for granted. Okay. You know, especially you could be hearing certain things which you say, okay, oh, oh the what they call the elite wants to think for us again. Okay. You see. So I think that um, when the first. You mean this can actually backfire? That's the point you're making. Uh, what, what I want to say is that you cannot underrate the grassroots. Okay. Okay. You know, well, some will feel that, okay, oh, well, this man is popular at the top. Mm. And of course, when I need something, I have to go to the top. Yeah. So if he's popular at the top, yeah, then you should let go. Let me go in a line. Okay. But some people will say, no, let us put somebody who we can relate with. Okay. You understand? Mm. So I feel that. It's not a here nor there. It's not a here nor there. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yes. Um, I know what you say. You think it matters a lot. Everything matters. Yeah, you think it matters Every a lot. Every yeah. single person mm. matters to us. Mm. And that is why we don't take anything for granted. Right. If you tell us that tomorrow we should move to the voters, every single voter matters to us. Okay. And that is what is important in a nation. All right. I would say congratulations to Doc. I think he's worked hard. Mm. And he deserves to be in the first five. Mm. The next phase is not going to be easy for us, but implore on everyone that, mm -hmm. listen, yeah, or food your panel in a piano. A piano. Okay. Yeah, or you'll be dear ye. In a year in the dear so ye. It's worked hard for <coughs> Alex. Let okay. us also work hard for him. Okay. And those who had issues and are better here, I'll tell you that listen, come on board. Let's see. Let's address the issues right. for the next phase. Okay. I don't think this is an internal competition. I don't think our biggest challenge is ourselves. Mm. Our biggest challenge is those out there who can come and destroy this educational material that we have there okay. that we've done for the first four years <laughs> okay. those who have come to destroy the things that we've built over mm. the years those who have seen that there's a global economic challenge okay. but they still blame it on the government those are the things we should be scared so of so your enemy is not within is without yes so focus on it well your the opposition are coming to destroy a legacy okay that has been built as all right upon. all right we work together to take ghana to okay. the next level because okay. listen if you don't come together as a united force yeah the country suffers. All right. Alfred Kojo Thompson is Education. one, or let me say, is, um, is a supporter oh, of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, but also doubles as the, one of the communicators of the party. There's a new patriotic party. He's been with us in the last one and a half hours. Also, let me thank Mr. Christian, Daniel Christian. That's Christian Daniel Dugan. Daniel Christian. Daniel Christian Dugan, yes. A former Deputy Minister of the Kufour regime. Um, he is a supporter of Alan Kojo 
Tramonte, who tells us that the results good, really, oh yeah, <laughs> who tells us that the results, as far as they're concerned, was, was, was anticipated, was predicted, so it matters really not. And then also, Nanea Jantua is the General Secretary of the Convention People's Party, that's the CPP, and she's been with us in the last four hours or so, of more than four, four, four to five hours or so. I want to say a big thanks. And Michael Niabe is a governance and policy analyst, uh, so a governance and political analyst. Uh, he's also been with us um, right from the start of the show. I also want to say a big thanks to Duke Anyemedu, fantastic chap. He's been um, very supportive of us, um, especially when it comes to deploying or scheduling um, communicators from the government or party, government party uh, for us. Duke, thank you so very much for that. So this is the first session. The second session promises to be even more of fireworks. When Annie and uh, Bridget O2 and the rest of the team take over, Desmond is also on standby. He has a lot to share with us as far as social media comments are concerned. And so don't go anywhere. Don't sh uh, move away from this dial. This is Metro TV. This is where to be as far as election coverage is concerned. My name is Aldo Moro. Thanks for watching. See you some other time. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Moro, for that. Uh, we'll be on to bring you a coverage of the... Um, Elections as has been, uh, you know, cutting down the number from 10 to 5. But we're getting onto social media to find out what is trending on social media. We are live on YouTube at Metro TV Ghana. You can join us live on there. Also on Facebook, Metro TV Ghana. And same as Twitter, the hashtag is Election Central. I know that NPP Super Delegates Conference is trending on Twitter. So let's get into it and uh, let's take a look at some of the comments uh, coming in. This is on YouTube. This one, uh, so let me just begin. Frank Dia says that Yabuabina Samoa and complaints. And Kwame Odinga says that, Ken, this is why we can't vote for you. You cannot manage your emotions. And uh, a lot of this <laughs> coming through. That's on the back of the video that came out from the University of Cape Coast campus earlier as uh, Kenny Japan was not happy with what had happened with his agent. And moving on, um, Otibua Tinchao says that um, if this lady is truly an account, then she's part of those who are determined to bring Ashanti's into disrepute, okay? And Anis also tells us that uh, she's watching live from Spain, Sevilla. Thank you so much. And um, James Okai says, Ken is the only one who can salvage us from going to opposition. Simple. Okay, that's what James Okai says. It says that bring Baumia and we are in opposition waiting. Uh, moving on, <laughs> Mohammed Rashid says, this Ken guy cry, who does he think he is? All right. And a lot of the messages on YouTube. So you can join us on YouTube and get to see some of the comments there. You can put that in and later we're bringing all of that to you. And uh, we're moving on to Facebook. And uh, uh, okay, let's do Twitter first. The hashtag on Twitter is election central. You can join in there. So that's our page on Twitter. You can join us there with all of your comments. So let me just quickly go down there and find what some of the... So this one says that NPP Super Delegates Conference, candidate upon arrives at venue to vote, says he will doubtlessly win 80% of the total votes in the central region, irrespective of the intimidation and vote buying tactics. So you see this picture here, that's Rick Cross laughing. So <laughs> I guess the person is just trying to um, laugh. Um, so, I, I mean, Philip, I cannot read this message. I mean, let's just be... Be nice with our comments there. Okay. Someone says that um, a man who can't control his emotions cannot be trusted with power. Emotional intelligence is a prerequisite for leadership. So let me just read some of the comments under that particular video where you have um, Kenny Japon not too happy about what happened on the University of Cape Coast campus. This one says that um, diabolic politics, they... Uh, there's no way they have not done anything to Kennedy. He is not mad to just turn up and make unnecessary noise. Can't we Ghanaians have an election fairly without rigging or cheating? Well, shaking my head there, Opoku Marvin writes that. And uh, this one says that, allow him and nothing to bore past the guys holding him. <laughs> okay, this one says that, Massa, make me think, you, um, you talk, say, if you were the president, the tax on bet should be more than 10%. Take the 20% pain and know how it feels. Okay, so people are uh, just... Uh, okay, this one says that your man hit up sick of to me or power. He wanted to be treated 
like God. See, he vex. Okay. All right. So those are some of the comments. And that, that someone said that this is what you guys did in 2020. Now they take do you and you're crying. Salifu Zachary writing that there. So as you can see in the trends, Kennedy Japan is in there. Baumia is in there. Alan Tremantin is in there. The NPP Superdelegates Conference is in there also. So you can uh, definitely write to us at hashtag election central. Now let's get to Facebook and read some of the comments. This one says that, uh, from Florence says that they took money so they have to show their votes. You guys are all the same. When the party, uh, when your party killed people in Tachiman, you all kept quiet. That's from Florence Zinio. And Shama uh, Edna Benya says that they're just wasting the taxpayers' money. Keke. New Portos party never again. Allah. Okay. This one says that. I'm so happy NDC is not the cause of the confusion in the NPP. Let's sit back and watch them bite each other from within. Okay, so that's on uh, Facebook there. This one says that. Um, Ajumun Sem Flat with the laughing emojis. In Nege Royals writing that on uh, Facebook. Okay, let's move on to some more comments that I um, have coming. This one says that, um, okay, okay. Let me just go down, a lot of them here, okay. Kofi Kondria, this is interesting, says that no party is likely to come out of the NPP. I don't know how he came by that conclusion though, but as the results are coming in, some, some people are not happy. Um, of course, we, we know that uh, Dr. Baumia has a number of the votes from the center, so we'll wait and see how that concludes that James Tetchi says that the man is funny to say Baumia is established by the party and Ghanaians. This liar vice president can't win the 2024 election. And Game Boy says that Massa, what do you expect if all of you are behind him and left the rest alone? Okay, okay, okay. So, those are some of the comments that have come in um, this afternoon with our coverage of the NPP Super Delegate Conference across the various voting centers. So, um, so yes, join us on Facebook, Metro TV Ghana. We are live on there. And, of course, on Twitter, it is hashtag Election Central. Our page also, Metro TV Ghana. And join us on YouTube. We are live on YouTube. Also, my name is Desi Fadi and the Starboy. Uh, we'll be coming in as and when needed to yeah. tell you what is happening on social media. Back to Bridget. Oh, Bridget is here. So, Bridget and Anya seated. Uh, to continue with the rest. Hello, Bridget. Hello, uh, Desmond. Uh, thank you very much. As always, uh, very exciting and interesting perspective on social media. I mean, our social media followers are so active, so opinionated, and straight and forthright uh, uh, with their views. So I'm excited about that. Hello there. So welcome to the evening session or the afternoon session of the super delegate uh, elections. And um, I don't think any, anyone is surprised with the votes coming in. Um, we will be looking at the numbers that we have. It's obvious that uh, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, will win or will be number one in this. But who else would join? Um, posters had pegged Alan Kwejo Chiramantin to be second, but the numbers are not speaking to that. It's likely to be Kennedy Ohini Ejapon, but we will have a centralized uh, uh, results in a bit for all of you who are watching us. But I'm not doing this alone. I'm here with my colleague, beautiful, brilliant uncle Annie Efuampofo, who's here. And also um, our poll star who has been consistent with his poll, <laughs> Musa Danko, who's the executive director for the uh, Ghana, uh, sorry, Global Info Analytics. Annie, introduce and then uh, right, we'll, we'll right, continue. Right. Yes. Really, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's been a long wait for yes. us to uh, yes. uh, wait for Moro to wrap up with the guest. Right. So we're grateful to you as well as viewers. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we're now going to go through with you, analyze the yes. results that has come in. I I'm sure some of you are surprised. <laughs> some of you are happy. Some of you are, I mean, however it is, let's just hope that uh, we can do the analysis and see how we're going to, uh, you know, it's going to pay off in the next uh, proper delegates conference that yes. the party is actually going to have. Yes. And let's see who is going to, you know, be emerging the winner. Okay. So, so far, so good for Dr. Baumia. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the numbers we've seen has been very emphatic. Um, in the Eastern region, in Ashanti region, even in Central region, I think they've been very emphatic. Um, but not surprising, uh, I would say. Uh, I'm not surprised. 
in terms of his numbers or what he's getting. What I'm surprised at is the swapping of the position likely ah. between Kennedy and Japan and Alan Martin. Yes. Okay. So my, my producers just shared um, some results with us, uh, and it's actually coming from the Dr. Mahmoud Baumia Center. They had a coalition center monitoring the results at, as it came in for the vice president. And um, so far, he has about 68.1%. Uh, representing about 629 votes, representing about 68.15 percent, and that's something that uh, Musa Danko would definitely want to speak to. Mm. Second on that very list is um, Ken Oheni Ejapon, a Central Member of Parliament. He had 132 votes, representing 14.30 percent, and third. Uh, is Alan Kwejo Tremante, from a trade minister. He has 95, 10.29%. Third. Fourth is um, Kwejo, uh, Dr. Uh, Kwejo Ousu Efriye, who is a former Greek minister with 36 um, uh, votes. I believe Adai Nima, Nimo, uh, there with nine, same as Bwache Jiako. I mean, so those are, I could only get about five of them. And that's just 0.98%, 0.98%. I mean, naturally. So I want to look at the ranking of it. Mm. Um, there was no doubt in the, in the polls that you had con conducted prior to those elections that um, Dr. Mahun Baumia was going to uh, win or be at the top. Then in the polls, the prediction was that um, uh, Alan Kwejo Tremanting would be second and then third was going to be um, Kennedy or Hine Japan. But in the polls, what we have right now that we have gathered he, they've swabbed. Alan, what is going on here? And 68.1%. Are you surprised by the number of the vice president? Okay, let me first answer your first question. Right. We have not done a poll in the super delegates. Oh, okay. No. Oh, it was in the... It, it was, was, it was, it was, it was, it was in the... It was in the... Great, great, so, so great, got it. That must be made clear. Right. In that uh, June poll that we did for MPP delegates, mm -hmm. it was uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Alan Chiramatin, Kennedy Japan. Uh, Akoto and so, then Jogati. Okay, in that order. order. Right. Yes. So I was expecting the same thing to be repeated today. But then what is shocking for me today is the swapping of position of Alan and Kennedy, mm. which is phenomenal. And now we've shown to you that Kennedy has been the one that has been rising in the polls mm. yes. from April. Right. And if that momentum, continu uh, momentum continues, it means he's always rising. Mm. So from polling perspective, I will not be shocked but surprised that he's overtaking Alan mm. on, on, in, 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 in second place. Then I'm happy that Akutu uh, is there. He's still there, yes. Because Akutu has been somebody who has been saying that we've been keeping him out of the poll for a reason. <laughs> but I'm glad that he's going to make it. Now, mm -hmm. the fifth is person... I, I, think I, or, or I don't know what we have is, uh, I think, Adai Nimo and uh, Boachi Ejakun. Are, are they tied? Or yes, tied at time. Nine, yes, which means votes. that they have to do a runoff between these two <laughs> to, to get them... And, unless they want to say... <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, exactly, okay. Yes. So, so I was expecting Jogati probably if he's out. To come up, right. right. But, I, I mean, uh, my, the biggest news is Kennedy. Right. I'm actually, you know, looking at the July post you served us with. Mm. Yeah. And um, so we were looking at the, a runoff. Right now, we haven't gotten to the runoff point. No, right? no, no. So uh, it was, we have who lead uh, MPP with floating voters. We have who lead MPP, MPP voters. We have who lead, lead MPP, all voters. There should be another one, who leads MPP among MPP voters, voters only. only. Mm. So that's who leads MPP, all voters. That's different. That's different. Who leads MPP? Uh, okay, let's, let's move here. MPP primaries region, MPP voters only. Oh, that's what you that's should be all. looking at. Okay. MPP voters only. So we had um, Ashanti region. We had Baumia 70%. Okay. Alan 17 mm. Uh. uh which one is the A A H R? A half or region. A half a half a region. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a half a region. Mm -hmm. So the half region was when as uh, Baumia was gunning seventy with mm -hmm. Alan seventeen mm -hmm. and uh, Kennedy nine percent mm -hmm. and um, Ashanti region. Uh, Alan no Ken Baumia forty five Alan thirty four um, Kennedy twenty percent mm -hmm. then Brunga half Baumia fifty nine. 
Alan 14, Kennedy 24, for Brongahafu region. What's the result today from Brongahafu? Uh, we don't we don't have that. We don't yet. have the no, breakdown. We don't have that here. What, what we have is the central. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. The central all, population. So all regions combined. Yeah. That's what we have now. Okay. We we are, we have not done regions yet. Uh, okay. What we have is centralized. So national. national. I should say national okay. results. Okay. Yes. That's that's okay. what we have. Okay. Maybe here. so we can look at the breakdown later. Later. So yes. Bono East region we have um, Baumia fifty two, Alan thirty two, um, Kennedy twelve percent. Is it based on his poll? Yes. yes, this okay. was the July, from the July June to July the polls. polls. All right. Then we have Central Region, um, Baumia 45, Alan 39, Ken 16, others 1%. Yeah, and I actually want to see how, I think I saw the numbers for Kennedy, for instance, and he did well in the Central Region. In the Central Region. Region. Baumia, Baumia, Baumia still won. Yes, ultimately. But Baumia still well, won. Well, well, but, and you're not surprised. I mean, if we're even looking at your, your July poll, you put it at 70%. <laughs> The margin of error, it wasn't if it's... Uh, yeah, it was point, almost 1.5%. 1 1 if you're looking at the margin of error, then it will be spot on. And, and also looking at the fact that these are special delegates or special voters who, are, who behave differently from normal delegates. Mm. Explain if, to us why okay. that is, yeah. Be, because, you see, these are selection of very few cream of people who are at the very top end of the party. Mm. National executives regional executives mm -hmm. and government appointees and so on and so right. So these are the best people you can get in the party. And these are the people who are accused of supporting the establishment ab candidates. Ab absolutely. So it absolutely. has to play in that. Absolutely. But what I would be interested to see is if, if we put the, we put the July poll, MPP voters only, yeah. side by side, and do that against what Bamiya is getting. No. Mm -hmm. It will be very interesting to see how it pans out. Because in the, in the report you are reading, you can see that he was winning almost everywhere mm -hmm. yes. within MPP. And that will probably reflect what you saw today. Mm -hmm. But maybe the magnitude of the winning is probably larger in the superdelegate mm -hmm. than it is among MPP voters in the regions. Mm -hmm. okay. The, okay, let's finish it. Let's see. Um, uh, but through, okay, let me continue from Eastern Region. Baumia 46, um, Alan 26, Ken 25. That yeah. was almost a tie. A tie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the eastern region. Okay. In so, the greater so are, Accra. On your screen, look at the screen now. Okay. So we have uh, on the screen now. So this is from central region. Okay. Annie, you can take us through. So central region, yeah. uh, from the polls, it was Baumia 45, uh, Alan 39, and then Ken 16%. Others one percent. What does it look we, like? We've, we've not. They've not done percentages, but in terms of numbers, but terms you could of see Ken, that Ken still led anyway in the central. It's flipped. Ken over, overtook uh, Alan, Alan in central from yes. the poll. Yes. But then Baumia still led in yes. the central region yes. by just seven. Is it seven votes or six votes? Twenty-five, six votes. Kenneth, uh, Baumia had twenty-five in the central region. Kennedy or Hine Japan with nineteen in that order. The next highest uh, from the central region would be four. And it's Alan Kwaja Chairman saying, are, are, are you not shocked by Alan's performance overall? Even if it is I am. a selected I am. few, I are you am. not surprised by Alan's In performance? Fact, I I mean, I was, look, at, look at that. I was rather thinking that Kennedy will <laughs> pull much lower because of the way he's roughing the, the, uh -huh. the establishment. It looks like he looks as if he's... It worked for him. What worked? In the what worked of, for Kennedy? What do you think worked uh, His aggressiveness, his, oh. his, his, you know... So uh, Kennedy had this magnitude of change between the months of June, July, and August. Yes. Yes. Easy. Huge. Huge. Wow. Huge. And ac across the country, he's also making grounds. Um, we're yet to see whether he will make enough grounds to cause a major upset. Okay. Can, can we go on Zoom now? So we want to see, speak to Prof. Uh, Kobe Mensah. Mm. Uh, he's a political scientist, political marketer, uh, extremely invested in this election. I mean, the national election in general. Kobe, my, welcome my, and my, good my to talk idea, to you. Idea. Your lecture idea, yes. idea. Okay. <laughs> good evening, uh, Kobe. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Bridget. I, I, How I, are you I, I'm well. Thank you very much. Are you surprised by anything? Share with us. Well, uh, obviously, uh, Kennedy Japan search in the process mm -hmm. has been a surprising one to many people. Mm. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. because you know, uh, before the contest began, uh, nobody even knew that he was going to contest. Of right. course, when he threw his weight into the race, you know, people then started questioning 
is leadership, credibilities, etc. So that's an amazing surprise, you know, in, in this particular race. Now, I think that um, the, the other two, obviously, you know, the vice president and Alan, you know, people thought that they would actually, you know, run with this. Uh, mm. But of course, the result that you just showed, the central region, is a little bit surprising. Of course, for Kennedy's performance, I think that's his home region. You know, he's from central region. Uh, he's the MP in, uh, I think, Aston Central. So that is not so much of a surprise to me. But Alan's number yeah. uh, feels a little bit surprising. Okay, well, what do you think works well for Kennedy in Japan? To, to boost his numbers, despite whether it's his abrasiveness, his forthrightness, which also puts others on the edge. Yeah, uh, usually in political marketing, uh, we we'll use the word mavericks, you know, people that, you know, don't seem to be going, you know, with the flow or, you know, don't play the cards as people know them to be. Uh, because obviously, we know a political character, you know, politicians, speak in a manner that do not ruffle people. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be very diplomatic. They tend to be very, you know, consensual, etc. This is a candidate that defies almost every bit of a political characterization. And so usually such mavericks, you know, marvel people, uh, they appear as genuine to people, mm. uh, regardless like of their yeah. character, whether they, 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 they have foul, you know, words or power characters, because they do not fall within the line of political characterization, they appear genuine to people. And okay. that is what is in the Kobe, I, 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 I like that. I like that uh, expression, appear to be genuine. I would want us to just pause on it and go to the uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumir's uh, election center and just look at the scenes there. They are jubilating. And then we'll come back to appearing to be genuine. What's the implications of that? How would it work in the national elections? We'll be back to talk about that. But let's go to Dr. Baumir's uh, uh, command center.
right, like we promised you at Metro Television, we go so hard on politics, and uh, we'll definitely be crossing over to other uh, delegates, no, other aspirants. We want mm -hmm. to see how Kennedy and Japan, you know, from the first time when he was on the phone, promising the president uh, a showdown, promising the uh, vice president a showdown, what's happening in his camp? How is he embracing the results that has coming? Also, Alan Kwejo Trayman, so we haven't seen much of them, but his... Uh, spokespersons, you know, from Catherine Afeku to um, Yao Bobbing as someone, they have been very vocal, you know, going back and forth with allegations here and there. How do they see the performance of Mr. Alan Kwejo Tremante? My colleague Annie here will uh, mm. continue. And we have Kobe on Zoom as well, Annie. Oh, he, he's still there. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> so my lecturer, let me refer to you as my lecturer. <laughs> yeah, so there. I'm sure you've seen uh, the scenes from, from Baumia's uh, office or camp, I would say. And, and, and the persons that we have also seen there, we've seen the likes of Samia Oku, we've seen yes. the communications minister, Ursula Owusu, we've seen Anthony Cabo there, uh, we've seen some, you know, rather very influential persons within the MPP in that camp. Do you think that it makes, uh, you know, logical sense for the president to say, well, I'm not with any establishment? Because sometimes we know the relationship between himself and some of these persons we've seen within the Balmia camp. Annie, thanks very much uh, for having me, and good to see you as well. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, I, I don't think that whoever actually, you know, uh, rejects the tag of establishment really understands political, you know, uh, uh, communication or political strategy. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have president or uh, the leadership of the party say that they are behind a certain person. Uh, but of course, in terms of actions, in terms of posture, in terms of so many other symbolism, you mm -hmm. can tell that he's the establishment candidate. In fact, the idea of having a delegate conference of this particular <laughs> nature, it's part of influencing the entire political uh, election process. This is the kind of images they want. Mm -hmm. Remember during the COVID briefing, what the MPP campaign used Nanado's COVID briefing for, right. it was a clear content mm. that they needed to use to influence the election. So Nanado's you know, posture, the, the dishing out of food, etc. these were the kind of content they needed mm. to drive the campaign come 2020. Mm -hmm. And it was... You know, evident that exactly that they needed to do. This is exactly what the uh, establishment wanted. They wanted a super delegate conference that would show that there is a momentum behind a certain candidate. As you know, we know in media, as we know in journalism, we say uh, what we call the, uh, the 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 wind. You know, uh, blowing behind somebody. We, we, we use the word. You know, the the bandwagon effect. Yeah. All right. So once they can get these contents to fuel the campaign, you would see in the content, you would see all the party heavyweights, as you said, uh, Asla Wusu, this person, this person. Now, when these images get to the grassroots, it tells them one thing. This is the chosen one that we need to be behind. And if the national leadership are behind it, Right. Uh, uh, Kobe, just hold on, and sincere apologies, mm -hmm. it happens with live television. We're going to the Alan Tremontaine camp. We told you we'll be crisscrossing, yeah. going, and we're going to Alan Tremontaine camp because we have one of his spokespersons, uh, Yao Bwabia, former uh, communications director of the New Patriotic Party, with my colleague Zoe Anita Oday. So let's go to um, Yao Bwabia Samoa. Well, I'm currently at the office of Alan, and I have with me the spokesperson of Alan Kojo Tremartin Yaobwabing Asamoah. Hello, sir. Yes. So election, the election has ended, and uh, the counting has also ended. Are you satisfied so far with the results? Absolutely satisfied that we are in the top five, which was always the situation we were expecting. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we had not been in the five, that would have been the surprise. But ideally, we all knew uh, right from the beginning that we were going to have a result which would favor uh, disproportionately one side. But the important thing for us was always the case that we will be in the five. And happily, uh, we are in the five. So we want to thank all the delegates uh, who saw fit uh, to make sure that we were part of the five. We are very grateful for that. 
But you being in the five, uh, what is the reflection of this uh, super delegate congress? Comparing it to the election that would happen in November, we, 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 right from the beginning, we've said that point zero point zero zero four percent of the entire electoral college cannot purport to determine for the rest of the college. That is something that we have always said. Nine hundred and uh, 51, 61 delegates cannot be the barometer for 200,000 uh, delegates who believe that they have a right to say what they also uh, expect of the party. And, and therefore, one can say that this result means that uh, uh, the winner of this one uh, is the winner of November. As we always said, it is a selection. It's a reduction from 10 to 5. It is a selection. It wasn't a popularity contest. This is not the one which determines who will win within the 200,000. That's why we always say that we just want to be one of the five. But once you are in the five, now the real battle begins. Now we are going forward to the champion of champions. Now is when we actually meet the delegates and the delegates take a decision about who leads the party. So, uh, with regards to the position, looking at Baumia, uh, he is currently first with um, Ken and then um, Alan. Is what? What do you think? Is there? Is there any? You're fish? asking me the same question in another way. All I'm saying is that, as far as I'm concerned, this was not about positions. I, I have said that ad nauseum. I think I even told you this morning when you spoke to me that this was not about positioning. This is not about targeting. A specific position because for us it does not mean the result that will happen in November it's it's something else entirely and therefore as far as we are concerned we are happy we are satisfied that we are in the top five so you rightly heard from Yao Boabinya Samba, who is the spokesperson of uh, Alan Kojo Tremati. I'm currently at the um, party, the office of Alan, and according to him, they are satisfied with the results so far. After all, they are all waiting for November to uh, see if they are going to get the victory of being the flag bearer of the MPP. My name is Zoe Anita Ode, Metro News, Accra. Thank you very much, Zoe. Mm -hmm. And Yelp Wabi Asamo says they don't care whether they are second or third, currently third. Most important is an opportunity to present Alan to the entire delegates, the entire college of over 200,000 voters, and who would make a decision, not on the 961 that we had just, you know, voting a while ago. I'll, we have still have Prof on, on, mm. online. Prof, yeah. since here, I, I think he was, he was making a yes. point uh, before we crossed over to yes. Zoe. Yes. So, so Prof, if you could, if you conclude on that, and then we can ask follow-up questions, mm. you know, coming from what Zoe had, that had reported. Yeah, so I was saying that, yes, the Alan, uh, I mean, the Baumia camp or the establishment wanted this kind of image. Don't forget, we are in a time where social media plays huge role in the electioneering process. Again, uh, when you look at our uh, you know, electioneering process, we have now come into a section where there is an official campaign, but there is also an unofficial and informal part of the campaign. Mm -hmm. And the informal and unofficial part of the campaign had become much more dominant than even the official ones. So the unofficial campaign now is going to be using these images, churn out fake news, to spread to the people, especially the grassroots, to say that Baumia had actually been even elected already. And yes, so they speaking, just speaking have to of go which, endorse, speaking of which, Prof, you know, I, I have to rudely come in here. I have actually seen a post right now on Twitter that says, Dr. Mahun Baumia is the flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party. So you are spot on, you're right absolutely. on the money when you say absolutely. that would happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's exactly that's what they are going to use. Now, when Bobina Sama was speaking uh, and saying Prof, that if you can hold on, Anna, clarify that. Talking. Prof, can, can you hold yeah. on? What, no, where from that? It's, it's on Twitter, at Sneaker uh, Nyami, and he says, uh, Dr. Mahun Baumia, in his nice suit, is the elected flag bearer, is the flag bearer of the new Patriotic Party. But is, that, is, not is, that, is that not uh, maybe a confusion in the minds of people? But that is the point. That's probably, exactly what Prof is. is Prof making. is saying that people are going to capitalize on that, create fake news around it, so it makes it deliberately. easier. Deliberately. Yes, deliberate. Yes, as Prof is saying. Yes. Okay, okay, Prof. <laughs> exactly. so, so right now, the problem for the Alan campaign, obviously we knew that 
the their actual support is on the is, is at the grassroots. In fact, when you divide the the delegates into levels, the actual support for the other candidates are actually from the bottom, you know, going down. That is not at the national level. The national level we knew that there was going to be a huge establishment influence to actually whip everybody in line. And so, you know, the candidate was going to get through. But as you go down the pile, that's where the support basis of the other ones. Okay. But the establishment knew that when they are able to do this, they could use it as a content to influence the other people. Uh, you know, because uh, when you look at it, there, there's a theory called, you know, social impact. Right. When everybody is going this way, we alone are going that way. Oh. You found you are found to be alone. You are found to be, you know, sort of departing from the norm. And so people are whipped in line in that sense. Okay. Now, the difficulty for the other candidates is to slow the establishment down using this content. And that makes their work twice, three times harder than they would have yeah. been, you know, if this superdelegate wasn't the case. Okay. So, well, well, yeah. uh, well Prof, um, the superdelegates, we've had people who have analyzed it and thought that it was very unnecessary. Um, I think you have talked about how um, it had benefited, it has benefited uh, some candidates and been a disservice to others. Do you think that this, uh, you know, with your background, this should have been an important, um, you know, event for the MPP to have gone through at all to start with? I think it's highly undemocratic. Uh, it, because if, if they wanted a, a genuine process that would not influence the political or the electionary process, they would have actually done it from an administrative perspective, i.e. at the point of, you know, even applying to become a member, mm -hmm. they could actually use that process to actually whittle down or to, you know, uh, reduce the number or to trim the number to the number that they want. But, you know, these political, you know, uh, politicians have always engineered process that will benefit them. <laughs> and so they put in certain things that would seem as though it's helpful, but it's not helpful. Now, yeah. there's a reason why we don't do our national elections, maybe presidential first and a parliamentary second mm -hmm. uh, on the second day. Right. Because when you do that, it has a ripple effect, uh, not only cost, but it has a ripple effect to influence the next voting. That's why right. we don't do that. We do the, all of them at one go. Mm -hmm. Now, you're doing a superdelegates now, and you're going to do another election mm -hmm. in November. Certainly, mm -hmm. this is going to influence other people. Those who are stronger in their support for the other candidates are the ones who can withstand the social impact that this one has. Okay. Many would not be able to withstand that, and they will fall to that fake news that you have seen even being peddling. All right. Prof, uh, you know, while, while Prof was speaking, uh, Musa Dankwa in the studio, Executive Director of Global Info Analytics, you know, kept nodding, I'm sure, in agreement to what he was saying, especially when he talks about social impacts and whipping everybody in line by the establishment. I mean, speak to that, and even in terms of polling. Yeah. You know, when this win comes out, right. and I said uh, elsewhere this morning that Baumia has to win by that big margin, margin. to make it normal. Mm. If he wins by lesser margin than what people were saying, then that will be a problem. And I think the win this afternoon probably is in line with the even though the polls that I've, I've seen elsewhere were running around 72%, and the final number that we have now, 68, I'm not quite sure what From that, him, yeah, from yeah. his election his center, yes. 68%. 68 point so he's, he's six points lower than what the polls mm. were, were, were saying. So that's not uh, huge, so it, that's not really. It, that, in fact, I was expecting that um, uh, it would have been probably larger than mm, that. Okay. But what surprised me most is really Canada Japan. And for him, what, what will happen? happen is that his people who doubted him will now begin to say that uh, if Superdelegate thinks he's a viable candidate, then I think we should, we should look at him seriously. And also he comes across as a lone ranger. No, I mean... He, I was, he swims against the tide. This afternoon... In fact, he uses the social impact. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, so talking about. For him, if, care, if Alan Tim doesn't take care, he may presume or assume the role of the the key, what should I say? Or oh, the second favorite. Second favorite in MPP. Mm -hmm. If Alan Campbell doesn't take care. Because he can now 
to his voice and increase his knowledge is now number two in super delegate. What does it mean in the lower level? It means he could be doing much more better mm -hmm. at that level. Yeah. And that gives him the momentum that he has been having from April this year. And I think that could continue. And that could be a threat. I, I know, but I know we keep talking about how Mr. Kennedy of Japan, Japan speaks. But also what we cannot deny is the fact that he has money. You don't even need to go and look for it. He will tell you how much money he has, how many people he has helped, how many people he has employed. So how much did money play, factor play in this? Because the, you have vice president who has the advantage of incumbency, advantage of state resources at his disposal. Which is so, come denied, actually. They will deny. I mean, <laughs> they ask for Baumier's cup. If it's blue, they will say it's red. So that's... We can, but that's how much... Highly unfair. <laughs> how, much, how much did money also play to, uh, to, to Kennedy and Japan's favor when we have no idea, really, how much money Ms. Alain Kweja Chairman TV has? Uh, money certainly play a key role in any campaign. Um, you need resources to move around. You need to sort people out when you get to, we go to visit them. Mm -hmm. And when they come to visit you, you need to do the, the deedful by our custom and tradition. And I think he can afford to do a lot more than some of the uh, candidates that are going around in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for some people, you see, in this country, money sometimes drives so many things. Mm -hmm. Once the person has money, his mind becomes something else. And, and, and it's not elsewhere where money doesn't really, you know, play a key role in deciding who to vote for. In this country, mm -hmm. votes can be bought. In mm -hmm. fact, one of the reasons why they said the delegate system should be brought was to avoid vote buying. Yeah. But, I don't but think in it, fact, it's it, encouraged it, it, vote buying. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That's just crazy. Um, prof, prof, is Prof on, on Zoom? Prof, if we can have Prof back. Prof, I mean, yeah. we're speaking to the candidacy of uh, uh, Kennedy or Hine Japan, and you talk about appearing to be sincere, appearing to be genuine. This is a man who is a member of parliament, um, part of, he should have been part of the establishment, but the way he speaks goes against the establishment. In fact, to the point where he makes the point about losing so much, his business losing so much, the depreciation of the city, and then he walks back that doubles down, really. What, is, what game is he playing? How much of the genuineness really has an effect on people? <laughs> okay, I'm you see, so um, obviously when obviously when he hadn't actually declared that or we didn't know that he was going to contest, he spoke in a certain way, he believed he behaved in a certain way. Yeah. And then when he actually declared his intention, he never switched the personality. Mm. All right. Uh, in, in in political marketing, we say that brand personality of obviously the your personality. It's different from your political brand personality. We have right. to coach you the way you speak, the way you laugh, the way you engage with people. And so we create another personality for you. In, her, in his case, he transferred his natural personality into, into the political brand personality. Right. And so people felt that or people feel that he's genuine. Oh. Now, what people forget is that when you assume really the leadership, you know, whether of the party, or of the nation, you cannot hold on to that personality anymore. There must be protocols, state protocols or party protocols that must let you become presidential. And that's where the disappointment of people would actually mm -hmm. come in. Because in fact, all this bravado, when he becomes the candidate, he cannot actually maintain that. And that's the reality. Now, the issue that uh, and, uh, Musa was actually referring to, absolutely right. If the Allen campaign is not able to manage the momentum mm. of Kennedy and then, of course, of the vice president, Kennedy becomes the poster boy of the anti-establishment. All right. So he replaces Alan Tremontaine as the poster boy of the anti-establishment. Ah. And then he takes the nod. And so the party, uh, I mean, the, the Allen team must, as they are fighting, you know, the vice president can, uh, uh, team, they must also take precautions and measures to make sure that Kennedy doesn't become the poster boy of the anti-establishment, otherwise they lose out. And so their work is now about three, four times harder than if the superdelegate wasn't there. Because right. now they have two fronts to fight uh, because Alan has to be the anti-establishment per their calculation. And then of course, fighting the uh, vice presidential uh, 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 candidate 
to to make sure that they become the candidate. So now you have two camps that you have to fight, and that makes it a lot more harder for them. All right, and and Prof, I'm I'm just looking at the table. We'll come to that, but the table itself. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is on top. Kennedy is in the middle. And then Alan Kodjo Sherman saying, like, how is that? I mean, there's nothing more prophetic than that. Like, he's literally in between um, Dr. Baumia and Alan Kodjo Sherman saying, and again, he's anti-establishment, and he's not with the previous establishments. Like, how, I mean, I don't think anybody would have put money on this. Like, how, how amazing is it yeah, for I mean, Kennedy to be in Kennedy's shoe right now? How is it? I, I just I can't put my head around it. It, it happens. It happens. <laughs> These are some of the, the traits of voting. You know, I, I remember when Bernie Sanders actually became the candidate, you know, on the, I mean, uh, actually entered the Democrat, Democrat, uh, Democratic race. Uh, people didn't give him a dog chance. Eventually, he, he won. Oh, no, he didn't win, but he became you know, uh, uh, the next, I mean, the go-to person that everybody was actually rallying behind, although eventually, you know, Hillary actually did it. Now, again, when you look at, uh, 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 what do you call uh, this guy, Donald Trump, similar, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, maverick candidate. Prof, Nobody prof, gave prof unfortunately, chance, I, I'm going him. to, Prof, I am sorry, I have to cut you. That question, I'm so interested in it, but yeah. I understand the vi vice president, uh, I spoke just a few Humanism. seconds ago, so we're going to go over to the Vice President uh, Election Center and listen to him there. Dr. Baumia there. Uh, right. Well, all right. I know, right? No, my, my, call, my colleague, Annie, would Well, that's that. <laughs> Dr. Baumia, who is currently, yeah. uh, you know, leading in the Super Delegates uh, conference that just happened, and the polls have come out. Where you've seen the coalition of the national results, and we're still giving you some reports coming from the various camps and offices of uh, the candidates that partook in this uh, particular competition. But we're crossing over back to that particular office, and we have our colleague, Kenneth Jesse, who is also standing by to give us some reports from there. Um, uh, remember that, okay, I've, I can see Ken on the screen, <laughs> you know, fidgeting with his phone. But you remember Baumia has spoken about victory, you know, for his, uh, his camp. An aspiring okay. presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. He was here moments ago uh, together with the communications uh, minister, Esla Owusu, and also the director general of the National Lottery Authority, Samia Oku, 
among other bigwigs of the party, well, what he's saying is that per their permutations and their calculations, he has won this superdelegates conference. And uh, they mentioned that Baumia was first, followed by Kennedy Japan, followed by Alan Chematin, followed by Usue Free Akoto, in that order. So he left here not long ago to uh, his premises to continue the jubilation. And uh, most of his party supporters, as you can see behind me, are in jubilant mode, uh, jubilating and uh, very happy that uh, the vice president has won this superdelegates conference. They are optimistic that he is going to go ahead and win the party's primaries on November 4th as well. But we're yet to hear from the camp of the other candidates, Alan Chermatin, uh, Kennedy Japan, who paired the permutations of the Baumia campaign team placed second. A lot of uh, people here that we spoke to behind cameras are a bit shocked. They're expecting a tight competition between Dr. Baumia and Alan Chermatin. But per their permutations, Dr. Baumia won by more than 68% of the vote. These are not official votes from the Electoral Commission. These are permutations from Dr. Baumia's camp saying that he has won with 68% of the vote, followed by Kennedy Japan and then followed by former Trade Minister Alan Chermatin and also the former Agric Minister Dr. Efriye Akoto follows in a close fourth and then Adenimo makes the top five. So that's quite an interesting uh, position and placement for all of these uh, candidates, particularly for Dr. Baumia heading into the Delegates uh, Congress in November 4th this year. That is just a few, a few months away from now. So uh, that's what I can report from Baumia's campaign office, just a stone throw away from our premises here at Northridge. Bridget, back to you. Hmm. I wish I could walk to that. I know. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank you, Ken. Uh, we uh -huh. are in the studio are also here with the executive director of the Global Info Analytics. Uh, they would go on and do more polls on this. I believe the poster, Benefson, did say that in the superdelegates, look, people on social media, you have to give Benefson his stone today because he said that in the superdelegates, Baumia would be number one, Kennedy or Hine Japan would be two, and Alan Sherman would be three. Today he was spot on. I hope you people give him his flowers today. <laughs> okay, so but in the studio we are with the Executive Director of Global Info Analytics. And um, I, I'm looking at, we, we've talked about the effect. Uh, we, we, we're speaking to Ken. And I wrote, I remember I wrote a question down about the dramatic ranking in polling that. This is supposed to whip people in line that look, this is the candidates that every, almost everyone is supporting. The momentum is behind. So let's get behind Dr. Banghut Baumia. But we're going to face 280,000 other voters in what? In a few weeks. Mm -hmm. In your scientific polling, could there be a dramatic outcome to poll where Eric Baumia could be second or Kennedy Japan could be first? Does that happen? Oh, oh, oh. I know, right? That, that, um, yeah. To be very honest, um, it is very difficult mm. looking at the numbers we have seen at this stage. We're going to okay. go back again on October. Okay. I think. After that poll, we can't tell what's going to happen. Okay. Because then the turbulence we've seen today would have settled down. Mm. Would have seen the effect of these elections mm. in terms of how it impacts on the mass uh, delegate numbers that we have at the bottom there. Um, see, people who are voting for, for Baumia are certain mm. what they want. Okay. No doubt about that. Mm. But people who are voting for Kennedy and Alan, some of them are not quite sure. Why? Why? I don't get it. How no. are Baumia voters certain and can and... No, I mean, Alan, look, how? look, those who want Baumia want they Baumia. Know. Okay, regardless. Regardless. Okay, I get it. Now I understand. But there are people who are torn in between. Is it anything to do with their person? So maybe his person, his record in government, his performance for MPP and okay. what he's done. Or his so role. They, they, they think mm. he deserves to be the vice president. He deserves to be the candidate for MPP going 2024. But you can see that there are a chunk that are divided between Alan and Ken. Mm. What we call the anti-establishment candidate. Mm -hmm. right. Now, when you add them in the polls, most of them, they outnumber uh, 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 the establishment. Uh, the establishment. Right. Now, the question is, between Alan and, and, and Ken, who would the grassroots now consider Perfect. to be the main man we should mm. use against Baumia? Okay. That Got is it. the biggest question that Alan team would have to confront. 
And this performance by Kennedy would no doubt make him look in the eyes of those who were not doubt, who were doubting him that, look, this guy, someone who can look at seriously. Mm. Do you, does he also come across as somebody who would uh, say, okay, even though I am two right now in this poll, I would join another person. Or at this very moment, at, at, look, it is going to be difficult to move at this Kennedy moment, or Hine Japan. Absolutely, <laughs> I agree with you. At this moment, he will feel he is a superior candidate mm. and that to Alan, Alan. Alan must join him. That, that, is his, wow. that will be his trump card. That will be so, his trump card so, based on so this number. So I'm seeing Kennedy here as someone who is probably going to be, be jubilating more than anticipated. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I really can't wait for us to yeah. go to his place. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't wait for us to just take yeah. you there no, no, you see, to where Kennedy and Japan yeah. is right now. I can't wait. You see, it, it also tells you that mm -hmm. there are people in the establishment or in the top cream of the party that are thinking the way Ken is thinking. Okay. Now, um, if, prof, if Prof is there with us, Prof, uh, uh, are you there? Yes, he is there. Yes, he is. Yeah, He's I'm there. There. Great, thank you. There's one person that struck me didn't appear in the top five, and that is Kwabna Japan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I I was also surprised uh, because I thought that uh, Kwabna Japan was actually part of the top five, uh, but of course, uh, also comes to the point of resources. Uh, obviously, this is a, a direct campaign, you know, with the internal party structures, which means that you have to visit, you know, almost everybody. Uh, when it comes to, you know, the national election, you have the benefits of the media uh, because national elections, usually the media plays a crucial role. So even if you're not able to go to certain constituencies, certain places, the media takes you there. So you're able to send your message right to the people. Now, internal structures are completely different. People expect that your physical presence is needed to demonstrate your respect to them, and then of course your message for them as well. And so if you do not have the resource, you know, a capacity to actually engage in that conversation right down to the people, it is very, very difficult to actually get them around. And so that could actually be one of the reasons why he's not in the pile. But okay. of course, I was expecting him to make the top five actually. Okay. So I'm also surprised as you. You have a follow up question yes. on that? Um, Prof, um, what could be the reason, is it, money did he not have the resources yeah, because resources. this is really intense and also is there anyone yeah. we put on the screen can we have it back on the screen yeah, we the put on five. the screen the top five uh, prof so you have uh, dr baumia um uh, kennedy ohine japon alan kwajo tremante dr usufri akuto adainimo and uh, tied with Bwachi ejako is there anyone in the top five that shocked you as well in the absence of kwabene japon Absolutely, uh, a dynamo. Um, oh, I didn't Adainimo think that as well. would be in the top five. In the, he did in the top five. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think that he would be in the top five. But I think that uh, because some of us, you know, mostly um, gauging from the media perspective, because I hear a dynamo is very much on the ground with the people. I mean, mm. that's what FP people tell me uh, that he's very much a party person. And so perhaps it might ex surprise us, but mm. to many MPP followers, it, 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 maybe he's not. And okay. I also don't know how the party is going to proceed with this because this morning I heard you know, Haruna, I think, in one of the, the party executives in one of the stations saying that when there is a tie, they have to do a runoff, the, redo the whole election. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So that's one of the difficulties of this particular delegate ah. conference. So, how do you manage the tie between Adanimo and Boate Jaco, for example? Must you call for the entire vote again? Well, we'll live to see. But for, you know, uh, Alan and then, of course, you know, Baumia, it was always known that right. for those you know, uh, levels, certainly they were going to go for Baumia. Okay. The swapping of the prof, position. Prof, um, prof and, we'll come back to talk yeah. about that. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, okay. this is... Kennedy Ohine Japan's uh, delegate, super delegates, because he is a super performer in this. No one is surprised by the lead uh, of uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, but everybody is shocked by the Member of Parliament for Asin Central. So let's go over and speak to, uh, go to the account now and speak to uh, my, my colleague, actually, Ken, 
with, uh, with Jesse, Samuel, who I can, think... Uh, Jesse is Dr. there. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the vice president, and also uh, the runaway winner of this Superdelegates Conference. And uh, just uh, beside me is the boss of the National Communications, uh, National Lotteries Authority, I beg your pardon, who would uh, want to share a few words uh, with, with us. Uh, Mr. Samuel Oku, uh, you're live on Metro TV, boss. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you are you play an integral part of this uh, Baumia campaign. Um, how does this presumable win make you feel? Well, I think uh, it's, it's the beginning of another round of hard work, and there's no shortcuts to hard work. I am of the strongest conviction that one is an internal party election. Um, NPP is the winner today, even though we have uh, the first four decided. I think the fifth position, the party will now have to once again go into conclave and uh, take a decision as to how it will be resolved. Uh, secondly, just as the vice president said, this is not a time for who to use to cast in windows and to engage in a language that will um, aggravate wounds, teasing your brother. The bigger fight or the bigger contest is in 2024 December and as he said we need one strong united party to make that strong push right. so if you ask me yes the MPP was the winner for mm. today mm. and so let me also congratulate all those who also helped uh, Tim Baumia uh, from the polling stations making a case to their electoral areas making a case to their constituency making a case to their regional reps uh, their national executives, their members of parliament, their constituency chairman, national council of elders, our external branches. So it is clear that the, the party definitely has a, a, a role to play. I saw the figures there by, by the, the team, what they put together. It showed that Baumia was leading by more than 68% of the vote. Exactly. I mean, the, the, that, that looks like a, a big margin. Did it come to you as a surprise? Well, I. For me, I think that it's hard work. It's hard work. I keep saying that the votes are on the ground. And again, we are going to roll out the sleeves again and get to the ground towards November 4th. Uh, we are winning, but we must win. And I am very clear in my mind that once again, with another round of hard work, it should pay off. So does it mean that it's done and dusted for Timba Omiya come November 4th? Well, I won't say that. No election is a top-up. We have to work hard to deliver the vote. But I can say that this gives us a very strong momentum to head into the next phase of the campaign. Okay. Thank, you thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Samuel Ku is the former youth organizer and also former organizer of the New Patriotic Party. I'll speak with a few of uh, the members of the Team Baumia campaign. And uh, I have another gentleman with me. Thank you very much. You're live on Metro TV. Thank you very much. Right. I mean, we all know it's now an open secret that Dr. Baumia has emerged victorious. Uh, was it, was it, I wouldn't say that it was something that you were expecting, but looking at the margin that he got per your permutations and per the provisional results, did it come to you as a shock? Um, it wasn't a shock because um, I saw the hard work he put in. Right. And um, hard work comes out with good results. Secondly, um, I come from the central region of Thompson. And we have something we say that... He's worked hard for Nanado Dankwe Kufado, he's worked hard for MPP. And the party has rewarded him on that. And this is a reflection of the future, what is going to happen. Because, you know, like uh, every survey, you take a sample, and the sample shows that 70% plus is done well. No sample, you go anywhere, and when you pick up at random, you get people giving you overwhelmingly this vote. It tells you what is going to happen on November 4th, and it tells you what is going to happen at the end of the day. Because we have another idea to say that F will be a par na wo He's done someone's own very well. He's climbed a good tree, and the party people have pushed him up. And you know, they have this thing that they call the establishment candidate and things. It's only people who don't want to work who will sit down and say, we have an establishment candidate. Yes. When they said establishment candidate, I said, yes, it's good. It's an establishment candidate. Because who is establishing him? The party people. Who is the establishment that is pushing him to come out? The MPP people. And the MPP is the establishment. So if the grassroots are telling you overwhelmingly, mm. over 70%, that listen, this is the candidate we need, what again do you need to say? Mm. It's not about saying that, yes, I'm, a, um, I'm an establishment candidate and I don't work. Right. It's happened before. People claim that some people were establishment. They claim. Mm. And then they sat down and they lost the elections. Right. But this is something that people are claiming that he's an establishment candidate. And the party 
has voted and shown that this is the candidate we want. So are you saying that those people that, that kept saying that he is having the advantage of an incumbent being the vice president, so he's using the state resources to his advantage, are you saying that they don't have any point? What I'm saying is that hard work pays. And he didn't sit down on his earth and say that, oh, because maybe I'm the vice president, automatically people should vote for me. They looked at his hard work, they look at, looked at his dedication, and they looked at what he has put in in this particular elections. The man put down his v 8 he put down all the luxury, and was on bus day and night, going to people, seeking their vote, seeking their endorsement. And that is what has come out in this result. The team that he put together, the Samiokos, the Oparihamon, the Kabos, the um, viruses, the various people that came together decided that, listen, we are supporting him on our own accord. And they have worked hard. We all put our effort in to make sure that we are making this great man, this man who thinks about people, this man who is caring about the grassroots, we are giving him the chance to lead the party. Right. Because when you look at everything that is going on, he understands the system more than all the other ten, um, nine candidates. He is in the system and he appreciates what has gone on. Yes, yes, there's an economic world crunch. But that doesn't mean he's put everything together and said, that, listen, I've lifted my hands up right. and I know that oh, the world is going bad, so right. Ghana, we should just relax. He's working hard, he's correcting all the errors, and we are seeing the growth rate that is, come, is turning out now. It tells you that this is someone who doesn't rest. Right. This is someone who, when you give him the chance, when you give him the opportunity, he's going to work beyond your imagination, and he's going to turn out results. And that is what we are seeing today. That is what we want. This is the person we need as a presidential candidate. And that person is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. We believe in him, we'll work hard for him, and we'll make sure that any elections he goes into, this is the first time elections. The first time Nanado went for an election, he got 34%. This is the first time he's going for an election, and he's got about 70%. So it tells you, it gives you a message that, listen, the grassroots, which is the establishment people, the party is an establishment. It's an MPP party. This is what they want. Right. It's, an, it's a reflection of what is yet to come. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you Mommy, so uh, you know, we have a, lo a lot of uh, women here who are also supporting uh, Dr. Maud Bom. I'm a of the are You, your friend, delegate. Now, me say the entire me wah hane say, and that day MPP four ye ye say ye betu abani ye ye ni patena standing ye obi aso up a flag bearer ship. Now, as I say, ye kuto swab. You say say ye ye democratic inti ye su ye betu aba. Now, ni obi ni ano na ye dena ko. I'm peni I'm pa if you are no pay ye di ati adi ana koshe cheso. Now, in shranke rade say di ane wah ye ni so no ni wah ye adwin mo no abe mo amaye. Ni I said no matter, I hear Doctor Mahmoud Baumia on one year per se. Ya deneko. Ya ko two ya so. She percentage away when ya. Enti ye we ye necessary ba ne campaign office ya ni ya be man moni a juma ti ya waha na Doctor Mahmoud Baumia enti na midora midina ha. Aye. Ebi mo ke kase mo i candidate ni bi bonia ya because MPP di mo or tradition bi ana mo amamre bi se o. There was some party in the channel. drew her on my party in the border basso. Then so so a bit more say we share ten candidates in a bibre. There some party in the channel. Actually, Doctor Baumia. Then so so no. Moko e anyo na mutuma. Yo, yeshwe ba ibu mo yeshwe Paul awa mantem. O chendi kanfo. Yeshwe ba ibu mo na idi for bibre ba e. Then so Paul na we actually. Then so no so be yeju ma pa. When ye boni ayasem. Doctor Mahmud Baumia. So buy and tear a cra. Ye won a juma, what barbay? Ain't no so mucky can as idea there be as in Tiasian him. And as I say, so yes, I call ya and people for near Cofanaba. A son say ye pessimi be a ye free and fainty, ye see Uncle Tuaba. Cocromotinatra say, Nipa do drona by a betuaba, and one if you are brooch, one if you are gonna hang. I could think him, Sir Doctor Mahmoud Baumia. And found one about by and tear, never a juma barbay. Thank you very much. Uh, my brother here will wrap up the interview for us. Thank you very much for your time on Metro TV. You mentioned your name and what you're doing here. All right, my name is Omar Banchi Ibn Karim. I'm a police station executive in the Botiano constituency. Uh, I'm in the Botiano English. I'm from constituency BNA. 
and I am a polling station secretary. Right. Uh, uh, Umar, uh, Baumia has won convincingly, at least per the provisional results that are available to you and most people. Is this a sign of good things to come, come November 4th? Before that, uh, let me say that uh, for some of us, uh, we saw this coming, uh, given the work he has done for the party. Uh, I had uh, a great conviction that uh, the party was going to reward him this much, and so I am not surprised at all. So now come to your question about... About, about November 4th, does it look like you know, it's a sign of good things to come on November 4th? Absolutely. You don't need uh, a Susaya to tell you this. And if you look at the Electoral College for this particular elections, it, uh, this is the party, the core party hierarchy that partook in this particular elections. And if the party hierarchy has toned this direction, it should tell we, those behind that, indeed, this is the direction of the party. And so anybody who is mindful, any MPP person who is mindful of a winning election, right. winning the next election, then we are supposed to follow suit what our hierarchy has done right. to endorse Dr. Alaj Mahmoud Baumia in the 2024 general elections. You are a polling agent, correct? Polling station secretary. Polling station secretary. I'm a delegate. Right, you're mm. a delegate as well. Uh, 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 what is his name? Kennedy Japan did mention that, that uh, you know, there were some intimidations from some agents and all that. Did you witness anything like that? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, did he mention specific instances? No, he mentioned that they were trying to intimidate, uh, you know, persons who are believed to be his supporters. Well, honestly, I have not seen uh, anybody who was intimidated. But you seen however, the video. However, yes, we, video. Yes. But l let me just put it this way: we've gone into an election. Okay, we have parties that have represent or have partook in the elections. If any party feels that one or two things didn't go right, okay, there are laid down procedures and how to get your 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 grievances resolved. Okay, but uh, talking about putting circulating videos and making ranting in the media, I don't think that will solve the problem. Let's even assume that that happened. I think there are right channels to deal with those uh, problems. Right. I want to thank you very much for your time. So, uh, uh, Bridget, these are the sights and sounds of uh, what's going on at the Baumia campaign office here at Northridge in Accra. We've spoken to a couple of them who have also uh, who have all expressed excitement about the fact that uh, he's emerged victorious. They did mention that they were expecting him uh, to, to win, but not as convincingly and overwhelmingly as it turned out. Uh, and uh, November 4th is also another day, because that will be the day that they will finally select who will lead the ruling New Patriotic Party into the 2024 general elections. Back to you in the studio. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Ken uh, JC, with us here at Metro Television, doing a fantastic job out there. Also in the studio, we still have the executive director for Global Info Analytics, and uh, we will have the ranking back on the screen. So you see who made the top five. And uh, same question we posed to Prof. Uh, in respect of the ranking, no one is surprised by the presence of uh, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as the lead candidate there, but of course, Kennedy Japan is a candidate, the most talked about candidates right now, an untied in faith. Is there anyone in your view as well who's there that surprised you and who's not there that should have been there? Yes. Yes, I was expecting um, Joe Gatti to be in there. I didn't mm -hmm. expect a dynamo to be there. I did not expect um, uh, Every Boache, Boache As for mm -hmm. Akutu, I got to at number four. Okay. Okay. And he's there at number okay. four. Oh, wow. Now, so what this tells me is that um, a dynamo hasn't been in frontline politics. Mm -hmm. It means he's saying something that even the super delegates agree with him, mm -hmm. even though he got mm -hmm. nine votes. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't expecting Boche Jaku to get that number because of how I've seen him take on the government recently. Mm -hmm. And these are people we've said that they are the cream of the party. So some people agree with him. On, on, on what probably he's saying. Now, you could see, with the exception of um, uh, Akoto, the rest will be anti establishment candidates. Mm. Well, with, the, with the exception of Akoto, Akoto, we already know Baumia's standing. Yes. So, with the exception of Akoto, Akoto. and maybe Baumia. Yes. So, you, 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 you could see Ken, Alan, uh, Adainimo, Boachejako fighting in the same corner 
against mm. Dr. Baumia okay. and Akutu Afri. Okay. But then in this case, given the ranking, who are we rallying to depose the establishment candidates? <laughs> See, oh, is it too it, early to ask that question? No. You have to assess where the groundswell is at the moment within the larger delegates. Right. Baumia has one super delegate. What is the situation like in the lower bottom or the, at the bottom of the party? Sure, sure. Now, Alan, between Alan and Ken, they have to have a hard talk. You know, hard, tough decisions. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be the poster boy of the anti-establishment? Yeah. Right. And I think at this point, Ken should be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, because, look, no, I look, mean, without see, him, he doesn't need anybody to... You, no, you see, you, you have to look at so many angles. Okay. Because ultimately, it's the national election, even right. if he's able to win against Baumia. Mm. Now, so you must look at the national outlook to assess his weaknesses against the potential candidate of the NDC, if he is the NPP's club flag bearer. Mm. And then I say, okay, if he is the candidate, what would be the drawbacks? You may have to do an internal poll to really see between him, Ken, and, and Alan, who would really have the best shot mm. compared to Baumia. Regardless of what the ranking exactly, says here. Exactly. And that should be the base that these guys should have discussion if they don't have that discussion at all. It should not be based on emotions, because emotions don't work here. It should be based on data to see which of them should really be the poster boy of the anti-establishment. Okay, but who should be the poster boy of the no, anti-establishment? No, it's not for me to sit here and say so. I mean, the data should guide them. Data you, you should guide them? What kind of data? <laughs> no, of course, polls. You see, you, you could, a lot of polling happen that doesn't get published. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, it's not for public consumption. Yeah. Alan and Kennedy can jointly do something mm -hmm. and see who among them stands a better chance in the MPP grassroots. And then if they really want to topple the establishment, then there must be a price to pay. Somebody must, mm -hmm. must give up his ambition. Let me, let me throw this question to Prof Mensah. Prof, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Annie. So, so, I mean, we're discussing the issue of who should be the poster boy for, uh, you know, to unseat the establishment. So, um, you know, before the superdelegates, there was this consensus from the anti-establishment, I would say, and, you know, against Dr. Baumier's camp. Uh, they were calling for a, a national form of voting as, as to what the party itself was going with, mm -hmm. the, with the, you know, uh, regional uh, one, which the party didn't really pay attention to and said it was still sticking to the regional uh, voting. Could this, uh, um, yes, could this affect or could it may have affected the, the results that we're seeing today? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the, the remaining uh, competitors against, you know, Dr. Baumer's camp actually favored what they call conference. Uh, so they wanted, you know, everybody to be at a place just like they've been doing. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, uh, Baumier's camp disagreed. And, of course, the, I hear the Office of the Presidency actually disagreed as well. Uh, certainly, it played a role uh, because, you know, if we take the, the history as part of our, you know, framework, mm -hmm. it is easy to identify people who had voted against the establishment when you do this regional delegate mm. elections, mm. Right. very easy. Uh, but when you bring people into the conference, then it is difficult for you to do that. And so people are much more freer in you know, their, their, their conscience and uh, where to vote. So suddenly it played a role. Mm. You know? So uh, I mean, that was, that, was a, that was a reason why the remaining felt that this one was the wrong approach to do it. So suddenly it played a role. Okay. So, so when they say that, I mean, I'm seeing a post on social media, uh, one of their communicators, national communicators, who's also gunning to become the parliamentary candidate for the Adentan Constituency, Akushu Amenu, saying, eh, isn't our democracy beautiful, Kukrudu? Which you earlier on said that, I mean, the whole process was quite undemocratic. 
So uh, who is going to pump it into the heads of the leaders of this party that some of the decisions you have taken are undemocratic? Now, I have always said that the observers, uh, especially academics and you know people of social standing must continue to tell the people you know the ways of the politicians i mean look at how she's spinning it and i've heard them spin so many things you know including how the super delegate is a good way to go these are all spins all right mm. obviously <laughs> as i said there's what we call you know the theory of sufficient reason you can or the principle of sufficient reason you can give reasons to almost everything but whether it benefits the society is what we are talking about. Right. You know, this is not the right thing to do. They will spin it as uh, increasing or enhancing our democratic processes. But for those of us who understand uh, the, the art of politics, who have actually learned the art of politics, it is certainly the wrong way to go. But, but spinning is, is allowed in the art of politics, no? <clears throat> of course it is. If I was a strategist for them, <laughs> I would do the same. So I would always say that, of course, depending on where you are, and I wouldn't hide it. If I'm a political strategist for one of the uh, political parties, uh, the way that I would spend it, it would make very obvious, you know, it would sound very obvious, you know, uh, it, it would be logical to people. But if I'm actually you know, standing on the other side as you know, an umper uh, or uh, as someone who's analyzing and trying to explain to the general public, I would explain it differently. So I don't fault yeah. her, of course. But for us who are observing, we have the duty to explain to the general public to make sure that they understand that the other conversation they actually, you know, slapping on this whole practice is not the truth. We, we were earlier on speaking about uh, Kwame Japan before we crossed over to our colleague, which you started talking about how it shocked you and Adani Mo also shocking you seeing him in the top five. Um, you know, when it comes to the anti, of course, um, uh, Ejaku was speaking hardly against the establishment. I didn't really hear Dynamo doing the same, but I think a couple of them, of course, Alan Chimating did. So uh, did uh, Kwabne Japong also do, speaking against the establishment. But Kwabne Japong, cons considering his political history with the NPP, I honestly thought that he was going to be more appealing, especially when he launched his campaign. His messages resonated with even persons within the NDC who were commending him of the message that he sort of put across. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, so, I, in fact, he really shocks me in those results. That I'm super shocked that, okay, is, are these um, super delegates that we use in 961, uh, we're not looking at your message, or what exactly were they considering? What were they looking at before voting for who they actually chose? Okay, okay. you know, Annie, uh, when it comes to elections, so many factors actually contribute to the turnout or the results of the vote. Uh, now, remember that Kennedy Japan, for example, is in parliament, all right? Uh, and mm -hmm. by the way, uh, uh, the, the a Greek minister, mm -hmm. uh, Akoto, also had been speaking against the, the, the government. So we shouldn't forget that, you know. Now, if you look at the pairing mm -hmm. or if you look at the vote, sometimes, you know, you want to look at who has certain relationship with who, all right? And yeah. those also play a role. Now, uh, if you take nine people for, you know, Boache Jaku and then Adanimo, for example, it could be that they have a very intimate relationship with certain people mm -hmm. who by any stretch of imagination would vote for them, all right, because of a certain relationship that they have. Now, again, uh, as much as your social network, you know, uh, uh, what it expands, then of course the likelihood that your voter share would go up. So it may not necessarily be only messaging, but your relationship, i.e. your social ties with people. And yeah. so, it, it, it may seem strange that Adanimo came in, but as I said, it is to us who are monitoring from media perspective. Quite a lot of people who are actually on the ground perhaps know his networks within the party, and as a result, aren't surprised, you know, where he is. And as I said, it may be that he's also even criticizing, 
you know, uh, the, the establishment or the government. But because he is not media oriented, i.e. Mm. his campaign is not fully in the glare of the media, we are not getting to see it. So there are so many factors that actually come into play into why in a certain candidate are actually where they are. For me, yes, uh, Kobne Japan's one was surprising, but perhaps these guys have broader networks than he has. Not necessarily that his messaging is not resonating, but perhaps they have quite a, a broader relationship path than he has. Does, does that mean that his decision, uh, you know, to have gone dead or quiet uh, after mm -hmm. the whole, maybe I'll say suspension, uh, that did him a lot of harm? I think the suspension, no doubt, had actually, you know, uh, harmed him because uh, quite a lot of MPP people, when you speak to them, one, they will talk, tell you about Alan Rezaian, which, you know, his campaign had come to uh, disagree. They will talk, they tell you about Kobne Japan was suspended. So certainly it had actually played a role. As to how, you know, the extent to which that particular incident actually played a role, you can't tell. As I said, there are so many reasons why you know, voting uh, patterns or uh, uh, results would actually uh, show in a particular way, but we can only, you know, uh, sort of make, you know, some kind of assumptions, etc. Now, uh, when Dr. Baumia was speaking, there are a few things I picked, I picked from him. You, you, you could tell that he was uh, speaking from the vic victorious point of view. Uh, he, he was calling for unity. He, he said that there's so you know, some hard work ahead of them. That was, you know, more like psychologically massaging the minds of the voter that, well, you know, we may have won, but there's more hard work ahead. So, you know, keep, keep pushing. And, you know, it's like you're psyching, you know, the voter. And then he, he puts in the language of jokes. So, you know, there's, there's a bit of some soft language also there. Um, by your expertise, Prof., what, is that a master of the arts now, um, knowing where Dr. Baumia started from and where he is today? Yeah, clearly he has actually learned uh, in uh, the political arts. Uh, certainly, I don't see any different way that he could actually present his speech, you know, on this particular, you know, victory. Uh, clearly, knowing that, you know, the big, you know, campaign or the big event is in November. So certainly he would have to speak in a certain manner. Uh, but of course, that is itself not the end of it. It is what his, his campaign does. Remember, he's the figure. He's the, the leader. He's supposed to have spoken in a particular way and exactly that he's doing it. What he allows his campaign to do is the real messaging. And I know that certainly his campaign are going to issue one a certain informal, unofficial campaign driving this fake news, this kind of momentum going forward. If he allows that, that is the real message, not what he's actually saying. Because as for what he's actually saying, we expect a certain leader to speak in that manner. But the practices and the behavior of his campaign going forward is what really will tell us whether he meant what he said or not. Because if he's not able to rein in on his campaign, from the fake news that the uh, 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 the fake news that they will start issuing up with a kind of you know dancing with a kind of you know all sort of things that they would do, then of course what he said didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is about the behavior of his campaign going forward, their attitude, how they're going to use this this content going forward would explain to me that indeed he meant what he what he said, mm -hmm. and he meant that the actual battle is ahead, but not what he said, because for what he said, we expect him to speak in that particular manner. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Prof, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, back in the studio here, we were three, and now he, we're He's four. not going off, right? Um, no, no. Uh, okay. um, uh, today is a day for pollsters, political scientists, and analysts, and I'm excited to introduce another guest, uh, Jonathan asante uh who has uh, been following this and done great analysis on it as well. Uh, Jonathan, welcome. To our studio. I know you've Thank been you. speaking. Uh, we'll give you what uh, <laughs> in a bit. Uh, <laughs> we'll I, I, I just, we, we, we we're talking about, you know, top five, and we're seeing a tie in the top five. First of all, I'm, I'm interested to know your initial thoughts on the five. Is there your, your thoughts on it, and is there anyone there 
that surprised you? And is there anyone who's not there that should have been there? Yes. Well, uh, let me say good afternoon to yeah. our viewers. Um, right. When I did the analysis, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you need to listen to the views of you know other posters and right. uh, you know other political scientists mm -hmm. and other analysts. For me, I said that the first three, and looking at the characteristics of those who are going to vote in the super delegate, right. it put Dr. Baumia ahead. Absolutely. And that came to pass. Now, the interpositional change between Alan and Kennedy Japan yeah. is a little surprise to me. Mm. Um, all this while, I know that if you look at the characters, as I said earlier on, Dr. Baumia was going to win on a realistic fashion. Then Kennedy Japan surprises me with that, you know, number at, as far as Alan is concerned. Mm. <coughs> now the, the fourth, the fourth, the, the, okay, the fourth and the fifth, I gave four names. Okay. And I didn't know was in part. Mm. And this four, I gave Dr. Kutu, uh, mm -hmm. and then I brought Kobe Japan and mm -hmm. then uh, Akutu. Then Adenumu, I felt Adenumu didn't have a constituency, but I forgot that. Adenumu is a very smooth talker. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to his views on certain things, and he's someone, he, he comes to you in that calm like a submarine. Mm -hmm. So that is where the surprise element is. And you see, the way the numbers were going to be distributed, I realized that with just a little vote someone will get, that person could be within the top five. Hmm. Because most of the vote will be shared by either the top, top three. three. Yeah. So with just in. Uh, an insignificant number. And they are tied as nine. Yes, you Single find digits. yourself there. So this one is not about messages. Mm. You see, it is about loyalty and allegiance. Mm. This is it. Yes, it's about loyalty, loyalty and allegiance. And allegiance right. So, for so the, the so-called Kamne Japan is not loyal? For, for the life of the person, he cannot see himself voting against this person. Not in the name of Baumia or Alan, no. But the life of that person and that relationship that they have built over the years, which transcends internal politicking, that is the cause of the number that they had. The rest, or most of them, will be political decision. You know, uh, everybody's going here, so why don't I so go oh, there? But it will be very difficult looking in the face of a friend for so many years, though I know he's not going to win. But to vote mm. against him will be against my conscience. Mm. And that's what you know, afforded them this number. OK. Wow. Wow. So loyalty and allegiance. allegiance. All right. And you talk about how if they're going this way, then why don't I also go that way? And earlier, we had a conversation about social impacts, uh, the current uh, results. So if Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, if we're go to go by you know, the results that we saw, that over 68%, for instance, uh, how much of that will reflect in the, this is, of course, the 960, when the 280, over 280,000 votes that were expected on November 4? The optics of politics... You cannot deny the optics of politics. Um, you see, it was for a good reason. Something that I was talking about. It was for a good reason that the Baumia camp were insistent on 70 and above. And that 70 and above percentage was for the optics. So it will send a message down the spine of his main contenders, the likes of Alan and Ken Ejapon, that... I mean, if you look at what has transpired today, why waste your time come 4th November, spend a lot of resources, knowing very well that you're not likely to win? So that percentage that the Baumia camp were insistent on was something that was to send a message loud and clear. That is, that is all. So that they will be a bit hesitant in the way 
they are going to yes yes that is that is why waste yeah. But, so now, but now, looking at where Kennedy Japan yes. is, does that stance or what changes moving forward? Hmm. I think Kennedy is a force to reckon with. Clearly. It's a force to reckon with. Yeah. As I far mean, as grassroots it, it, politics it, 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 is concerned. Can you answer your question of uh, who better unseat the establishment? Kennedy probably stands tall. The only problem Even with, over Allen. Yes. The only problem with Kennedy, that, that consideration that the, the electorate will have, will be hesitant about that, is the fact that does he stand a chance against the candidate of the NDC? Mm -hmm. That is the only consideration that, will, because the grassroots are really disgruntled against the establishment, no two ways about that. But of course, because I've listened to some of the Ken support base tapes, videos here and there. And it shows that if they don't treat Ken well, the voter apathy alone that will hit the party will be very incredible. And well, they will not have is it, any is solution it, to that. Treat Ken well November 4, post November 4, ex explain. Up to 2024. Because this is a person who is very resourceful. Both you know, in terms of uh, human monetary. resource and monetary as yeah. well. So that is something that you cannot wish away. Why it could go for Alan is because they will be considering his chances against Mr. Mahama. Mm. Now, the strange reaction that I have with the establishment support base for Dr. Baumia is the fact that Yes, they consider him as a political strategist. And he's very brilliant, no two ways about it. He knows when to, you know, whisk people off their feet with some kinds of messages here and there. Who are you describing, Dr. Baumia? Dr. Baumia. Dr. Baumia, yes. He knows okay. how to do that. Okay. Now, the problem that he's going to face, which, yeah. is, going, which is going to be Herculean for the, for the establishment to mm -hmm. sell him, is the believability of the message. Right. The trustworthiness is very important. So Dr. Baumia will come up with very fantastic ideas, which he did in the past. He will, but nobody will believe him. And that is what will bring his downfall. So I'm surprised that the establishment knows very well that whatever Dr. Baumia says today, what do people do? They Google. <laughs> when they Google, they bring what? Old what files, said, old tapes. Mm -hmm. Then they will put all together. Four tapes, what's up? You download and 2014, you said this. 2018, this is what you said. 2019, 20, So that level of inconsistency is something that is going to fight against him. So the establishment will have to struggle to be able to rid the man of all these baggage. And it's very difficult. So. Some, the moderate minds, feel that Alan is or was part of the establishment. Alan has a leg here and a leg there. Uh, the reason why his campaign has not resonated so well is because he doesn't know which level to drink deep and mm. taste none. At what point does he criticize that which he was part of? And at what point does he exculpate himself? These are his challenges. But which, which is, is different which from the strength of Kennedy Japan. Yes, which is different from Ken. Hmm. Different. He is For part him, of it, doesn't care. No so strings are attached. He is doing his campaign. That's why I describe him like the Trumpian style of campaigning. Yes, absolutely. Nobody gave Trump a hood chance when he started. Yeah. But he didn't need any resources from GOP. Mm -hmm. So he was building his campaign. Mm -hmm. yeah. The grassroots time, it was resonating with the grassroots. All of a sudden, they realized that as much as they pressed the head of Trump into the deep ocean, he was coming up the with, grassroots. with broad shoulders. Mm -hmm. Then GOP realized that mm, there's nothing that we can do. And it's not as if he needed your financing. A similar thing with Ken. He doesn't need your financing. He is rather better positioned to finance you. Do you get a point? And yes. that is something that is also a shortfall when some of these guys enter the fray. Because, look, there, there, there is so much money 
thrown about. There's so much money thrown yeah. about. And I don't see how the establishment can poo poo Kennedy's campaign fund. They cannot. And the tape that has even come out. Strategy? <laughs> what is what tape? You speak to the tape and then I'll, I'll go. Well, he was on phone. Right. That yes. is oh, yeah. uh, this he's, thing. It's going to be a showdown. Yes, it's the member will showdown. <laughs> yes. Mm. It's, 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 I mean, it's daring them. Yeah. And you see, when it comes to the application of force, he has what it takes to recruit. So yeah. don't even try that one. And this was just one police station yes. agent. Don't even try <laughs> that one. So the only thing is that you have to beat him with ideas. Because, of course, the establishment will have a lot of resources at its disposal, Dr. Baumia. But he could also match them both for both. Unless Alan feels that it's no longer a match, for which reason they want no, to. But do you see that happening? But, but, but do you, I don't do see, you that see that happen. because I mean he's gone through uh, the, the issue of 2008, really, 2012. You know he's he's the all, problem he's, he with the Alan and out. the Kennedy Japan issue is the support base seem to be from the same source. So it's like we are pulling from the same. We are tapping mm. from the same source. Mm. You get the point. And they that is over, a problem for the church. Oh, yes. Yeah, the same point that Musa makes that uh, the establishment, they know they are for Dr. Baumia. Yes. But Alan and Ken are pulling from the same source. That's where yes, the problem the same, is. They, have, they seem to have the same characteristics of a support base. Mm. So it's like we are sharing from. But he is widely spread. The establishment candidate is widely spread. Okay. So he can even tap from your source as well. So some of the regions, for example, I mean, if you have Untumi saying that is for Baumia, oh, yeah. then you can imagine the resources that will exchange hands. Alan will be there, but not. You see, why did Alan perform so creditably in the 2007? And that's because, the highest he's had since. That's because he had a support of the establishment. Right. The vice president then, Ali Umahama, did not. But of course, the president Akufado had the base that is the grassroots. The grassroots. And they felt that, mm. you see, the MPP is a conservative party. So they do it by turns. And uh, President Akufado himself said so. One, the, Dubai, the, the late Professor Dubuahin, you know, was about to be challenged by Kufo. Nice. I mean, he was yeah. actually told that it's not his turn. Yeah. Just wait. So Kufo wait, he gets his turn. Kufo was told the same thing. Yeah. That is why he made reference to that. And when he wanted to do so, this is what he was told. So Alan should also be this time. So why are they making Alan what? Jump him. Mm. That got him sympathy vote. Alan has made a mistake. For oh. waiting all this while to resign. You see, I was actually having the earlier discussion with you before we even came on air. And I said, on hindsight, if conservatively this is what the MPP had been practicing over the period, then Alan should have broken that jinx that time. Because for me, it looks like it's too late for him to come and say, it's my time now. <laughs> I mean, if I'm getting the analysis you're making, mm. that, that's what he means. Yeah. You see, he's taking too much baggage of the establishment yeah. for him to dissociate himself sure. from it. That is something that is difficult. So how much do you take and how much do you shed off? So if about, you see, when Alan resigned and they had started working, they realized that the establishment had built strong bridges for Dr. Baumia. Yeah. So if he had resigned earlier, which I was advocating, he would have known the, the gravity of so, the bridges that he had to collapse mm, in order mm, to build new one. Okay. So, Doc, um, just a second. I want to introduce Professor Smart Sapon, who mm. has joined us in the studio to talk about it. But uh, so, just so you know, Prof, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us here. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we will get you talking in a bit. But, um, um, Jonathan, I am thinking about so is it that alan is not a lucky candidate because what was done to him right you would expect sympathy but it's mm. rather backfired every single thing why is it because, it, because of the emergence of he started Kenwan? too late 
Mm. You see, how. you needed to go to them and let them know that. Go with the president. Don't go with the government. Ah. You go with the president that this is a president who said that he's going to support me when my time is due. That alone will make people feel that the president is, is treacherous. Mm -hmm. mm. Because you, he did, you did the same for him. Yes. The sacrifice Alan gave mm -hmm. is a huge thing because he would have incurred cost. His integrity was on the line. That yeah. one inured to the benefit of his political career. Both then and now, it should have been. So you needed to let people know, why is the president now not supporting me after he had said so? That is your source of the sympathy. So it wouldn't have mattered whatever that Obama would have paid. So now it looks like Alan was comfortable in the government. Yes. Um, first, first um, you sacrifice your integrity. Because even yes. to serve in the government, yes. people thought he was, for, be, for want of a better word, too big to serve in the government. But he did, as straight minister, to serve under Ekufuadu. The only problem with that is, if you don't, others will consider that to be in betrayal. Right. Like in the case of uh, Kabinet Japan. Yes. Yeah. They will, they will think that it amounts to betrayal. So is he an unlucky person? Well, because at this point, the person with the power right now, the bargaining power, is Kennedy a Japan, not mm -hmm. Alan Kredit Not at all. Is it luck that's playing out here? <laughs> or is just the realistic... Timing has been wrong. Yeah. We've been having wrong timings. Oh. With respect to the calculation, evaluation, I don't know. You see, Alan, I have met him once at the airport. And I mean, does he have money? Does he have resources? Does he, does he come across well, as... Well, the Alan Cash probably was because of the establishment. Mm -hmm. Really? So, yes. so... I feel so that like if... Alan Cash is the reason. If, <laughs> if President Kufour then had supported Aliu, right. he would have won. Ah. He could have won. And you see, that the Baumia effect too is because the MPP, I want to give you some insight. Right. The MPP wants to rid itself of the iconistic... Tag. Tag. Right. And that is what they are also using out there. Mm. But someone also from the grapevine has told me something that Dr. Baumia doesn't really have the support of the party. And that they know that they, will, they are likely to lose the 2024. But they want to send him there. So that when he loses, they will say at least. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, pre we presented a non account candidate. So you have no business tagging MPP as too what account oriented. Mm. Wow. And that it doesn't really have control. But I have also said that, look, Dr. Baumia is just, do you think that Dr. Baumia will have the clout that he's having today? Yeah if he did not have the support of the establishment. I doubt. He's no different from Aliu. The late Aliu is not. Right. You get the point. But today, the dynamics have changed because he has the tacit support. But Who it, have it, the it, resources? Right. They, the, they have the resources. But there's something else that I want to... You see, the figures that he had in Eastern and Ashanti region, mm -hmm. if these Huge. figures are anything to go by, I think that it sends a message to the NDC. So I'm waiting to see how One message, that... I don't get it. I'm, bidding, so, I'm waiting okay. to see how that will reflect in the 4th November 1. Okay. If it does, then it means that the Tabaumia is a force to reckon with. In, Even in Ashanti region. Thank you. Okay. Because we know that uh, my, my brother will tell you, Look, when you win a certain percentage in Ashanti mm -hmm. as the NDC party, then it means that you're on the threshold of winning the 2020. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if I, you see, this, this may not be a true reflection. You know why? Because the people who went to vote. Yes, we were going to talk about yeah, it. The who I went mean, to vote, they, they are described as contractors. Yes. <laughs> the, and, and well, the, the grassroots will get angry because these people are going to benefit twice. Ah, right, right. So I think it's, uh, I, I want to bring uh, Musa in. Musa, you're, you're listening to what he says about, you know, news in the grapevine. I mean, I know you want to speak to data, yeah, is but data, um, is it possible, is it likely, does your data support, you know, presenting a non to break that whole perception of uh, 
NPP not being an arcanistic, you know, party presenting because we're likely to lose 2024 elections. And then, you know, we take our uh, uh, party back, as they say, you know, like they've taken the country back. It, it, does that... Um, does, um, I will yeah. say it this way. Okay. With the exception of January 2022 polls. Right. That um, Baumia was doing better than Alan among all Ghanaians. Okay. All the subsequent polls, Alan has been doing better than Baumia. Okay. So the data supports Alan to be the best candidate. Oh. So if you argue that you want to bring Baumia, then it must not be the data you are using. Okay. It must be something I, else. Clarify that. It, because that that you, means it, it will support what he is saying. <laughs> Right, so the data, do, do, he's, he's simply saying that mm -hmm. the, the, the January polls they conducted, Dr. Baumia led, but subsequent to that, he's lost all of them. But Alan Chairman saying, so he speaks to what you're saying in the grapevine that yes, let's present Baumia mm -hmm. and lose mm -hmm. and say, okay, we've done it, we've broken the jinx, so let's go back to our. I mean, again, because against Mahama, neither Baumia nor Alan is winning. He's winning. Okay, so if that is the fact that will pan out, that it is better off for MPP to present Baumia and lose and, and get the baggage of their neck. And get the baggage of non Akan yes. party of their neck. Wow. Professor Smart, I think it's time to bring you in uh, here. Uh, I'm sure you've been following the discussion. And when you said when you said smart, I was going to say that that's a smart move by the MPP. <laughs> <laughs> is it a smart no, that's a cruel move to be very honest. Well that's, smart in a very cruel way. J J Jonathan, is that not cruel? Um, no, let me see. Let, let me come okay, in quickly. Okay, okay, okay. Let me come in quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they are hoping that with the election of Baumi as a flag bearer, the poll numbers could improve, could change. Okay. Uh, but, but for now, if you're going to use the data, purely the data, who is the best to be sent to the country, the data has been consistent. Okay. In Alan. Alan. Yes. Wow. Okay. And it, it, I, I mean, just to respond to you know, what Annie was saying, like smart moving, I think you're right. Isn't that rather cruel? <laughs> Oh, there's nothing like cruel. smart to be cruel. <laughs> Politics. <laughs> Politics. Uh -huh. Well, we, we sacrifice others in order to gain something. Mm. A politician, when he has no use of you, quite inconsiderate. Wow. Um, but about me, as I said, he's a smart guy. Right. Um, the problem is that he's not demonstrated leadership at the enclave that he has. Mm. And he has his open strings tied to the president and the fortune of the president. So, you see, if you want anyone who can defend the record of the current president better than anybody, it cannot be anyone apart from Dr. Baumia. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, that is why the establishment will be behind. Okay. So, we'll bring Professor Smart up on in. Uh, but before yeah. that, um, my colleague at the Electoral Commission, uh, who is reporting for us, Winston Taki, is saying that uh, the fifth, so just as we had on the screen, and I'm sure they'll bring that back on the screen, uh, the, tie, the fifth position, a runoff will be conducted next week Saturday, next week Saturday by the parties, uh, per the parties uh, constitutional provision. That's what Winston Tucker <coughs> is reporting to us. So uh, we'll bring you details for that. You saw there's a tie between um, former energy uh, minister, and, uh, yes, and Adai Nimo uh, Ejakun. Wache Jaco and Adainimo. It's just nine. They want to separate and see who makes the top five and pair. What Winston Taki is reporting uh, should be next uh, week, Saturday. So, actually, a week from today, we will know whether it's Wache Jaco or Adainimo, Wache Jaco or Adainimo, who would be going there. We'll be bringing you more uh, results from, I, I see Professor, um, uh, former Speaker of Parliament here. And uh, a few others. We'll put all of them on the screen uh, very soon. But Professor Smart-Sapo, you've listened to the conversation mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, the ranking. I, 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 I just want to get your first thoughts on Kennedy in Japan. The move during the elections, post-election results. Are you equally surprised, dumbfounded, gobsmacked? What is it? How are you feeling about his second place? Yeah. Thank you so much, Bridge, and uh, good afternoon to the team viewers out there. Uh, outstanding performance, I should say, a very outstanding performance. It started with uh, the pundits tipping him to place third. And so if the reality is that he's at the second position, then he deserves a thumbs up. Um, 
He was targeting 200 votes. My last follow-up on wow. his rounds. Wow. He was very certain of a 200 votes out of the 600 and something. Wow. And he gets 139 mm. or so. Yeah. Yeah, very close to his target. Right. Sometimes you need to set high targets so that if you miss it, you, you can still be within the within safest uh, range. So he's done well. The surprise, only two sources of surprise to me, okay. is the number of votes that Chief Alan will get after mm. all his in investments over the years, uh, 97 or so, and then the ability of uh, Adai Nimo to enter into the five. Because for me, uh, he was not going to make it to the five. And I ever said on, on programs that this time he's not going to be lucky as he was in 2014. But the reality is here with us. And Honorable Adenimo, like it or not, is part of. Now they are going to uh, um, contest a runoff, next yes. week, a yes. runoff, and see between Wache Jako and himself who is going to join. It's an interesting outcome. What is not too surprising is the vice president leading. Yes. Uh, and then Ken Ejapo and Alan being part of the first three. Of mm -hmm. course, it's also not surprising that <coughs> Dr. Uh, Uswe Friya is it's also there, right. at the fourth position. What right. for me is surprising is the swap in position between Ken and Alan. Right. And then the inclusion <coughs> of Adenimo uh, at this point. Okay. And, and Prof, again, uh, we're staying on Kennedy and Alan. What words, what, what, like you said, the investments Mr. Alan Chamante has made over the years, since 2007 uh, till now, only for him to garner just about 90, not even 100 votes. Yeah. What, what, is, what, is, what is working against Mr. Alan Chamante? Great. So the, my initial arrangement in terms of mask was going to be that 60% of the basis for decision is going to be based on the candidate's ability to demonstrate that over the period before today, you have been with the constituents or okay. the, the grassroots. Okay. If you're able to sell that message very well and demonstrate practically that you are not just a vote for me, now go and sit in Accra, you never see me again or hear from me again, but you regularly, as regular as you can, visit okay. us or we hear from you and that relationship exists. So relationship for me, accounted for 60% of the, of the choices that has right. gone on okay. today. And right. it went in favor of Honorable Kennedy Japan more than Chief Alan Chermartin. That is not to say he's not close to the, 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 the grassroots, mm. but it tells you how closer Ken is to the grassroots okay. than uh, himself. Because he went against the establishment. So, um, Prof, we'll come to you just shortly. Uh, let's listen to the declaration of official results um, by the Electoral Commission. And when we put the results together, these are the figures. Can on him at the form has 132 votes. Alan Kojo Martin had 95 votes. Joe Gatti had four votes. Kojo Pogu had three votes. Ozu Afriya Kodo had 36 votes. Kobuna Ajay at the form had six votes. And Francis Aden Mo had nine votes. Kofi Kunadu Apogu had zero votes. Kwachi Ajako had nine votes. Mahmoud Baumia had 629 votes. So when you, you, you ask her to give you five people. Yes. So clearly you can see from these figures that Kanaja Japan is selected among the five. Alan Kujaji Martin is one of the five. Osu Afia Koto is the one of the five, and Mahmoud Bame is the another one of the five. Then when you come to the fifth position, two, two people tie. So there's a tie between Francis Aden Mo, nine votes, and Bachi Ajakon, nine votes. Meaning we have we have the four for you. 
and the two have tied, so the party will have to take a decision with respect to breaking the tie. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The real on the field conduct of the election is on your hands. At this moment, everything that is being said about and around is provisional. Now you are going to declare officially here at the NDP headquarters, hand over the results to us, and we we'll proceed from there. Thank you very much. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Chair of the, the party election committee. Thank you, uh, and the vice chairman. We did a lot of discussion with you and take it to the committee. Uh, first, I want to declare that I came with my team. This is Mr. Makebwadu, our director for training, acting director for public affairs. Mr. Uh, Amangwa is, uh, Amangwa is one of our legal team members, and my deputy, Mr. Kwa, is also the deputy of the electoral assembly. On behalf of the chairperson of the commission, we are grateful. Is this country, if you're Nyame, President Akutwa, member who showed down, Vice President, member who showed down, Mama chasing me agents. I'm not for shut them. What the embassy? What the embassy be embassy you have? Yes. Me join me. Me challenge the president. Go for any time. Right, and that video, last video you saw of the member of parliament for Assistance Central, one of the five will be contesting on November 4, um, Kennedy or Hineja upon there. Uh, that statement is trending. I've seen Kwame A plus uh, talking about it, that let's get ready to rumble so, for the so showdown bad. between Nanatu and uh, <laughs> Kennedy or Hineja upon. I mean, it sounds serious and also laughable at the same time, but in the studio here, we have Jonathan Asantiochi with us, political analyst, uh, executive director of the Global Info Analytics, uh, Musa Dankwa, and also Professor Smart Sapon himself, Prof himself, who did his own prediction. Prof, I remember earlier when we spoke, uh, your prediction, uh, let's go over that. So you said, okay, I can, three names are in. I think you put the four. Um, so, a four. Okay. Yes, the, the first four, in my view, were going to be uh, the four that we have. Okay. It is the fifth that I gave it for between uh, Honorable Joe Gatti ah. and then uh, the Cabinet Japan, okay. any of the two. Okay. In my view, Bache Jaku was not going to make it uh, to, the, to the five. And now, surprisingly, or due to hard work, uh, <laughs> he, is, he is in a tie with Honorable Adenimo. As for Honorable Adenimo, I never brought him anywhere close to, to, to the five. So he's Move done well. It tells you the role of experience in all these things. He has been in it before. He got inclusion into the five. In that, at that time in 2014, there were seven. Uh, against the Honorable Stephen Asamoah Boateng, against Dr. Kunedu Apreku, he gained inclusion, placing Ted along with Honorable Jogate. So yes, experience has played out here. And I mean, I can't say but to uh, give him a very big congratulations. We hope that next week, around this time, uh, if he's able to make it into the five, he would have then consolidated his experience uh, in, in a game like this. So, uh, thumbs up, honorable. We, we will talk about the top five, but what do you think worked against uh, a candidate like Kwabena Ejapon or Joe Gatti? And it, it's crazy because you're not the first. I heard a lot of experts. In fact, there was even uh, uh, our own little raffle here in the newsroom where Joe Gatti featured in most of the top five papers. Why was his name prominent and uh, why did he not make it? What do you think worked against him or Kwabena Japan? Yeah, his name was among the top five partly because of the monopoly he enjoyed. You mm -hmm. see, for the other regions or the, the core, the NPP Ashanti region, they had as many as five to six aspirants coming from there. I say right. five to six because Alan along the line was also claiming the centre along with the Ashanti. Right. So the, the centre of the attraction, which was uh, Ashanti region, was to be shared among six mm -hmm. of the aspirants. And he was alone at the Western 
uh, region. Right. And I was thinking if he had taken full advantage of that opportunity due to past relationship with the people, mm -hmm. he would have maximized his inclusion. Unfortunately, uh, he appeared not to have campaigned much in his own home region than he did in other regions. And the region, the delegates were feeling like, why, why does he feel he doesn't need to talk to us? Mm -hmm. uh, is it the case that we are just there and that without any commitment or assurance, yeah. we are supposed to just go and vote? So I think the lessons are that next time, he should start from home and make sure he maximizes his chances at home. Right. See Honorable Kennedy Japan in Central Region. You see, so once he is able to get that match in Central Region, even though he, he didn't place first, it cushions you. It, it sets you up for uh, the little little to add up, and then you are in. So yes, let's try it and see Honorable uh, see the Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in his own home, home region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you must maximize your home region so that the others will have mercy on you and you will be a uh -huh. So there I think is where Honorable Jogate missed it out. He failed okay. to maximize the monopoly he should have enjoyed from his region. Okay. But if you can stay a bit longer in the Ashanti region, can you analyze Dr. Baumia's strengths in the superdelegates in the Ashanti region? Yeah, Dr. Baumia in Ashanti region, and in my earlier poll, he had 73, uh, 93. So now he's, he's having 97, and it means he did above what I was expecting him mm. to have amongst the delegates, the 119 or so delegates who voted. Partly because um, of the, and, and one of the, I think Jonathan mentioned it, or Musa mentioned it, the arcanization of the NPP party. They wanted to lead the crusade that, uh, it is not true that the NPP is just an Akan party and that even from Ashanti, they are willing to, to show the lead. The time was favorable for uh, Honorable, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in Ashanti, a time where they needed to prove that NPP is not an Akan party and they wanted to take the lead. And so many of the delegates decided that they were going to start and be the source of the message that NPP is not just an Akan party. And the way they carved the Adankwa Dumbo um, uh, Buzia thing and the interpretations that were assigned in the past, it suggested that anybody who wanted to follow that so-called tradition at this time should be looking towards a candidate from outside the two main regions, the Eastern and the Ashanti. So yes, as the root of the party, I think they wanted to be the source of the neutralization of that long-existing <coughs> assumption that the MPP is an Akan party. And let's also not take away his personal uh, involvement in issues that has got to do with Ashanti region. He visits there almost every weekend mm -hmm. or, or once every two weeks. Part of all activities going on there, funerals, social level issues. You remember one of the occasions he had to uh, go against protocol. Protocol had it that he needed to travel to the U.S. And there was an MP whose father or mother also had uh, at Chumangwe be just south or so. He had to quickly, he, find, he attaches some level of uh, uh, seriousness to things that has got to do with the Ashanti region. Perhaps carefully so because he needed to have their buy-in if he wants to progress politically. <sighs> The root of the MPP needed to be your friend. You needed to pay extra attention to the rules. He has done that perfectly well, and I think he deserves the votes he got in Ashanti. Okay. And uh, your life here on Metro TV, it's a post uh, delegate, super delegate um, discussions uh, on what you have seen, the ranking, of course, the talked about, most talked about, most surprising lead and moving on. We don't know what Kennedy is upon. So unpredictable what he's going to do. Number two, so Dr. Baumia, uh, Kennedy is upon, and Alan Kwejo Tremanting. And yet the national polls favor Alan Kwejo Tremanting. Mm. We'll take a short break, and then when we come back, we'll have uh, Musa Dankwam uh, speak to us just briefly, and then he will take leave of us, and then we'll have another uh, super talented, extreme, you know, professional, experienced political analysts also join us here in the street. Stay with us here on Metro Television. We'll be right back.
Right, those were earlier celebrations or jubilation at the Bahomia Campaign Center, where they also collated the uh, results. Earlier, you also heard a woman. Uh, she spoke to our central regional correspondent, Akwesiadi. So if you don't speak Fanti, um, she, this journalist simply posed a question of uh, where the delegates in the central region voted and they voted overwhelmingly for the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, and she was upset, livid. We had to believe some of the words that she used, that she could not believe that her, 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 her delegates or superdelegates voted for Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. We'll see how that plays out. 
on November 4, so in case you don't understand, Fanti, that's a, a summary of what uh, she said. Uh, of course, I can't repeat the insults that uh, she reigned on the leaders. But in the studio, we have Professor, Professor Smart Sapon with us. Uh, uh, he, uh, he was making a point about the top five who made it, who uh, is shocked to be in the top five. You know, there's a tie, and so we'll have a runoff uh, that uh, my colleague, Winston Takis, reporter, should be next week, Saturday. That's a week from today. We still have Executive Director for the Global Info Analytics with us, uh, Musa Dankwa, and then uh, political analyst uh, Asante Oshri also with us. And then we have been joined by Dr. Asasari. He's also a political scientist. Uh, good evening, Doctor, and thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. A quick correction. The name is Asan Asante. As Asa. 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 Asante. Asa Asante. Asa Asante. Yeah. I said Asari. Or yeah, you said Asari. Asari. Oh, yeah. sincere My name apology. Is, uh, Dr. Jonathan Asante. Yes, please. Oh, thank you very much for the question. Because I know we, we have uh, <laughs> it's Asante and Asante. Asante, Asante. Uh, okay, all right. But you're not related? No, no, no. Ah, okay, all right. But unless, thank you. unless we check. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to get a quick word in on the uh, ranking as you saw and in your analysis, if anything shocked you, what shocked you about it, and then moving forward, uh, what should the larger populace, the larger college who will be voting on November 4 be looking out for? I think it was an interesting contest. Right. By all standards. Uh, we saw, uh, you know, the establishment candidate topping the whole list. Right. And that was a fact. I also saw um, the fact that ethnicity and regionalism did not play any role mm. in election. And it confirms some of the things that we have learned in the literature, that they play very insignificant role in politics. Because if that argument is anything to go by, then you want to say that any time there's election in Ghana, and I can't you win. But even the Fourth Republic has proved this theory wrong. Mm. Are you with me? So look at Ashanti reading, where the Ashanti boys, Jako scoring zero, Kunedu Apreku scoring zero, and the rest of them, and Baumia, somebody not from that land winning. It tells you that there were other factors that influenced voter choices other than what? Regionalism or ethnicity. And right. I, but I want to pose that question to you. So what, what factors do you think influenced that? Yeah. The establishment candidate factor was very strong. Okay. And it worked. Uh, if you look at even the structure of the voting, you know, the, the group, you realize that the, most of them are people who have certain positions with the government. And all things being equal, you saw that how they demonstrated loyalty to Dr. Bao, Baumia. That is not to say that Baumia himself did not message himself very well. His messages and things he had done for the party also played out. Mm. But quite apart from that, we also saw that uh, idea that people are sick and tired about the establishment candidate. And they didn't want anybody who had been in government before, or this current government. So that is why Alan, sorry, Kennedy, Kennedy Japan comes in so strongly. Mm. As that, an outlier, even though yes. he's an MP, yes. not necessarily government. No, he's appoint. not part of, right. he's Got an it. MP, he's not part right. of the executive. Got it. Got it. But the executive and the, 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 the whole government machinery, uh, you know, you realize that people wanted to deviate from that. And that's why you saw Kennedy Japan coming out strongly. Quite apart from that, the also one of the deficits of this government is that there's a government, if you look at the president, he believes in so much of loyalty instead of competence. Mm. All right, because we've seen uh, some of the ministers which we believe that they should have gone home long time, but they still keep them because they are what? Loyal to the president and all that. Finance minister yes. had the whole majority and MPs a against whole him. Lot. So they there. believe that. They need somebody who will be competent enough uh, to be able to come and manage things for them. And then they also require somebody who is bold and speak through to power. It doesn't matter who is at the receiving end of that message. And they believe that that quality are in what Kennedy and Japan, all right? And that is one of the things that also played out. Another thing was also the fact that they needed people with ideas. Kennedy. I like it or not, came up with fantastic ideas. It doesn't matter whether it was not rooted in theory and all that, 
but it could resonate with the rank and file of the people. And remember that loyalty also came in. Kennedy, all the years of work that he had done for the party, you saw how they supported mm -hmm. him through thick and thin with that kind of support. Because one would have thought that giving Alan a kind of contribution, which Kennedy himself believed that Alan is a senior, but you saw how he beat him to it. <laughs> so it tells you that those other factors all uh, seriously change the game. But uh, the, the, it is going to be more interesting as we move towards November 4, because there a lot of things are going to change. For instance, if we get to runoff, you are going to see what alliances, all right? Already I have put my ears on the ground and I'm getting an inkling that there are people who are ready for that thing to happen for them to what? Align mm -hmm. easily. Alliances um, from? From, you know, the, out of the five, the establishment yeah. candidate will be it's there. It's there. untouchable. Yes. yes. But alliances will be among what? The Ashanti group. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. And now you have what? Um, Alan. Mm -hmm. You have, uh, you know. Boache. Boache. We are changing our own order anymore, mm. and Ashanti. Okay, yes, yes. All right. right. And then um, another person, which is um, Ose Akuto. Ose Akuto. Ose Akuto. Yes. This is Ashanti block. Mm. Are you with me? But I believe, from where I said, I believe strongly that if there are alliances and uh, alliances and push come to shove, you are not likely to have the support of Dr. Akuto, who is a bosom friend of the president. So mm. obviously, he will gravitate towards what the establishment candidate to make the Baumia ticket very strong, all right? Uh, I, I, I foresee that. And then you have other groups also uh, coming together to rally behind one person, Ada Alan or Buachi okay. Sorry, uh, or Kennedy Ejapong. Kennedy Ejapong. Wow. So it's going to be extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. But one thing that also played out was that that caused also the problem of um, Alan was the fact that Alan could not campaign vigorously right he could not articulate does, does clearly it, does it come from feeling entitled you know the whole tagline it's our time kind of puts him at a disadvantage it's not simply saying look it's my time vote for me it's my time i have waited this long is, is that it's, why it's part of it but it's not the only reason okay the, the real reason is that alan i take it or leave it alan is not charismatic enough hmm. yeah and that has been with him for a very long time but even though i admit that is a man of ideas. He has a lot of innovative ideas, and he is somebody who can walk his talk and all that, right? But you know, uh, politics is nothing but what contest of ideas. So ideas, you need to be able to articulate them, articulate them clearly. So he's not okay. selling well. Yeah, he's not. And if you look at it carefully, you realize that it's more of his apparatchiks. Mm -hmm. In other words, the the these uh, you know party spokesman yes. sorry his campaign Spokes managers person, and yes. who were doing the talking oh. as opposed to he himself who was to run the whole show that really uh, went against him but as we we are gravitating towards November fourth one of the things that are going to be the 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 the, the, the difficult hurdles for Bahumia, Alan to cross is that. They've been part and parcel of this government. Mm. And if you look at the research, it tells you that one of the factors that it has always influenced voter choices, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter political tradition, ideology, and all that, is the economy, isn't it? And how far we have arrived here from where we come from in terms of the economy, Bahumia and what? Alan have a million dollar question to answer, awesome. all right? Against the backdrop that Bahumia is what there's no doubt about the fact that he's very intelligent he knows his economics and all that but the question is what Delivery. how are we why are we here deliverables why are we here mm. and that question uh, remains a daunting one for him okay to call all and right. if you look at also uh, the same question will be posed to what uh alan chairman i think that you have also been part, part and parcel of, of the gov government because yes. uh you know trade it's an in integral part of the economy. Mm -hmm. So there's another question for him to what, answer. Is if, that why he feels to go hard? I mean, Kennedy Japan goes hard, hits hard. It doesn't matter who he's hitting, as long as that will give him the edge in the polls. Yes, so obviously politics is who gets what, when, and how. The approach doesn't matter. At the end of the day, is the results that you want, isn't it? But the real issue is that if you also attack people and you attack them without measure, you end up destroying all the candidates. <laughs> and remember, when we made victorious, how do you repackage him?
for the national assignment. Okay. That becomes what? Right. An, a difficult one. Okay. And then uh, if you also look at the, 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 the fact that if Baumia wins, finally, or uh, Kennedy and Japan, we are going to play to them the various statements they've made. So, I mean, you can talk about Kennedy's our best. They are there for him to deal with. And that one is going to militate against his campaign in the sense that whilst everybody expects you to campaign and forge ahead, you'll be answering questions on things you have said over the years. All right. And that is why in you know political communication, when you are developing messages or you are putting somebody across for voters to consider, yeah. you look at the baggage, whether you have too much. If you have too much, then you need to wardrobe. drop. That okay. is not to say that. Uh, Kennedy has too much, no, okay, but I'm so doing the analysis, all right? right? So if you have some, then your team must be able to have your answers right. when those issues come to the fore. Okay. The same thing is going to what, work against Dr. Baumia too, mm. and that oh, people sorry. are going to say that you have, you have said so many things, but where are the evidence, right. where are the results and all that. Okay, Dr. Sassan, say kindly hold on a bit, uh, Musa Danko would leave us, but before he leaves us, I would want to get his final thoughts on uh, what next? I know you speak to evidence, you speak to the polls. Uh, what, what, what is the next uh, polling that you intend to conduct? We are going to in, uh, conduct the next poll in October, uh, okay. October 1st to around 10th October. Okay. That will be the national tracking poll for okay. all voters. And then in the uh, third week of October, before the primaries, we'll do the MPP only delegate polls. What we're doing now is longitudinal studies. We spoke to a number of uh, delegates, 3,500 sometime in June. Mm. We are going back to the same people, try to speak to them again, and see whether they've changed their mind or they've got a new direction going to the November poll. So interesting times ahead uh, from Global Info. Hopefully, mm. uh, results will be out by 20th October. Okay, and um, when, before Dr. Asasanti, you know, dropped, he talks about baggage. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Baumia has said a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you ask, you know, what are the deliver deliverables? When you go out and you do the polls, if I, even the July poll, what was the dominant thing that worked against Dr. Baumia? Because in the polling, you mentioned that Alan Kwejo Truman, he beat him in all the polling except January. Yes. No, we, we asked voters what were the reasons for making their choices that we were making. Right. We had competence as one, man of integrity as one, somebody who can better manage the economy is two, someone who can transform the country. And, and I think one part I can remember. On all these factors, against we, we, we did Baumia against Mahama and Alan against Mahama. In all those uh, criteria, even though Mahama was beating Baumia, Alan was much closer, closing the gap between him and, and Mahama on the same matrix, especially on the economy. People trusted Alan more on the economy than the economy of Dr. Baumia, and that is the biggest problem he has. And the economy is the number one issue for Ghanaians. Okay, all right. And when, you said next month? October. October. Yes. And then the final one is third before the, yes, yes, yes. the, the voting. Two weeks before the, uh, uh, the primaries. That one will be MPP delegate polls who come out. Musa Dankwa, thank you very much for always coming to the studio and especially trusting Metro TV to break your polls for you. We're grateful for the work that you're putting. And yes, we'll be here. We'll be, we'll be first to break the poll when it comes out, uh, the one on national, to see how the uh, voters are currently thinking or reasoning post the super delegate uh, uh, elections that we just witnessed. Uh, my, my colleague Annie took a water break. She'll be joining us uh, shortly. Uh, but earlier, if you missed the announcement by Dr. Kwaku at the Electoral Commission, at the party's headquarters, he's the Electoral uh, Elections Director there, please uh, kindly watch this, together with Professor Mike Okwe. The, the these are the fears. Ken Ohin and Japan has 132 votes. Alan Kojo Tremantin had 95 votes. Joe Gatti had 4 votes. Kojo Pogo had 3 votes. Osu Afriya Kojo had 36 votes. Kobuna Ajia Japan had 6 votes. 
Francis Adel Mo had nine votes. Kofi Fernando Apebo had zero votes. Boachi Ajako had nine votes. Mahmoud Baumia had 629 votes. So one you, you, you asked her to give you five people. Yes. So clearly you can see from these figures that Canada Japan is elected among the five. Alan Kodrati Martin is one of the five. Osu Afia Kodo is one of the five. And Mahmoud Bamiya is the another one of the five. Then when it comes to the fifth position, two, two people tie. So there's a tie between Francis Adenimo, nine votes, and Bochi Ajakon, nine votes. Meaning we have, we have the four for you, and the two have tied. So the party will have to take a decision who is going to make you the tie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The real on the field conduct of the election is on your hands. At this moment, everything that is being said about and around is provisional. Now you are going to declare officially here at the MPP headquarters, hand over the results to us, and we proceed from there. Thank you very much. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Chair of the, the Party Election Committee. Thank you. Uh, and the Vice Chairman. We did a lot of meetings uh, with you and take it to the committee. Uh, first, I want to declare that I came with my team. This is Mr. Markeford, our data for training, acting data for public affairs. Mr. Uh, Amangwa is, uh, Amangwa is one of our legal team members, and my deputy, Mr. Kwa, is also deputy of the uh, Network Service. On behalf of the Chairperson of the Commission, we are grateful for. Right, welcome back to Metro TV's live uh, coverage of the post super delegate uh, elections, which you witnessed. And Dr. Baumia won with over 600 votes, followed by this surprising, uh, forthright, uh, eloquent, uh, abrasive Kennedy Ohine Japon, who came second, uh, member of parliament for Western Central, followed by the uh, Mr. Alan Kojo Chairman, who has also shocked a lot of people by just being 
III. My guests are Dr. Jonathan Asante Ochoi, a political analyst, Dr. Asa Asante, also political analyst. Professor Smart Sapod is the director of innovations and uh, research and research Kumasi at uh, the, the K Kumasi. KSDU, uh, which mm -hmm. became famous recently for sacking over 600 students for the payment of fees. <laughs> Prof, uh, <laughs> Prof um, nice I, I, I know, uh, before we, we went on the break, yes. you know, um, Dr. Asasanti, you know, spoke about the factors, you know, that influenced uh, why uh, each candidate placed uh, where they were. What, for you, what were the reasons why you think Mr. Alan Chamante performed uh, poorly, if I should put it that way. Oh, I see. The the what I would want to where I would want to start. From, you want to talk about the establishment. Yes. So let's talk uh -huh. about it. So we'll let, talk let's about the reasons. From the yes. You said you have uh -huh. a, a different a different understanding, understanding of, of what the establishment an establishment okay, is. Okay, go ahead. Based on the uh, results that we have, have in seen. front okay. of us, okay. right? Okay. So if you have sixty-seven, and I see, I define establishment to include this class of people who went into the polls today, super delegates. So they include the chairman and everybody else that voted today. That is the establishment. I don't limit my definition of establishment to the Jubilee House. Right. As if it is the Jubilee House or some few people who are imposing uh, one of these candidates on the 961. Right. It is the entire 961 that is the establishment. Mm -hmm. So they have taken the decision. Ah. That is where I differ with the views that has been shared earlier. Right. As if even amongst this 961, there are some maybe 10 or 60 people out right. there. So the establishment the... have picked their candidates. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that is, that that is, that that's an is, interesting perspective. Uh, Dr. Asante, yeah, you disagree very You disagree very How yeah, so? It's all over <laughs> stretching of the issue. You see, we will come back to yes, that. We, we will just, and yes, I, I like controversial <laughs> I like, positions. I like that. My position has been so because uh, I, do not, I do not foresee or think that this level of delegates would sit down, uh, put aside their own convictions, and allow a certain subgroup from this group to tell them what to do. Hmm. All right, so a constituency chairpersons, I can imagine maybe Ayawaso West Wogon constituency chairman having his own convictions over the candidates hmm. and sitting down to wait for maybe somebody from Jubilee House to detect to him where his vote should go okay. at this level. These are not people you can intimidate, constituency chairmen, MPs, regional executives. But they are people you can buy with money. So, so let's address that, <laughs> that issue too. You see, none of these candidates who showed up, except maybe for one or two of them, I'm, I'm, mm. maybe we can say Dr. Preku got zero because maybe he didn't give anybody TNT. Mm. But speaking for the first four, they have all one way or the other admitted that Money. they gave some form of TNT. Right. It is perhaps in the quantum. And the last time we were having a conversation, and, and I dropped my point when you lifted the amount mm. to somewhere 10,000. Right. There it changes from TNT right. to some level right. of Right, I remember news in But even in that instance, I can't imagine a constituency chairman or an MP whose mind would change because you gave him maybe 20,000. Okay. He sold his conviction, he sold his, his, his love for the party for an amount of maybe 10,000 Ghana CD, and because of that, put away his conviction and everything and went to vote for a certain candidate. Okay. Partly also because I have been, uh, I've been part of the, what happened in the Ashanti region. I conducted a survey went to the people, and the people confided in me as to who they would want to be, Ashanti Regional uh, uh, Chairman of the NPP, for instance. Yeah, so people then say uh, uh, he wins or he won because of money. From where I sit, and the people who confided in me, I would have had a different view because when I went, I couldn't have gone with any money. I went with just my instrument, right. and I was interviewing them. And if they could confide in me and say, oh, they are all our party people, but we think that for the nature of the coming election, uh, Wun Timi is perhaps the one who can go the rough way along with whatever strategy the NDC will come with. So 
yes, they are all our people, but we are going to vote for the president. But me, when I sit and I hear other people using other reasons as the reason why Dr. Bahu, uh, 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 going to me won, okay. I, I find it quite uh, strange because okay. I went to the people and they confined it, knowing I have no interest. Confined and say, oh, Charlie, the elections ahead is not going to be an easy one. So, yes, all the other candidates are good. But we think here and in the case of this particular coming 2024, we should go with the same guy. Okay. So that is where my argument comes from. Okay. For me, we played with or perhaps engaged with all these 961 as many as we could. And it appeared that from their own conviction, they were all adults and they are all adults. And they are not people <laughs> for me that yeah, could be induced all at right. their level. Thank you. Think about it. At their level, the level of a minister or an MP. Or not all of, of them, though. Not the, region, the constituency chairman are uh, perhaps the... the I, would, I don't want to use the word list because I know of a, I, I a, guess a certain in terms of rankings, where I mean, even in terms of profile. Station, even polling station executives are doctors and professors. Right. I know of a constituency okay. where... Uh, so, largely, I want to sum up and say, when I hear the word uh, establishment, this is the best establishment okay. the MPP have. Okay. Going so, forward from okay. here. Okay, you will still answer my question on uh, uh, okay. Alan's performance. But before that, my colleague Annie Ifampofo is still with us. She took a tea break. I, I didn't know Ghanaians took tea breaks, but yeah. We discover things every. She's here. She'll be firing a few questions uh, in a turn, but I think she, you see she starts something in her mouth when they put the camera on it. Maybe but, uh, it was a cocoa break. <laughs> a cocoa break, <laughs> Dr. Asantia. I mean, you listened to his, yes, uh, I did. and he said you disagree vehemently on his definition and understanding of you know, the establishment. Yeah, the professor candidate. said that mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the caliber of people, there's you no way that. Easily somebody can easily influence them mm -hmm. into voting one way or the other. Right. Right. I disagree. Right. Why? Then what is the point of campaigning? Mm -hmm. Once you are campaigning, you are what? You know, the presenting your issues your to, to the person. Yes. And when the person is convinced, he follows you. Right. All right. That is it. So there is a point in people saying that there's an establishment what can they establishment they are talking about, they are talking about what? The, the government of the day, and we are looking at that, what incumbency advantage here, where you have all the state resources behind. that is behind that particular candidate. That particular candidate, from look of things, is far ahead of you in terms of what resource. Because resources. for you to win Absolutely. election, three things are critical resources, strategy, message. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? You can discount resources. Mm -hmm. And when you have a government, the whole government machinery, behind a particular person, it changes the dynamics. So that is why I said, I disagree. Right. And disagree vehemently. Right. Because the establishment... And, and, and more so, the uh, spokespersons for the others made several allegations of yes. uh, inducements. Yeah. And because in induce... fact, they even mentioned people being camped at a hotel, which we even verified and found out, yes, even though the candidates who sponsored denied sponsoring, the uh, spokesperson denied sponsoring. The and, and what we are talking about is deny. not only the fact that maybe you are going to benefit materially mm -hmm. from that. Sometimes you even you have eyed a certain position, mm -hmm. and it's the president who what allocates that right. position. Right. All right. You will always what do the bidding of the president, and these are the things that change the dynamics. Right. right? If you are a CEO, all right, you are in a certain position. You are in a position which is what appointive. Mm -hmm. Remember, the president has the right to what? Appoint you or disappoint you right. or remove you. <laughs> like and that. these are some of the things that will change the dynamic. When we say that, when the establishment is behind somebody, it is a great force. It's like fighting with what? The elephant, if you are an ant. Right. Before Dr. Jonathan. Yeah, so, okay. so, Bridge, what I'm saying is that, and he started by saying all of them went to campaign and convinced Mm -hmm. And it forms part of his definition of or, or perhaps explanation to the establishment. This is an opportunity that was given to all of them. Mm -hmm. All right. And if a certain establishment was pushing onto the field, the campaign field, CEOs okay. and ministers and all those things, they were not the ones going to vote. CEOs did not vote. So they would come to you and campaign just as uh, former ministers and other people to ministers came. And it, this benefit went to, let's say, largely three of the, front, the first three, right. because we had MPs who were also diehard Kennedy in Japan. We had ministers and former ministers who were diehard Alan, and mm -hmm. some ministers and former ministers who were diehard. So these three people perhaps 
uh, largely benefit from, benefited from this incumbency or uh, establishment if we extend the... Uh, so what I'm right. saying is that having laid that foundation, the people, the 961 people largely, uh, many of whom are at the base, then would go there because all the nicest one cannot be promised appointments right. or are not going to be appointed. Right. So if such a landslide comes, it may not be as a result of an, a, an imposition or a certain fear that you people put into them. It could be largely based on the messages that were sold, who sold his message well, mm. uh, how convinced they were. Let's not forget they are adults and we can't... But, we, but we have Prof, to are you them. discounting money in this? Are you no, discounting money, the... they, all of them would have <laughs> All of them would have paid some level of right. money, even though, of course... The hands will not be equal. Same, They'll be, right. And let me yes. back in just yes. one minute. Prof. I did not say that it then. was only factor that influenced the choice. Of, it's a whole admixture of factors. Yes. Or, uh, and of one of it being what? Of incumbency advantage. advantage. In yeah. politics, take it or leave it. Incumbency plays an important role. That is why in other jurisdictions you realize that if you are occupying a certain political okay. position and you will have to work, campaign and all that, you don't use the state resources such as cars, such as this and that, because it gives you an additional what advantage, advantage. over others. Okay. Dr. Jonathan, can, can we just throw this yeah, one? Yeah, just just a question I want to ask. Uh, Dr. Baumia's camp consistently have been defending the issue of incumbency yeah. advantage. I mean, every time uh, members or team members from his camp came on air, they would have the opportunity to say, oh, he doesn't even use his V8. He doesn't even use this. He's gotten himself a bus, and that's what he buses almost every member of the team to wherever they are going and coming. Does that defeat the incumbency advantage? No. Have? People's mm -hmm. understanding of incumbency, they have less superior understanding of the issue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> it's not the issue that is a car or this, but that the vice president is coming to commission a project here, mm -hmm. all right? And that project is what? The state's program. Yes. And there, he make a statement, one or two, that will go to strengthen his campaign. Yes. That's incumbency advantage. Right. Not necessarily you driving a V8. <laughs> but we are saying that that alone is enough. Sometimes you, so you realize that people have been criticizing the vice president that it seems that the government doesn't even have any ideas except uh, Dr. This, Baumia. This have you heard that yes, type of conversation? Several, yeah. Yes, they are pushing all onto him to really boost his status mm -hmm. and boost his what? His chances that, oh, he's a guy who brought this, he's a guy who brought this, he's a guy who did that. So people are asking, then what is the, 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 the real ideas of the president himself? Yeah. Are you with me? Okay. All yeah. that they want to tell you that there is something to benefit out of this. Yeah. I think Dr. Jonathan, uh, as I know you've been listening to quite a lot about, I, I, you know. I'm surprised uh, the, of bro, the direction that uh, bro, my mother is coming from. Uh, on the, on the yes, establishment. yesterday, Mm -hmm. says something on joy. He says that probably they are thinking of something in the future. If a vice president is likely to contest, he must also resign. I mean, he must resign. Why? Because they are talking about incumbency advantage. And you cannot discount that. Yeah. And it is even worse. You see, Ali okay. Mahama did not get this opportunity because he did not get the support okay. of the establishment. Okay. okay. You see the point? Yeah. So you cannot discount that. He did not. Dr. Baumia has a tacit support of the establishment. Mm. And I told you, we will have a president before 2020 elections, went out there to commission toilet. <laughs> and now you have important... International airport. Yes. Why is the president not doing that? Because I said that, look... That's why I said that they should have resigned, Alan should have resigned earlier, because they had built bridges. If you are not smart enough to read in between the lines, then I'll be very much surprised. They have built bridges. So you have to start methodically to break those bridges, mm. because these bridges uh, are solid, and it's for the establishment, for a particular person. Okay. That's why I said that Dr. Baumia is the vice president, he cannot resign. Okay. And let us see. The president will give him opportunity to go out there. When he went out there to Hobochocho Festival, <laughs> that he went to make that kind of uh, political comment, he saw the backlash. Yes. I remember. You see, well. he did not choose the environment well. well. Yeah. 
Okay. But you see, he wanted Doctor, to take advantage of all okay. the things that... Okay. Do, Dr. Jonathan Asante, I'll, I'll, I'll give you more time to speak. My, my colleague, uh, Abdullah Mohammed, our senior producer here and also parliamentary correspondent, is at the residence of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is expected to address the media shortly. Um, Abdullah Mohammed, good evening. Thank you very much. I know we're not, they're not allowing us to film uh, there, but what can you tell us about who is them and do you have any idea what he's likely to talk about of course obvious is the number one but what else all right so Bridget as you rightly mentioned we are currently at the official residence okay. of his excellency okay. the vice president Dr. Mahmoud Baumia who is expected to come out any moment from now and address the teaming number of um, supporters who are who have actually besieged his official residence and secondly we have also a number of media houses who have actually been invited to come and take footage of the, um, um, I mean, the statement that will be made by the vice president. We expect that he would reach out to the people, I mean, who could not um, make it to the top five, because okay. we know that as we speak, uh, a total of six of the aspiring candidates have been able to make it out of that race. And um, next week, Saturday, there's going to be a, a, an election between <laughs> the two other contenders who both secured nine votes each. So as we speak now, um, the journalists are very set, the media practitioners who have been invited, we are all ready, and we are hoping that any moment from now, the Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia would walk out and actually address the press. I mean, we expect him to rehash some of the things that he earlier said at the party head office when uh, victory was declared in his favor. We expect hey, that he will reach out to some of his aspiring contenders who were not able to make it out of the list of five nominees who will be expected to go into the November election. And we also expect that he's going to give a, a message that would sort of unite, that would seek to unite the rank and file of the MPP as they await um, uh, the uh, a finality on who actually would be leading the MPP into the 2024 general elections mm. when they go for that crucial elections on no in November. Okay, Bridget. and um, okay. is he there currently? Because you know earlier he was at the election center uh, with his wife and team and supporters, including you know the communications minister, NLA boss Sami Uku and uh, Anthony Cabo as well. Yes, yes. He's, he's currently at the okay. residence. I mean, I can confirm that he's currently at the residence. And um, okay. we've actually been told by his aides that um, he would be coming out any moment from now to, to, to actually address the press. And okay. we are very much set here. And um, I'm sure okay. that any moment from okay. now... Do, do the you know if there are him. other party officials with him now who would probably... Um, flank him, surround him when he's addressed? And do you know who is there at his residence? Well, a lot of them are actually in his residence right now. As we okay. speak. When we got here, we saw just his bodyguards outside of the building. Okay. But um, a lot of them are actually in his residence right now. So when they step out, uh, I'm sure we'll get to see them. We'll, we'll pick it live, definitely. Okay. Uh, Abdallah, what about journalists? I can see my colleagues there. Yes. What is the mood like? Are they as surprised as, you know, experts in terms of the way the ranking played out? What... Uh, what are journalists saying? What are they gossiping about? So for a lot of my colleagues here, they are actually very much shocked, not even surprised about the fact that uh, Akum Preko, Kennedy Japan, was mm -hmm. able to outsmart and out, outgrun, you know, um, the former trade minister, Alan Kujo Chiamante. A lot of people going into this race, even some of the pollsters had told us earlier that they expected Baumia and Alan to, to top the chart. But unfortunately, um, uh, things did not really go well for Alan Chiamate. But as we rightly heard from his spokesperson, um, Yabu Abina Samoa, the former Adenta MP, he's saying that they are very much happy about the fact that in the end, I mean, Alan Chiamate is part of the five um, um, aspirants who will be going into the November election. So for them, they are very much satisfied about the outcome of the election. And it only tells them that there's so much work for them to do now because they know that the, 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 the strength of their uh, candidate 
is it has been over exaggerated in the past all right abdallah mohammed please stand by for us um this is why you should stay tuned to metro uh, I keep saying that we go hard on politics and sometimes we even get in trouble with our political views. Uh, we will be going to the Vice President's residence live, hear him speak to the delegates who voted and the over 200,000 who would vote for him or for other candidates uh, on November 4, which again we will go hard on. But in the studio we're talking about you know, what's who the establishment candidate is, advantage use of incumbency, and Dr. Jonathan Asantioshu was on the floor uh, making uh, a point uh, on, on it. Do you remember where you left off? <laughs> no, okay, but, 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 but even with the uh, uh, point he makes about advantage use of incumbency and uh, the whole debate about when my colleague uh, Annie uh, mentioned that, okay, does Dr. Baumier's camp deny the advantage use of incumbency which they are just into denying does not take away the advantage of incumbency so why the constant denial of it well i don't know whom they were trying to deceive <laughs> uh, the evidence <laughs> is out there clearly right. um, you see why did the president even go and vote mm. yes he has a right to vote but you have put out there that you're not supporting anyone Ooh. if i were him i wouldn't have voted okay. because that particular vote wouldn't make any difference Right. You get a point. It is to send, you see, to douse, to douse the, the fear of this incumbency and the tagging of the establishment can and those things. Because those who are in the fray, for example, I, I saw a video of Kennedy Japan's uh, agent. Yeah. I mean, not saying that, look, yeah. the harassment, the intimidation, just too much. And that... Yes, he may win. They will not go and vote for the NDC, but they won't vote for him either. Apathy. And that it is can all the way. That voter apathy, you have to be concerned. On what grounds would one end have authority over the other? Are the level grounds the same? No. They are not. So you see that, um, for example, is it Kojopoku or somebody says that, well, then vote uh, delegates will be receiving calls important personalities that you are talking about will be receiving calls from the establishment that if you don't do this don't do that this don't do this. so there is an incumbency advantage which there professor is an... disagrees that look, they, you, they, you, they, you they see, those calls I, I agree with all that the gentlemen the two gentlemen have said yeah. and i'm on that side okay what i'm saying is that at the end of the day the voter going into the ballot box to vote at this level of maturity. We'll not go there and say, I was supposed to go for, go for Jonathan. This is you where my have coalition... a lot of faith in... Is it not the same delegate who voted and showed that, that, that oh, person? You, definitely you think have that they have that outliers. high level of You definitely of have outliers. You right. see? No, but you have put them all as part of the establishment. And such a person with that high level of thinking and being a, a member of the elite of the yeah, party in who parliament, go down, somebody go down, you down low. And so you will definitely, <laughs> no matter the level, no matter the level, yeah. you, will the definitely have, you will definitely have And somebody outliers. has gotten injured my, right. my because view, of that. This, yes. my, my view was that, yes, much as all the factors will play out, the ultimate is to spare the delegates who also had convictions okay. of the decisions that they had taken. Mm. And not merely because someone in Accra asked them, Okay. to take that decision. Okay. That has always been my position okay. on this matter. Do Dr. Asante, uh, uh, Asante, please, why is Dr. Baumia addressing the nation? I mean, he spoke at uh, yeah. the election centre party, excited about it. Why does he need an official? I mean, it's not like he won anything. He's only part of the five, literally. It's so a propaganda. Why? Propaganda. Yeah. In politics, I've told you three things are critical. Strategy message, resources, mm. strategy here, propaganda. And Ghanaian politics is always moved by what? Propaganda. Mm. I'll start with uh, the propaganda we've seen. Uh, professor said that one of the things that really uh, influenced the way people voted in the, the last election for this uh, mm. Dr. Baumia was the issue of the way they crafted the message on Dankwa Dumbo Buzia tradition. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, that is uh, something that 
is a propaganda because mm -hmm. if you look at the 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 that Dankwa Buzia Dumbo tradition, it doesn't exist anyway. I said it. It is on historical. I said it. It is on historical. Why am I saying that? Mm -hmm. We had political parties. So first, hold on your thoughts, Jonathan. <laughs> the yes, first election <laughs> that was organized in this country was organized in 1951. Yes. 54, we had parties that were formed along regional lines. Yeah, religious so we have lines what, and those things. Yeah. A party such as the Northern, Northern People's, People's party. party. Right. NPP. Then we had what? Religious parties, religious Muslim parties. Association party. party. Mm -hmm. We have ethnic parties, party, yeah. Anglo Youth Organization, yeah. Togoland what? Congress. Yeah. All these parties were formed. And three months after the 1954 election, NLM was born. Mm. The National Liberation Council, led by what? Bafo Sekoto, whose son is yes. contesting. Yes. All right. Yes. And they added one group to what? The ethnic political parties in there. So it really caused a stir for the CPP. So the CPP eventually won the 56 election. That was the last election that Ghana gained independence. So in 1958, the CPP passed a law. What? Avoidance of discrimination, what? Act that no party should be formed along oh, regional lines, ethnic, ethnic mm. lines, or other and lines. It should be a mass party. In political science, when we say a mass party, a party that cuts across all ethnic groups, all shades of opinion. Are you with me? Yes. So they all ganga and form the UP. Mm. All right, Ghana, Kong, sorry, United, United World party. party. So the United Party is a amalgamation of what parties such as what? Oh. Anglo Youth Organization, Gashifu Mokpe, yeah. Togoland Congress, right. NLM. So when you said Dumbo is a time, and of course MPP, when you said it's a time for what? Dumbo, then what are you talking about? What would be the time for what? Anglo Youth Organization, mm. Togoland Congress, Gashifu Mokpe. It is a propaganda. They know it's not true. <laughs> Doc, so, <laughs> but that propaganda but, seemed to have seemed to be uh, 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 something to benefit to propaganda. I don't know. That's what I'm telling you. So now, all of you, we are not looking for the person who won the election. Mm. We are looking for what? The five. Are right, you with me? Right. So if there is anything, it should be the party who should run what? A press conference on behalf of, of Exa course. Exactly. Oh, okay. Once you yeah. come out, then you want to tell them, look, I told you, I have led the people, <laughs> and it's a bandwagon effect, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. The right-thinking people are here. Why are you where you are? Join us. You get it. Okay. Yes. So the, that is the strategy. Yes. And uh, it means you, that, you that, would... That, does that, does that, does that go to confirm the incumbency advantage? Because I'm also looking at it from the angle of your the vice president. If the vice president is addressing the president. The second strongest man in this country is inviting you. Who are you? To mm -hmm. say you will not be yeah, exactly. there. Exactly. You get it. But is he the one? If anything, it should be what? The, the party, party chairman or the party leadership the who should do on behalf of everybody. Right. Because you did not go for the contest mm -hmm. to, uh, as it were, look for the one who emerged mm -hmm. yeah. number, number one. one. Oh. You are selecting then one. Then we five. wouldn't have yes. November 4. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to go to Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's uh, house. Uh, like uh, like uh, we mentioned earlier. And... Um, Okay, so these are scenes from Dr. Mahmoud Baumier. So you can see him together with his wife um, approaching the, I believe there should be a lectern there that they will stand behind and uh, speak to really perhaps tell us why he led, and uh, I believe the official result put him at around 66%. And then followed by Mr. Kennedy Ohini Ejapon, who had about 15%. So let's listen to him. Special delegates conference and by the grace of God floor sound that, floor sound um, I have emerged as the leading candidate, leading candidate or the winner, the winner of the winner this special of. delegates conference first of all I would like to thank the party the new patriotic party and the leadership of the party the national executives the regional executives the constituency executives electoral area coordinators, polling station executives, council of elders, and patrons of the party for the work that they have put in uh, in organizing this special delegates conference. It obviously took a lot of work, and I think that by and large, we've had a very successful special delegates conference. I'm glad and I'm thankful to God uh, for the emphatic nature of my win. Last year, we had 10 candidates who participated 
in this election. And I won over two thirds of the votes counted. And the rest of the nine uh, together scored less than one third of the total votes. And so I am very, very humbled, very humbled, very grateful for the outcome of this election. But this is only a first step towards our march to the flag bearership. Uh, we are going to have a primary um, on the 4th of November. And that primary will eventually, of course, select the flag bearer. So I see this as a step in, in the direction of winning the flag bearership um, of the party. Uh, but I, I know that there is therefore work ahead. The main event for all of us in the party is December 2024, 20, the general election. That really is the main event. And as we all work together in this party, going through these processes, we all have to keep in mind that what we are working towards is a win in December 2024 for the new patriotic party and therefore to break the eight in December 2024. Uh, this will require a lot of unity amongst ourselves as a party, uh, amongst all the various flag bearer hopefuls. Uh, and so um, it is very important as we go on this journey towards 2024 that we don't you know, have a situation where we have cracks in our ranks. We have to close ranks all the time. And therefore, we have to, you know, all work together in this process and, and not destroy uh, this very, very important uh, unity that we have and we should have towards the 2024 election. And for that matter, I... I say um, that we should, all the uh, flag bearer hopefuls, uh, we should unite together uh, in this quest towards winning 2024. And I believe that if we all band together, uh, we will win 2024. So this is an internal election, but after this election, uh, we will all come together to prosecute the 2024 election. And therefore we should support whoever is the eventual winner to, to do in this and, and making sure we win the 2024 election. So I would like to really thank all of you, the press, uh, for uh, following this process, for reporting on it. Um, and we hope that uh, we will get um, victory in the end for the new patriotic party. But I hope that I will get victory uh, for, to be flag bearer uh, of the new patriotic pr party, a uh, party I'm very, very proud of. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Thank you too. Yeah. Right, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia there, thanking delegates and the support he's had. He says it's the first step to November 4. In the studio, with talking about the strategy that he has employed. He's one of five, so question is why is he addressed, why is he not a party chair, why is he not uh, uh, maybe general, general secretary. secretary of the party, why is he addressed? And the political scientists say it's a strategy, and Valmia is a you know, textbook propaganda strategy. That's what the, the political scientists are saying. <laughs> Dr. Jonathan uh, Asantiochi, do you agree that it's a strategy and he's playing it really well? Because really all five should be able to address the nation if they want. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> you see that uh, Dr. Baumia is smart. Yeah. And uh, I think that if he's going to die, <laughs> he will die on the sword of smartness. <laughs> because he will get himself impaled. Right. Because he will always want to outdo his compeers. And that is something that he must be very much okay. worried about. But he's not going to because... He seemed to follow a certain trend. They said that, if you listen to Professor Michael Quay and the, the operations uh, director of, what is it called, Letter of Commission. Uh, ah, okay. so, what did he say? He said you needed five. We have done that. Six, yeah. And mentioned those 
who qualified to be in the fight mm. and said that it is now left with the fifth person because you have a tie. tie. So what is this business of coming to address? Mm. So if you are opening the Pandora box, yeah. people will listen to whatever you said and they will respond in equal measure or mm. even will go beyond whatever you might have said. You see, he likes playing with data. Mm. And if you look at the number of this, this thing that I had, I had over two, uh, two more than two, two thirds. thirds. Uh, my you, my vote is uh, one third of what the, the others had. Yes, the others. Is, <laughs> he knows how to get under people's skin. Okay. In All that, right. and he talks about unity right after that. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, we'll go back to Dr. Baumier's uh, residence because my colleague Abdullah Mohammed uh, has a couple of interviews from his residence or from persons who were there. Abdallah, over to you. What I have for them is that whenever we are going for elections, definitely there will be winners. And I don't want to believe that there are losers in this election. Whoever went for the election, they have worked really hard. But at the end of it all, it is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia who was who came top. So the other aspirants, those of us supporting them, we should come together and campaign as one party. And then together we we'll have one party to beat the NDC. The NDC is our enemy. Our enemy is not within. Thank you very much. The CEO of Maslock, I've seen some other women who are here as uh, at the resident at the residence of his excellency the vice president if you can call them yeah, yeah. so we are still live on metro tv from the ex uh, residence of his excellency the vice president who has just finished addressing the press Right, uh, my colleague Abdullah is speaking to Maslok Falls. Uh, right in the studio, we were talking about the strategy, and I know that uh, Professor Smart, you've been quiet for some time. I mean, if you could just contribute to yeah. the address, I know you hold a different view when it comes to the strategy that Dr. Baumea is employing. That it's free for all. I mean, the platform is open. Top five, he led only at number one. Is not the candidate for uh, the NPP in the 2024 election. So. Why are the others also not taking advantage of the platform that Dr. Baumia is, for want of a better word, exploiting? Yes. And, and before, my two... Before you come in, I yes. just want to read this message right. for you. This is right. from uh, Sam from East Legon Hill. He says that, Annie, I'm surprised none of your panelists are seeing it that Baumia has won because most of uh, those who voted today are government appointees. Mm. Uh, who are suddenly behind Baumia for fear of losing their employment. That's what Dr. Sanchez. The story could change in November <laughs> because the positions of the voters will be different. Some right. From that's, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Yes. Someone was just asking their question, why are they all going to his house? You know, sometimes when a president wins, a president elects, that's what happens. <laughs> yes, yes. You see, right. yes. Where, where I come from, for example, 275 of them are party constituency chairmen. Mm. They are not in position. They don't have appointment. Uh, MPs, some number. They get contract. They yes. influence who get contract. <laughs> no, 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 I'm coming. coming. If you don't play ball, right. yes, Professor, just one yes, second. Please. If you yeah. don't play yeah. ball, the next time they will, they will take you off. They will right. sponsor Got a it. candidate against you and you will lose your position. Right. That you see. Prof, yes. Yes, okay. So you, <laughs> let, let me do my submission. Yes, yeah, right. what, what? <laughs> two, two things that plays out in politics, and yeah. my two colleagues here will agree with me. Yeah. Uh, source of information and then incumbency. Right. We have discussed the incumbency, but I'm redefining incumbency because we have several definitions. Mm. Incumbency, for example, can be explained as being on the side of the masses. Okay. So, uh, being on the side of the masses is incumbency. Position yourself in a way that will attract the masses. And I think those are some of the things that will inform this thing that uh, Dr. Baumia just did. Trying to position himself as a, te as a testing place that would attract a lot of people towards him. He's making himself the center of the unity, the center of the preparation for 2024 election, and that anybody else who believes in the MPP's chances in 2024 should run it around him and all those things. And this is a platform that is at the uh, disposal of all the other four who have qualified. The Ghanaian media is not discriminatory. 
I can set up a proper reason why media should come together and listen to me. And even me, they will come. How much more, let's say, Honorable Kenny Japo and all those things. So let us be, my view, let us be very somehow moderate with the Ghanaian politics. It is still a fledgling one. Our Fourth Republic is not that old. Right. We are still not at the level where we can hold them. For example, I wasn't too happy when people were trying to say President John Draman, uh, John Draman Mahama, former President Mahama, was hijacking the entire system against Kobnado for right. peace. At what point was Kobnado for trying to visit a certain constituency that he was stopped by right. somebody uh, right. reporting to come from uh, uh, John Draman Mahama's camp or something? Okay. It, it, please. You are, this is so a very Alan open, Tremonting could mount you know, a platform right now. Let's be now very and soft. The media will be let's there. be very soft on our, on our politicians because we know them and we know the strategies they use. If we see them using one or two of those strategies, we don't have to label it in a way that suggests perhaps they shouldn't have done it when actually it is an open... Well, because it could have dire consequences for the yeah. party. And they, they know. Whatever they do, they know it has consequences, negative or positive. I like no, no, but, but I'm sorry, Prof. I, I disagree with you. Yep. I'm as, maybe I'm asking questions, but Fine. also sharing my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because politicians, when you say we should be soft on them, I'm even looking at the word soft. On the How ideas, you, on the strategies. No, why should we be soft on them? <laughs> why should I be soft on a politician who is not soft on me? Who want to even destroy this thing? I mean, why should <laughs> I? Not. And you see, sometimes it gets to a point where you need to be hard on them for them to know that you can read in between the lines. You also have an opinion. He might not accept it, but you have at least the technical know-how to analyze mm. yeah. communication skills and some of the things that they deploy. Yes, Annie, you are right, eh? But I'm well, talking I, about I'm thing. talking about the, the just a little thing. I've received calls right. from people saying that you are a little too hard on the vice. Mm. Why? I said. Do you know something? I get agitated. Why? Because I think that he has failed President Akufo. Mm -hmm. Because, look, you won the 2016 elections from, from, okay. All right. from, from Dr. Baumia's style of campaigning. This lecture here, lecture there, it caught fire. You get a point. And people got to know uh, how to interrogate data, understand data, this, that, that. So the man was speaking to fact. Mm. Now, what you see now, the economy, I'm feeling it. I was, a, it, it took me a long time to be able to buy five kilo bag of uh, uh, Gino rice. Mm. That is my favorite rice. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a bit how, hesitant, how I was annoying. Right. Okay. Is it okay. Bridget? The we're, issue we're, we'll I, be wrapping up. Yeah, yeah I wanted to wrap up. So yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was on the floor. Yes. He, he, I think he was on the floor. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, so what I'm saying is that it's not like being soft on them in respect of how they are managing the economy. We all have not been soft on them in respect of the actions and inactions that has brought us this far and keep taking us to places we do not want to be. I'm talking about strategies one is deploying to help him win an election. That is all that we are discussing today. Mm -hmm. And I am saying that if uh, in his itinerary he envisaged the win or being mm -hmm. part of the, of the five, and that should that come to pass, he would immediately address a press conference seeking to rally everybody right. around him. Right. If that is his strategy and he is actually employing it, when President Mahama was going around to seek the blessing of the NDC, he actually spoke as though he was already a flag bearer. Mm -hmm. Right. It was a strategy, right. and nobody should have been hard on him because, uh, why are you speaking like that? Does it mean uh, Cobrado for mm, whoever? Yeah, mm. yeah, that is the level of uh, softness or perhaps acceptance that okay. we have to give. It Mama, is a strategy. Thank you. I, I, unfortunately, we don't have the time. So yeah. I think one will talk like about, we, this, you know, strategy. Okay. But, it, it, but when, you see, when you're giving the opportunity, maybe a second opportunity, uh, no, when you're giving the first opportunity to rule the country, <coughs> In the, in the situation uh, of ba Baumia and Mahama himself, we have all seen their performance. It gets to a point where, a point where the people now want to be part of the process right from the start. Yes. So and even the at the party level when you're being elected or selected, people want to be interested on your strategies, whether it's, it, it's an intra-party or <laughs> it's I, mean, I, I get to, but then you have the ultimate 
uh, part of voting yeah. to confirm your agreement so or disagreement we, unfortunately, with Unfortunately, we would have to wrap that. up. We would yeah. have to, so I would want to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we know, we know that this is a young democracy. Right. But Machiavelli gives us something as food for thought. Mm. He said, look, politicians are not angels on earth. We right. know that. Of course. But the fact that you are governing on my behalf, mm. I don't have mm. to keep quiet <laughs> when I know very well that mm. where you are sending me to, you are going to what is wrong that the country at the end of the right, day. Remember, right. government, the word government comes from the Latin word gubina, mm. that the person who will steer the affairs of the state. So if I see that a strategy that you are employing will undermine the very purpose for which I put you there, I have every right to challenge you and challenge you head on. Mm. Because there are a lot of strategies that politicians employ and they end up what, destroying the country. Look at what we are seeing. People vote, their ballot is there, and then they show to people, they started with parliament. NDC follow suit. This, the time you realize at the national level, everybody is so, what? It defeats the whole process of what? Secret, secret balloting. Ballots. And yeah. for me, that is what worrying. Right. Um, final words, uh, Dr. So, so, Jonathan Asante. Well, uh, I think that they have done well. They've been what able next? to. Before uh, November, what should they do? What should they do differently? As you answer that to wrap up. <laughs> Do I even know politicians <laughs> will advise and they will advise, they will not even die. <laughs> so, well, okay. I think that um, there are some issues that they, they will have to address. Right. If they really want to solve internal, you know, disharmony and apathy going forward, they will have to deal with that because that in itself will rear its ugly head. Okay. In a not too distant future. All right. Thank you. And Professor Smart, and then Annie will wrap it up. For us, Professor Smart. Oh yeah, let's let's just an yeah, market. let's just uh, applaud them. Of course, it hasn't been incident free, but I mean, this is mm. on the minimal, and we can spare them that. Only that going forward, things that will bring this kind of uh, chaos and get somebody's eye injured or things like that uh, could be done away with. They should allow the police to do their work on instances of disagreement and all those things, and not to the extent that somebody will touch somebody or hate somebody. Mm. That is just mm. a very wrong side of the thing that characterizes what would have rather been a very peaceful. Party. So going forward, uh, the ball is in their court. We all will look up to them for a very decent campaign and then a very peaceful system. Thank you. Let me just thank you and then Annie will wrap it up. Thank you very much, Dr. Um, Asasari, for coming. Asante. Uh, Asante for coming. So, Dr. Asante. Jonathan uh, Asante Ochuri. Uh, thank you very much as well. And then Professor Smart Sapon also, uh, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate your knowledge and contribution to our program. I mean, we couldn't have done this uh, or elevated the discussion without you. Annie? Yes. 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 <laughs> your microphone is on. Is off. Yeah. So what Honorable Ken is doing doesn't show uh, someone who can lead the MPP. There is no leadership in him, please. I think the voters are being forced to vote for Dr. Baumia to prevent rumor that the NPP is discriminating. Baumia should bow his head in shame. Uh, in the northern region, they have to come to come delegates. So my Clement and a color. Okay, this is not clear. Let me jump. Um, if the reality is that Dr. Baumia is currently the favorite of the masses. NPP knows who can beat the opposition party come 2024, and they will not compromise on that. Baumia will emerge victorious, number one, and this one is from Ishak Jr. So incumbency did not play any significant role in the party's superdelegates election. Dr. Baumia worked hard for the party uh, and the party faithfuls, including the grassroots think, to think that uh, hard work pays. This also says that what I can we ask or Boabing as someone reacts, I shock because the results trickling in hey Alan Pad is I mean UK. Um yeah. Hi uh, Annie and Bridget. I must say that this super delegate election uh, to elect five is not going to help the NPP as a party. I think that uh, it should have been reviewed because it's not reflection of what Ghanaians in general really want. Laurentia from Wager is sending this in. Uh, we, the floating voters, we're also waiting. Mind you, nobody's perfect. You can choose to manipulate to win. Yeah, 2024, you cannot. Balmia will lose in 2024. Good afternoon. I expect that um, with this uh, special delegates conference, 
there should be transparency and allow the rule of law to work concerning the accusations during the elections. John Mahama and my MP, Feriza Wuni. Uh, okay. I think, well, I, I'll end here. We have a lot of messages, but I'm pretty, pretty sorry. We kind of pick everything. This has been your election central. Bridget. Yeah. yeah. Doctor. Uh, Jonathan Asante uh, He has an interesting remark. I think he should say it for everybody to say here. Doctor, you talked about the super delegates creating a false, certain false impression. Yes, I think that, um, like what Dr. Baumia came to do, see the characteristics of those who came to vote today will create the false impression that is overwhelmingly popular within the party. And for Ken and Alan combined to even chalk that number, I think that the establishment. You'd rather be more worried. Worried. All right. Come forth November. November. All right. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. 7 p.m. Annie F. Wampofo and myself will be back to Anchor News Night. I will bring you more interviews behind the scenes. All you miss. We're just going to take a... She will take a tea break. I'm taking a cocoa break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments.